go. Ah. Whoa. <clears throat> you okay there, Matt? Or do you have the game? It was, it was so fast. I'm like, sorry. I got scared. Just know that I did it on purpose specifically to scare you. Uh, yeah, it worked. Good job. Yeah. That's mean. Do you say that's me or mean? Mean. <laughs> I heard Mig too. I'm like, what? <laughs> mean. <laughs> It's not Meeg, it's Mean. I'd agree with you if you said it was Meeg, but Mean? I don't know about that. Yeah, maybe I misspoke. It was Meeg. Right. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, okay, I agree. That's fair. I will take that into consideration the next time I do anything Meeg. <clears throat> or close to Meeg. I wouldn't want it to become Meeg. Yes, what a fine 8th of the 9th, 2021, wouldn't you guys say? 9th of the 9th. We got a mini hot heat wave again in Wales, but don't worry, Fringy. What does that it's mean? Not... It's what, is, a, yeah, what does a heat what? wave mean to the the Walish? Well, what would be that would be relevant, right? All you guys need to know is that it's hot relative to me, and you've sure. you've experienced hot relative to you guys, right? So that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, it's just that hot relative to me is like, well, I hate it when it's thirty degrees, but hot relative to here is like forties. <laughs> that's hot. Yeah. What? Well, oh. What is is Welsh hot like? 75 Fahrenheit or what? I don't know what Fahrenheit Yeah, what is Fahrenheit? Is that some kind of alien thing? Fahrenheit, first off, that'd be a really great last name. Like John would, Fahrenheit? You know, huh. Yeah, that, Fahrenheit that, would be a man. Fahrenheit would be hmm. a good that'd be a good but that is a cool I wonder last what that name. word comes from. Let me see. Where, uh, where does Fahrenheit Yeah, Fahrenheit have? etymology. Um, it's named after Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit. Oh, oh look at wow. that name. Well, it is a lost name. Daniel Fahrenheit. Daniel Gabriel, mm. Gabriel Fahrenheit. Wow. He was a German scientist born in Poland in 1686. I have nothing to do with this. That's why. That's why. That's real. That's the real reason that World War II started. Is the Germans? They wanted. They wanted Fahrenheit back. So yeah, this, like, is a, this, this is, is a this is this is a fun map, by the way. This is a fun map. Countries that still use Fahrenheit. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I like how some of the countries are so tiny that they just had to put a They're circle there. Off. Well, yeah. So like the little what, islands. In the well, Illinois. it's those are U.S. territories. <laughs> what a I think. Listen, what a bunch of fucking chads. Yeah, that's I mean, that's an opinion. And also, is that just like Sierra Leone or something there? Just like, what country is that? That's just the only other country in the world that still uses Fahrenheit. What's what's that PlayStation motto where it's like experience greatness or something like that? Greatness of white. Yeah, greatness of white. Yeah, that's 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 just that country's logo. <laughs> Their motto. Hey, and they look at every every time that their president says something, they're like, "Game of the year confirmed." Like game of the seven year. months before whatever he promises is meant to come out. Man, that's a. Uh, they got that PlayStation thing coming up tomorrow, where they're gonna like show their game. I'm super worried that it's gonna confirm the problem that I have with Sony's lineup right now, which is that it's incredibly homogenous compared to Nintendo and, and Microsoft's. It's just like third-person action adventure, story-focused games. You don't love That's them. That's what I'm more. I mean, I like them, but you know, it'd be nice if there was like a platformer every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you have like Ratchet and Clank, and that's about it. A but crash, right? Micro. Uh, well, Crash is multi-platform. I'm talking now, not like before. Before Sony had a much more diverse lineup than Microsoft. It the meme used to be Gears, Halo, Forza, but like that meme doesn't work anymore because there's a whole bunch of other games of are uh, making and have been releasing. Like you got you got shooters, racing games, strategy games. Um, you got like adventure games like Psychonauts. It's like super diverse, and Nintendo's got the same thing as well. But like with Sony, if you don't like like Horizon, then you're probably not going to enjoy most of what they make. That's a shame. Well, I mean, it kind of is, but it, it feels like last gen the whole meme was, ah, uh, see, look, they're making their multiplayer games that nobody plays except most people, not like us. We're making, like, the movie game. You know? We're making them real cinematic. The game of the year, the things, the kind of games that win, 
Game of the Year at the Game Awards. Yeah. And I do wonder if that is a long-term smart decision. You know, I, I, I don't know if that, like, if it, if it was like, you give Microsoft a couple more years, and you'll be in a situation where it's like, dude, it's 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 way too too good a deal to like go from Xbox and, or or you know play on PC and play the games on Xbox, and get all the different games, especially if it's like ten bucks a month versus you got to pay seventy bucks for every individual game that you want on PlayStation. I don't know. It feels it feels like. It just feels like what happens every time, right? You win the prior generation, so you get really arrogant. You don't change your practice because you don't have to, and then you just kind of get left behind. So this, wrong. what is happening that they're doing soon? It's like a showcase, an E3 equivalent, where they're just going to be showing all the games that are coming out. So like God of War, probably, mm -hmm. um, like all the all the new stuff. They haven't done that yet. Well. I think it's only 40 stuff. minutes though, which is shorter than an hour, which is how long they are, so. And I wonder how many new things we're going to hear about versus how many games we already know of this. We're going to hear more about the... Fair enough. Alright, anyways, welcome to EFAP Mini. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yes. Hello, chat. Hi how there. you doing? I hope you're Goodness all having gracious. a good day. Um, or evening, or night. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I guess we've got a. We're, we're gonna do some super chat catch ups. We are indeed. We're gonna answer all the questions. Everyone. Diverge on all the tangents. Mm hmm. Um, I, I think we're get. I, I'm thinking we're gonna get. Eight done. Eight, right? That's the target. Okay. Oh Number one simply says blowholes. Very good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Approve of this message. Uh, Number two. Why specifically is Smoke Monster bad? Oh, it's the same person asking me again from Lost. Well, there comes a oh, time in, in every I fan's were life. About Loki. <laughs> so was I. Can we go back to the one? <laughs> that one's way easier to explain because I fucking watched it recently. Um, I found a creature that eats space and time. Uh, like, really? <laughs> down the street from the chemists, or where <laughs> did you find this creature? Yeah, I found I found one in my flat. I just put it in a glass and put it outside. Yeah. Eat space and time. You know how it is. We've all been there. Um, or maybe, maybe maybe he's pregnant and he's just got these weird cravings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we you know in a way you know lady gets about you know five or so months in and she starts going oh I want pickles and ice cream and also space and time. <laughs> I hate it when they want space and time. So like, come on, greedy. I'm happy yeah. to give a pregnant woman all the space she needs. To be fair. What about the time? Um, it's negotiable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, well, pregnant chicks are hot. If you say so. We got. The Smoke Monster from Lost, if ever I rewatch that show, I'll give you all the reasons. I can't imagine why I would, though. <laughs> Unless I want to make Fringy suffer, maybe? I don't know. Oh, man, I don't Do you know if I want to watch Lost. It's suffering, too, because the first two seasons are really good. Right, so it'd be good, and then it would turn into awful, which is a really tough thing. It's not with. fun. <laughs> like something that just sucks. No, well, I mean, it's not fun when something sucks from the get-go, too. Yeah. But, you know. I think you, but you get a, a bigger sense of loss, I guess. Like, oh, I, I, would, I would definitely agree. Like, if a show that sucks ends up being terrible, it's like, well, the, like, is that really a surprise? But if something ends up great, it deteriorates. That's why the MCU is painful. Yeah. <laughs> because they still haven't killed all of it yet. Yeah, there's still parts left that are part of the corpse. It's like we've got rotting flesh that needs to be cut off and, and it keeps growing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it keeps gobbling up more. You think there's gonna be a time where we're like, oh no, they ruined Shang Chi. Can't believe Maybe. it. Maybe. I mean, he's, he was he's so a, he's bland. A, well, as well, people I mean, have pointed he out, he's a he's hero. A hey guy. He cares. He cares right, about yeah. helping people. It's crazy. He helps oh people. Yeah. He wants to save his family. He has That's values, and he feels bad about bad things that he did in the past. Um. Yeah, like that's why Shang Chi by default is like the best one because the hero isn't a monster. That's <laughs> nice. Nice guy to change here. Yeah. Decided to change it up a bit <laughs> in phase four. <laughs> Wanted to test it out again. Um, where are we? 
Do, do you, thoughts on the Bruce and Natasha scene in Avengers and the scene where Bruce talks about killing himself? Also, hi Rags, Mootal, and Fringman Soy. Hello. Hi there. Hmm. That's um, a great scene. So the Bruce and Natasha scene in Avengers, are we talking about when they met? I think they're talking about the part where he talks about shooting himself in the head and then Hulk spat out the bullet. Well, that's like, the, the second that. part. Um, oh. oh, the first scene's awesome too. I mean, it's... I, I, I was just trying to clarify which scene he's talking about. It says thoughts on Bruce and Natasha scene in Avengers and the scene where Bruce talks about killing oh, himself. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I think they're both great. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, the if we're talking about when they meet, um, I don't think I put this in the video. I kind of think I probably should have just f for the, the hell of it. But um, Natasha is like, you know, really good. In Iron Man too. It's like, oh, look at her go. She can beat up all these people. Woohoo. Um, but it's the beginning of Avengers that gives you a sense of like, my god, she's like close to dying and she doesn't even really care. And the realization is that she doesn't believe she's close to dying at all. She's like, yeah. I'm in control of the situation completely, I'll be fine, sort of thing. And you're like, wow, she can be brought to that position and still feel like she's in complete control. And then she gets terrified by the Hulk, which helps yep. you um, really scale it up. So you're like, fucking hell, if it scares her... What is he capable of? Even though we've seen so many iterations of the Hulk, we know exactly what it does. I really feel like Avengers builds you back up to being like, oh gosh, if he comes out, what's going to happen? It's scary. Yeah. Sure. The scene where he's changing is much closer to horror than oftentimes. I, yeah. I think that's I think it's really effective. Thing. The noises he makes as well, especially because it's like a PG-13 film or whatever. He's just like... Rrr, 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 and just like... Ugh. He turns around and starts shaking because of how angry he is. It's like, uh oh, like. Yeah, and then you have oh them look boy. at each other, and he, he, there's yeah. a there's a sense of like shame. Good shit, man. Avengers did a good job with Hulk. Yeah. Well, oh, well. I'm sure they'll do great things with him <laughs> into the future. <laughs> Dab. Oh. God. That is, that is pain right there. Why did they do it? <laughs> who who paid them? <laughs> well, I think I. I mean, oh, I don't. <laughs> hmm? Oh, just, you know, about all of that and just everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just just everything. And yeah, the, uh, so the scene where he admits he's, uh, he shot himself, um, that was prompted because the cage they have for him and the concerns they have for him, they're like, we might have to kill you or whatever. And he's like, you won't be able to. <clears throat> Which is, yep. Pretty dark as well. <laughs> like, yeah. Lots of great stuff in Avengers. Uh, Muller is the real BBC coming to your channel. Hi. I don't believe so. I still think it's going to be a back and forth between their channels. I'm not sure because like my channel is already with the catch ups we're doing now. I'm going to be streaming probably twice a week for the foreseeable future. We've got a lot of super chats to catch up on. Um, the idea that I do three streams per. That would be every three weeks that the real people... So, I don't know, maybe. I'll have to chat with them. I'm totally on board with just being a more permanent guest at this point. I don't know, I wouldn't want to... It's totally their show. Um, but I appreciate being uh, requested on. Funny enough, the last one I was on, fucking literally in the middle of it, I just started having a nosebleed. And I was like, great! <laughs> and uh, it was funny because they eventually noticed. I was like trying to... You know how it is. You, you don't want to ruin the flow of a show. <laughs> so... I was yeah. like talking less and less and started going like <laughs> I was like when trying to talk and they're like, you okay? That's like not really. Help <laughs> Oh boy, Rags, look at all these dog bites you've been uploading over the last couple of days. Oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, I, I, just a moment ago I did the Yeah I uploaded Fortnite has the a dream. <laughs> MLK and Fortnite thing, so <laughs> I'll have to watch I, that. I'm gonna do the McCree name change next. That's uh, that's fun. That is a that is a whole conversation. Right? Yeah, I'm very glad they did that. I hate it when characters have names that I don't associate with good people. Well, I mean, I saw that like people on Twitter were saying that it was like a, a really obviously cool jump. Uh -huh. I guess it's. Ow, I guess fuck. to me. It, did you go? Oh, wow! <laughs> it's all for that. That is unfortunate. I was getting close to first place, now I'm eighth again. It's like, okay, fine. <laughs> I hate hey, you. You're lap one. It's okay. It's yeah. Okay. If I can drive good, then maybe I'll have a chance. That's a big drive question. Well? No, good. Okay. If I can do it. 
The problem is it's a mirror, so I fucking... My memory of these maps is all fucked. They only have mirror on the hardest difficulty as well in this. Yeah, well, why of course, no, right? Well, why no mirror on all difficulties for the funsies? No fun allowed. I guess that's an option, yeah. More chain jump. Oh. Kill them all, my precious. Ow. Anyway, uh, hello, Fringy, Mola, Mootle, and Rags. Hope you hello. guys and chat are having a great day. Aww. You too. Yeah. You as well. Yumpus. Um, did videos just upload or are they blocked? Uh. Uh, seven. I really don't know what you're talking about, I'm afraid. <laughs> Um, I've seen people complaining about, uh, there's some weird stuff going on with channels right now where banners don't show up and sometimes you can't see the videos. I just assume right. it's YouTube glitching up, don't worry about it. Unless, of course, we're all getting banned, which would suck, but hey. Fuck's sake. Um, congrats on obliterating the plushy sale goal. We did indeed. The plushies are yeah, now gone. Did. They are... They are gone. If you didn't get them, they'll, well, you've been, you were warned. There are uh, two emails today that said the commas did a thing. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. I got them too. They're like, you, you're a, you're a supporter of Rags and Moore, and I was oh, like, I figure yeah. I was. <laughs> that. That's good. Look at that. And, uh, yeah, they're they're right now. They've probably started being built in a factory. All those cuddly little boys. Probably. Very nice. Very mm -hmm. nice indeed. Mm -hmm. All right, last lap in a sixth place. I can do this, right, Fringy? Uh, yeah, you could. You could, oh, that you didn't could sound. absolutely pull. <laughs> I'm not convinced <laughs> about that one. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah sure. Sure. sure, you could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fringy, I just fell off the map again. Do you still think I can do it? I <laughs> uh, now I don't. No. Oh. But, but hey, look, more just happened. I mean, hey, look, imp more impossible things have happened. Name three. Um. Hmm. Uh. Man went to the moon. That was uh. People thought that was impossible. Wright brothers. They they doubted uh those fellas. And look at him now. Bring it off the map again. Dead. <laughs> oh, well now. Uh, yeah, nothing more impossible than this has ever been done before. <laughs> you, you can't win now. It is over. Hey, it, why it do you have faith impossible. in me? What the fuck? <laughs> it's, it is impossible now, yeah. How dare of you. Oh, Shad's in chat. What's up, sir? How you doing? Oh, hello. He, Shad. I believe he thought that Shang-Chi wasn't that good. I was about to say, either you're up very early or you're still in Canada. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> More mm -hmm. Um... <laughs> he, he sent me a message saying, do you want an extra quest? <laughs> an extra quest? <laughs> it's funny coming from him, because I'm just like, sure, quest giver, what have, what have you got? Um, <laughs> I mean, we can, we can definitely have him in. The problem is, I feel like we're not going to do any catching up today. We'll try. <laughs> we had one job. Do the college try, as we do. Um, Alright, yes, yeah, so you're welcome to jump in if you wish, Mr. Shad. Um, But not allowed to talk about Shang-Chi, okay? Chong-Chi. Chong-Chi. Oh. Hello. 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 I heard, oh, you, I just came in as you were saying Chong-Chi. Shang-Chi? Shwang-Chi? Chong-Chi. I think that's what they say in the film is like Chong-Chi. Chong-Chi. Chong-Chi? Because it's probably offensive to do anything else. Indeed. It, it, it was crap, it sucked. Well, I'll just put that out there. He's such a DC opinion. fanboy. <laughs> it's funny, like, I, I, I dropped my review and people are saying, Shad, do you like anything at all? You're always nope. so critical of stuff. I'm like, I gave a good review of Invincible not long ago. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't count. It's not a real. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. a lock. Hey, thanks, thanks for letting me crash your stream. I saw your, uh, your stream. I was like, hey. I'm still in Canada and I'm doing nothing right now, so why not? Why not hop in? Yeah, we're uh, we're doing one of them. 
adventures through Super Chats, we're, we're, we're very far behind, but we will catch up. It's gonna happen. One nice. no. year. Where are we? The latest one was... D -d 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 -d. Vision actually game ends himself for his wrongs in the new What If. Shame Wanda didn't learn personal responsibility from him. That boner trusting girl. I haven't... St I've completely stopped watching What If. I think the latest I... Was it three I think I've seen? I don't even know anymore. I think I've watched two. I've always seen up to two. Yeah, and I stopped. Bring you gotta watch it so I can ask you what happened. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't continued What If, I haven't continued Rick and Morty, I don't give a f toss about Well, Shang oh. we finished Rick and Morty, yeah. Yeah, we, we did. It. Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, not super happy about it. No. Um, I'm a little disappointed that the last episode of the season is the second highest rated episode of the That's a little bit frustrating. <sighs> but it kind of makes sense, I guess. Like you, 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 makes can, sense. you can understand why because people vote in that. Out. Yeah. I guess it just. I don't think it. I don't think it's anywhere close to as good as the Citadel episode. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I am. Uh, I, I'm. You know what? I will. Uh, so. What was that? Sorry. I was just gonna say something. That's alright. Oh, that one. Under. You know, close to the chest. Okay. That, was it too too spicy or too much of a oh, hot take not, for, for EFAP? I think it, so. It's not a spice. It's not a spicy take. It's just, uh, just thought I'm having. Spicy thought. Not a spicy thought. An, in, in, an interesting thought. That's all. Damn! What I just did was kind of cool, and I didn't even understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm conflicted about what if episode one, um, because. There's a lot of shit. things that annoyed me in it, but she ends up using a sword, and so mm, now, now I don't know what to think. Mm. I think that would annoy you even more, right? <laughs> I don't know, Rags. I really like swords. You probably don't understand how much I like swords. Yeah, but you Rags. don't like the misused, right? Yeah. Yeah, but she got to chop up some tentacles with it. It's like, okay, okay cool. She yeah. got to chop up some. Listen to your synapse yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Especially like the part where Captain she just America found and it and that Cthulhu thing. space monster from a different dimension. Yeah. Dude, I, I'm so glad we finally got that, because when I watched the first Avenger and, and, and Red Skull makes it explicit that he's hoping to summon a Cthulhu monster, I was like, we'll never see that because Cap defeated him. But luckily we did in, in What If, you know? God. A lot of people were like, I don't remember him saying that. And I was like, yeah, because you weren't paying fucking attention. Several scenes yeah, where he talks about Cthulhu real... monster. Yeah, you're not a real fan. Not a real chill. Yes. Oh, I just saw the super chat, Mother's Milk in a Cup, Shad. I know that reference. And if I was to be true to the world building, I am shocked that you would use such a foul slur. My god. I was going to say, Does I'm going to have to ban you. Do you know where that comes from? I'm assuming. You guys know where that comes from? Is it, is it your book? book? No, no, it's not my book. Oh. Isn't Mother's Milk the character from The Boys? Yeah, but I doubt that's the reference. No, yeah. it's, that's not the reference. <laughs> well, it was taking me a minute there to, like, try and decipher it all. <laughs> do you want to know? Do you want to know the reference? Well, I already knew, I dude. Shad, it's Wheel of Time. I, I knew that. Yes. Oh, oh, well, you knew that more? I totally, totally knew that. 100%. You just that. read the chat because people... <laughs> what? Why would... What? Why would I... I've oh, never read, read the chat. What, what even is that? Chat. What is that? Chat. Imagine if you woke up one day and chat was just like a living person who followed you around. Wouldn't that be no, an well, interesting day? Why would he follow you will. around? Leave me alone. I don't know. Just the, the well, chat's affixed to the the side of the video. This one's kind of like affixed to you. Not not like actually, it's not like disabled to you or anything. But still, he's just there, and he has things to say every now and then. Sounds that terrifying. A weirdly, a weirdly inconsistent would be the thing. It's like. One moment he's talking about one thing, and the next moment he's talking about cum. <laughs> what is it, Jay? <laughs> Turn to my chat. you just have you know? to explain that to everybody that you mean. It's like, don't worry, alright, I'm not affiliated with <laughs> <laughs> Chad, I'm surprised you didn't do that when you came on. Like, I'm not affiliated with EFAM. Though I am, yeah. just have chat. Like, like, I'm not affiliated with cum. <laughs> uh, I've been on this uh, this podcast too, much, too many times to be able to claim that. Oh. Just pretend that you're our lawyer, just coming in to give us, like, discovery. Isn't that what it's called, Fringy? Yeah. When they give us files about how evil we've been and that we need to track them and stuff? Yeah. 
Well, well that's I, I, it's basically just, hey, here's what we've got on you, and, you know, here you go. I could be like your good conscience. <laughs> I guess. But if I'm that, who's your bad conscience? Rags. Rags. Yeah. <laughs> that's me. I'm I'm the devil doggo on his uh, shoulder. With the little horns just and the... Look around with little <laughs> horns. And you got yeah. the, pick, uh, the, the pitchfork, too. Oh, yes. Sometimes, yeah, it comes and goes. <laughs> Depends how you feel the day, isn't it? If if my evilness needs this that extra physical, like a physical prop to manifest itself, there it is, pitchfork. Those are evil, I guess. Pitchforks. Why did they evil? become evil? That seems like a bit of a typecast. I feel sorry for pitchforks now. Mm. I think it's probably evil. The trident son, you know. Why are well, I think that's what they're from. Evil. Okay. I think I think that's what it's from. But I I need I do need to start instead of calling it the Devil's Pitchfork or the Devil's Trident, and I need to. In the Devil is actually um, Willem Dafoe. It's like ah, uh, pick up, take up your mother's trident. I know you want to. <laughs> Wait, would he be saying that to himself? Just in general, just to everyone. Just it's in metaphorical. <laughs> it means that's 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 to what a temptation take responsibility. is. Responsibility. Take up your mother's trident. It's like give in to your, your, you know, mother's your, trident. your mother's trident. Yeah, take up your mother's trident. Come on, you know. Come yeah. on. And then the angel, angel dog over there is Come like, on, do nah, it. don't Come you know on. it's not right? It's not. It's hers, and she might need it. Yeah. And what are you gonna use a trident for anyway? Let's be honest. It's weird, <laughs> weird device. That, yeah. I don't know. So anyway. Uh, I don't like Double Dash the most, but it definitely has the best final lap tune. Um, a little bit of ringing at the end totally pumps me up. Hmm. Mm. I've never really argued myself how or why a particular Mario Kart is the best one, but I know I like Double Dash the most just because I fucking played the shit out of it. I think that the best Mario Kart game is probably 8, and but it's a toss-up between that Double Dash favorite very well i really so content. i um i never cared that much for double dash i liked it but i was like eh, this is all right um there was some i think there was something about the steering that made it seem kind of floaty in a way um it didn't it doesn't seem as precise i don't know it, it's hard to describe um but oh, it wasn't my you. favorite. Like, you don't like the feel, basically. Kind of. Um, my Oddly enough, my favorite Mario Kart. I haven't played the, the newest one yet. Um, I really, really like the DS one. Uh, oh, like it's got Mario a lot Kart. of... Yeah. yeah, it's got a lot of great maps on it. I really like... It, it has this kind of... I don't know. There's The, the driving has a sort of precision to it in, in this odd way. Where it just seems way more responsive, almost, almost like you're, it, you're more uh, like magnetized to the the ground. It has that feeling where it's you, you don't feel as slidey. I don't know. It's, it's hard to describe, but I just kind of prefer that. Plus, I could play it in bed. <laughs> Thoughts on Marvel's What If thus far? Hmm. <laughs> it has a sword in the first episode. Oh, that's something. It's probably Stupid. more than just the one in the whole thing, you know? What, are you saying there's more than one there, sword? There might be another, another guy with a sword at some point. I, I don't want to rule that out, you know? Oh, oh my goodness, I might have to actually watch the other episodes now. Don't do it. Crap. Um, yeah, there won't be like an EFAP episode for him unless all of us can muster the care to actually see them. Um. They seem to keep fucking with everything, and since they're like, in, it's like canonly re removed from everything, then should be able to leave it alone. But who knows how long that'll stay that way? Hmm. So I have a question about what if then, because mm -hmm. I've only seen the first episode, but I was already annoyed in the first episode that so much drastically changed, and they were trying to say it happened from this one little choice of not going up into the, up the stairs, alright, and it's like, way too much change from that little one variant and everything, 
And so, is, are they doing that in the other episodes where they're going to try and claim all these drastic changes are due to this one little difference or something? I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, the, the Doctor Strange one is weird because when you watch Doctor Strange, because the, I haven't seen this episode, I just know this is the what if part of it. You know when he gets in his car accident at the beginning? He, um, turns out his, the, the GF, the love interest person, is in the car with him this time. And it's like, I didn't think the capacity for that to happen was even possible, because... Isn't he doing late night surgery, then he goes home... Yeah. And then he's, he's on his own, then he goes out to drive, like, I don't remember who doing that, but it's like, okay. And that, that is apparently the, the, the big change or whatever, and it's like, huh. But I mean... Like, it seems like the, the, the decision leads to this wildly bizarre concept. It doesn't feel like we're really exploring the fun aspect of cause and effect here. We're just using it as a justification to tell whatever to story we totally want. New, yeah, totally new story. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where Doctor Strange creates a clone of himself or something who doesn't have a conscience. It's like, dude, what are we doing? Like, how can we justify this? Like, I don't know. The... The, the, yeah. That girl, she dies, I guess. <laughs> I just looked yeah. it up. The latest episode is if, like, some of the Avengers are zombies. What are we doing? I don't get that one. I remember seeing a cutscene where, like, they're fighting zombies. Yeah. Iron Man and some other people, I think Cap. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how could Iron Man possibly lose against zombies? Yeah. I don't see how that's he... possible if he's wearing the suit. I don't like, see how you could lose either. They just got big ol' gnashes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Get through. I mean, you know, firstly, yes, how do they bite through the armor? But secondly, like, can I just fly away? Anyway. You just hover and fly, and what are they gonna do? So, um, I don't know, maybe I should see that episode to, uh, to know the context of it, but I don't know. The, the what if writing has not been impressive, and the episode two seems to be universally agreed to be possibly the worst one. Um, because, like, holy fuck, they make T'Challa Star-Lord and the whole universe is saved, basically. <laughs> Everyone loves him. <laughs> How about you don't do the bad things? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. And you even have people saying, like, oh my god, T'Challa Star-Lord was way better than, uh... No, don't say it. ...than Peter Quill as Star-Lord, like, uh... as a better person. You're like, okay. You said it. I told you to not say it. <laughs> T'Challa talked Thanos out of being Thanos. Yes, he did. Um, all right. You're fucking stupid. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you loved this show. I didn't even watch it. Let's take our peepees out. Hi, Rags. All right. Hello. What oh. now? Uh, well, the rest says also, isn't it neat that the new Matrix looks more like a crappy cyberpunk bold runner? Bold runner? <laughs> Blade um, Runner? I, I, I don't know if it's Bold Runner. Like yeah, it's like a parody <laughs> thing. I don't know. Look, I, like I am, unlocked the characters' rags. I finally did it. Oh, that's great. Now yeah. you can use them and dominate the battlefield. I will use them right now to unlock more things. Tilt a cart battle mode stage. Let's unlock that. That sounds good. How exciting. Oh, I'm going to use Wario's cart because it's fucking cool. Wario. Eh, eh, eh. That was Wah. a bad impression. Me. Wario. He's a cool guy. Waluigi! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waluigi, yeah! I'm, yeah. I'm Waluigi! <laughs> Lukeism, yeah! Lukeism! Lukeism! Uh, thoughts on the Langoliers compared to Loki? To who now? I don't know. Anyone know what the Langoliers is? Nope. Damn. I haven't the froggiest. Hmm. Springy, you know what Langoliers are, right? No. Oh well, Damn I tried. <laughs> so just because I saw the super chat and I might not be around to uh, answer it later, there someone's asking me what I thought about the Wheel of Time trailer. Uh, did any of you guys see the Wheel of Time trailer at all? I did. No. Oh. A, friend, a friend of mine. A friend of mine has super concerns. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm honestly really worried. I'm still holding on to that faint you know bit of hope <laughs> still like maybe um and so yeah that's kind of what i got at the moment um uh, the trailer it was interesting it, it showed some kind of cool things but it's again it's a trailer so i've been lied to before i don't want to 
There's mm. too, too much on it. Um, and so, you know, it was. I kind of like how they showed the weaving of the magic and stuff. It's like, I didn't kind of picture it that way, but I could see it working. They do it that way. Um, but other than that, I, yeah, there's, there's not enough scene for me to really comment too much on. But you shall be watching, I assume. Oh, yeah, I'll be... A man diving into that one deep every single episode. I'm not sure if they're going to release it episode by episode or the whole thing, but it's uh, Amazon, so they may do it episode by episode. So if they definitely do that, we'll be doing an episode by episode deep breakdown on everything. I'll be so damn critical of <laughs> this one because I love Wheel of Time. Wheel of Time is friggin' awesome, and I'm really worried that they're just going to oh, butcher so much. So. Um, Someone said Brown Table said he cried three times while watching Shang Chi. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey I man, I don't even question it. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Are you kidding me? I don't know. Well, you know, there's. I'm sure there's a payoff where someone says, you know what, I I love you, <laughs> something to somebody, and and uh, then he's like, oh, I know what love is. I want to know what Shang Chi is. <laughs> No, that's pathetic. Look, I, 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 it could be the greatest movie of all time. Shring, you said it was like a 10 out of 10, right? Why well, must like a, you turn 11. my office into a house of <laughs> lies? <laughs> I would never do that. I was just clarifying. Ted, three, who's, who's one of those? <laughs> who's, who's counting? <laughs> I'm not. Um, oh, Langoliers is apparently Stephen King, by the way. Um, I have not read it or seen it, if it's been adapted. Do. Spooderman is coming out, but so is Matrix Resurrections. I await the inevitable EFAP movies, oh. the Matrix trilogy, no matter how long it takes. Um, I've seen a lot of people requesting that. What do you guys think? Uh, For what, the Matrix? Much, much Matrix trilogy EFAP movies, and then we do Matrix 4 when it comes out. Well, that's going to be theaters only, probably, right? Ah, uh, no, that's HBO Max, too. Oh, schnizzle, okay. Well, comes out this year, well, so so. the end of this year. End of this year. We could, because I feel like we could knock out the Matrix trilogy in one night if you were all on board with that. Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd be fine with it. And then we'll give it all to Das Bullshit. <laughs> oh man. No. I don't wanna. We'll invite him though, and it'll be fun because we'll talk. Uh, we got to invite Theo. Apparently, Theo hates all three of them. All three oh, of them. All three. So he hates the Matrix oh. one. He does okay. indeed. Good I think boy. he still concedes that the first one's the best one. So there's that. Like the usual Love is, it. everyone hates the th two and three, as you all know, probably. I mean, Matrix yeah. One is a cool movie. I mean, I remember thinking it's great, so I, I wouldn't mind rewatching it and getting Theo's thoughts. See what see what happens. Yeah, maybe. I remember when the Matrix was coming out. Like it, that was just it was. It's like everybody was talking about the Matrix and like Lord of the Rings around that time too. <laughs> it's back when movies were like, wow, we've got a lot of potential here. Movies are cool. Well, whereas now, I mean, well, I guess <laughs> it's Remember when movies right, were it? cool. I mean, is there any reason to assume that the new Matrix movie would be good, considering that the Wachowskis have kind of, like, not made anything good? They made <laughs> Cloud Atlas and that other really weird film, didn't they? And Jupiter Ascending, yeah. the one where, where Eddie Redmayne screams. We need to see uh, that. <laughs> sorry, That's a perfect e fat Movies movie. So I haven't seen the um, new Matrix trailer. Do they explain at all how um, Neo's still alive? I think the new Matrix trailer is coming out today. Yeah, oh, there's a okay. teaser trailer that got released. Well, it's not even a uh, teaser yeah. trailer. It's like a teaser for a teaser. Yeah, I think the trailer's yeah. coming out. Which, by the way, I don't... Coming out while we're yeah. I don't like teaser, teaser, teasers, you know? It's annoying. You know what yeah. I don't like? When I boot up a trailer and then it does five seconds of like, oh, look at this epic stuff trailer now. It's like, yeah, I know I clicked on it. <laughs> There's got to be a reason for that, right? Like something legally uh, or something. Because if you no, it's because you're playing ads on YouTube. You got to cram in really cool stuff in that first five seconds to make sure that they don't skip the ad. That's why they do it. Make sure they don't skip the ad. What do you mean? You know how like you play ads on YouTube? Trailers can be just played as ads directly linking to that particular video, and it'll be like a five seconds, and then you can skip. Oh. So they cram in as much interesting stuff as possible. So when you get the option to skip, seconds. they hope at that point you, you're like, actually, I guess Your I points. might watch this. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's cringe, but why would they need the full ads to contain those? You know what I mean? The ones on um, YouTube? 
like because the, the ones on YouTube are the ones that link to the uh, to that to those sometimes. Like the like ads on YouTube are videos that exist on the platform, I believe, uh, in, like including trailers. So if you clicked on the okay. hyperlink for that particular ad, it would link directly to the official you know trailer. That's why a lot of the trailers get so many views. I, have I to think. Admit. The strategies worked on me, you know, where they do those like, you know, five seconds of all the real, you know, big action things before you, you can skip. I've been sucking in. It's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll watch it. Oh, I'm sure they, they do it because it I works, think, right? Like I'm imagining. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's very effective. I guess it's just concerning, isn't it? But like it's annoying. our attention and collectively that we, we need that at the beginning to get hooked in. Yeah. Oh, well. We love our hooks. Captain Hook would love all these trailers. But I have to say, the uh, things that the, the ads that make me skip the most are the ones that appear. Don't don't click the skip skip button. Yeah. You really want to hear that? Oh, I'm I like, fucking hate those ones. It? I know. It's like don't think of the elephant, but it's like, now I'm thinking of the elephant. Like, yeah, exactly. But now I'm thinking of Skip, and it's like thanks for reminding me. I'm just covering my mouth. Well, see, that's the one where it's like someone could be like, well, they wouldn't do it if it wasn't working, right? And I'd be like, I don't know if that one works, though. I really don't. Does it work? Maybe it does. I think like, my favorite one is again the 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 uh the the gurus. Hey, I'm just here in my garage looking uh, at his looking at his Ferrari that he rented for the day. It's like <laughs> they Neil all Breen? rent Ferrari. Uh no, because if it was Neil Breen, it wouldn't be cringy. It would be awesome. It'd be I'm incredible. That these are cringy. Oh, I yeah. I, oh man, that's unfortunate. It he was. Got caught on that it was. Thing. <laughs> if only I'd fallen in a different way. That's probably cost me the whole thing. I might have been able to pull it together, but I don't think I can now. Oh well. Oh, well, so hey, look, you need to, maybe you need to take that course from that guy in his garage. He can teach you about the power of um, positive thinking. <laughs> That'd be a great little like parody version. You do it, and he's just like yeah. Mario Kart Double Dash, Boo and Teddy <laughs> Piranha, best way to play the game. And you're just like, okay, it's exactly. really specific, yeah. but okay. <laughs> the the <laughs> look, Double Dash know, meta. There, there is, yeah, I mean, you could have an online course to teach people how to get good at Mario Kart Double Dash. It'll only, you know, normally I'd sell it for $6,000, but today I'm offering a special <laughs> offer to the first 100 people who click the link. You know, $397.50, just some weirdly specific number that we're going to charge You can't put a price on the thrill of victory. Exactly. You can't True. put the price on success and or winning in Mario Kart Double Dash. It's... But if you could, it would be thirty nine ninety nine. <laughs> now available. No, it would be. It would be. It would be thirty again. Thirty seven dollars and twenty six cents. It needs to be a weirdly specific number. Otherwise, we're not. Don't they usually end in ninety five or whatever? Not online courses for some reason. For like you know, for self help stuff. A lot of the time, they have weirdly specific values. Like instead of being rounded up to like three ninety nine ninety nine, it will be three seventy four sixteen. Like the, I don't Even know more why. More of a value. Think of all that. This, think of that exactly. quarter I'm saving. Think, well, think not just a quarter. Think about that quarter and a cent extra on top. You Ooh. know, a, a penny earned is a dollar saved, as they say. Except that's true. Yeah. I, when I tell you to buy this course, five <laughs> <laughs> hundred bucks. You it's said funny. those quiet part loud for you. What are you doing? I, it's it's really kind of annoying because it's like there's actually a lot of great advice to be found in this realm but like there's so many charlatans too you just got to be careful this realm this world we share this this earth realm this this uh, yeah the nether realm there's a lot of i, I mean i'd buy scorpion self-help book like <laughs> how to get over the grief of losing your family to a frost ninja and other Did, i don't know that he can write that book because he just went nuts well, no, but I'm saying he's gone on a spiritual journey. He's um, he, he's 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 come a long way. He's he's learning to he's learning to move on. He's, you know, I, I'm sure the scorpion in his free time does calligraphy or, or something like that. Painting. Maybe. I feel like he absolutely does a night with scorpion. I mean, do you remember cooking with scorpion? Cooking, cooking with, with scorpion. scorpion. Yeah, it was um. No, just. It was the little videos you could unlock in, I think, Mortal Kombat Deception. They were hilarious. You should look at them on YouTube. <laughs> Don't worry <heard> about that. <laughs> Back when video games used to have really fucking cool bonus content. Mm. 
you don't get that as much anymore. I remember um, Ratchet and Clank had this really cool... Uh, th th there was like this little room you could go into where you could see a bunch of cut content that they just had to remove from the game and you can play with some of those weapons and like equipment. Explore some of the, the concepts that just didn't quite make it into the game. That was really cool and they didn't need to do that, but they did. Was the, you know, it was neat. Like Someone in chat said they put their differences aside to work for Shang Tsung in the first Mortal Kombat movie. Definitely a story in there. What? What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> Scorpion. Yeah, but we were talking about that. We were just talking about Scorpion. Uh, what? Wait, what? We weren't talking about Scorpion? We were talking about Scorpion? I'm breaking no, we were, I'm so, I'm we weren't, so we weren't talking about the Mortal Kombat plotline from the 2021 movie. We were talking about just Scorpion writing a book. I don't know how the fuck those got mixed up. Oh. I don't think it was a mix-up. I think it's just when you were talking about Scorpion, others were like, Oh yeah, Scorpion, if you're from the first Mortal Kombat movie, here's the thing. That Does that seem like a jump to you? Like, oh, the, the plotline of that first movie, there is a story in there? It's like, what? Mm, no. If you say so, right. But what did you have to say about that? I mean, you must have read it out for a reason, right? I just thought it was funny. Oh. Like, yeah. the, like pulling out the the idea of an idea from the, the Mortal Kombat movie. The first one, where the story was incredible, you know? Wait, which one are we talking about now? The, the 90s one? Yeah. Yeah. The, the incredible story there. Just the, the incredible potential of how cool that story is. And people were, were sad that we didn't love that film. Well, we liked making fun of it. <laughs> Remember Reptile? Remember Reptile? <laughs> I remember that we saw the updated Reptile of the new one. We were like, whoa, he looks so good. Whoa, fuck. <laughs> he looks way cooler. And then Kano pulled his heart out and we were like, okay, we're on board with this movie. And then they not much happened. They loaded all the cool Kano shit. Yeah, yep. they did. Well, there was some more cool they Kano did. shit. It just took fucking ages to go to it again, yeah. I'm Kano. I'm a black fucking dragon. Ah, fucking laser beams. Better than um, fireballs, you pussy. <laughs> I remember the remember the part where he was training, he was jumping over the uh, the sweeping where he kept getting swept each other. Yeah, early. which... Like, oh, fuck. I feel like an <laughs> idiot for not pointing it out, but that's like a really common thing that ha just happens in Mortal Kombat when people play it. Yeah, they just repeat they that just move and sweet. you can jump and then it gets hit again and you're just like, fuck off. Like, spamming in Mortal Kombat is a huge problem. I kind of get the impression that even though Mortal Kombat kind of reminds me of like Sonic the Hedgehog where like video game movies are more willing to lean into the video game elements but they're still not prepared to dip their toes in fully. Yeah. Like they're, t they're sort of dipping their toes but they don't want to and maybe with the next one they'll Dude, actually just go a banana. full video game. Yeah. What a hero oh, banana. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my god. Look at that, come back. Look at how happy Piranha Plant is. Mola said there was no story to his grief, and that's why it was prompted. When did I say there's no story to his grief? I just said that he didn't... He, I don't think he should be writing advice on how to recover from it, because he went nuts. That's what I said. Well, if you've gone nuts and you've come back from that, if anything, you're even... You know, you, you really should share. Then again, well, maybe it is how he got through it. You know, going nuts. Yeah, of course. Maybe that's just, you know, it's like, step one, go nuts. And <laughs> step one, go nuts. Step one, one go nuts. Go step two, recover. Step three, write book. Thank you. <laughs> so, it's meant to be step two, question mark. Oh, God. Step three, profit. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, boys. <laughs> Holy fuck. Free, we yeah, get him possessed voice, there. <laughs> my voice just died for a second, man. Oh. My voice. My poor voice, but now it's back. Welcome back, boys. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think about reviewers when it comes to female characters? I don't know, but it feels like the well is so poisoned that all people see is a gender when maybe it's just simply bad writing or a trope. Um, um I mean, I guess it depends on what, the reviewer. I will say, I always get annoyed by the strong female character line because it's like, oh, I just see them as like a character. That's um, interesting. I'll go, I'll, I'll <laughs> one up you, Fringy. I find it hyper cringe when anyone automatically refers to a woman or a non white character as a diversity hire or a strong female character oh, immediately. Yeah, I mean, that, that is ultra cringe right there for sure. I guess it's just in general why are we fixating on this. Well, yeah, because uh, you're becoming the very thing you wanted to destroy, I would say. Well, it's just. 
you know, when I see Sarah Connor, I'm not like, ah, strong female character. It's like, ah, character. That's yeah, what, yeah. That's I, was, I assume that's what the yeah, super chat's going for. Yeah, she's a server, not a waitress. Exactly. <coughs> um, I don't know if that answers the question or not. I, 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 I think so. I think, yeah. Um, because I'm trying to think of like something. You know, like if Black Widow, if someone said Yelena is a strong female character or something like that, I should be like, I think that does distract from talking about the more important and more interesting, I think, discussion on how well is she characterized. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Look at her history, look at it. and this is the thing, um, I don't know, you don't do it for everyone in general, right? Imagine you're watching a review that said, oh, here we go, the 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 white male protagonist is here. And it's just like, oh. And, you know, and, yeah, and, and their whole thing is like they hate the fact that white males dominate protagonist characters or something. We'd just be like, that's cringe, right. stop doing that. Talk about the character writing. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, Shang-Chi brings up even more questions with Hulk and how damaged his character is. Though that's a thing I'll say for people in chat and hosts who haven't seen it. Um, we're not too concerned about, like, spoilers. We just, yeah, rags, I myself, metal. I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna be honest. Um, Hulk shows up as normal banner. Or rather, not Hulk at all, just Bruce shows up as Bruce. So it's like, eh? My god, it truly is the MCU. Oh. Yeah, and I'm assuming we just we just don't get anything for that, right, Fringy? What, for uh, the Hulk stuff, sorry? Yeah, because he's supposed to be Professor Hulk, so what's going on? That sort of thing. Yeah, I don't know, he's just a person now. Maybe we'll find out in the She-Hulk show, streaming soon on Disney+. Plus. Yay! No. I feel like that's another situation. Uh, we, oh, we cannot hear you. I haven't heard you say anything, Shad. Yeah. Oh, oh there, there you are. Chad, oh. you've been talking. <laughs> I'm alive. Am I alive? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, okay. No worries. Because, I, yeah, they, I've been actually trying to say things. I don't know what was going on for a number of times then. But anyway, uh, we, we shall continue. Yes. Uh, also really like that scene where Tony teases Bruce and starts treating him like a person. Oh, fuck, it skipped ahead. God damn it. Oh, one, one moment. Green Knight, Shang-Chi. There we go. You seem like a person, but uh, then Cap comes in and ruins the moment. Hi again, Rags. Hello. Yeah, um, so Tony's poking him just to see what's going to happen. And it's, it, it becomes clear that Tony's just curious how he's managed to keep a lock on his anger. Obviously, the... The big reveal in that movie is like he's always angry, so it's not a matter of controlling anger or whatever. Or you know, there's, there's more to there's more to read into, um, but I think that the Hulk story is so mangled now that like trying to read into like the story as a whole in the MCU would probably only disappoint. Mm. Um, but you're right, uh, Tony's having a little bit of fun with him, and he definitely has more respect for Banner than pretty much anybody there. Um, and Steve sees him doing that, and he's like, "Stop it." He's gonna, you'll, you might make him explode, which is funny because Bruce kind of having fun with Tony in that way. He's kind of appreciating the fact that he's not afraid of him like everyone else is. And then Steve does that to remind Bruce that, yeah, not only is everyone afraid of him, but also like he's treating him like he's a fucking a time bomb sort of thing, which, which would suck. Um, yep. Avengers good. Mm hmm. Fringy finding out no one calls it a capsicum was similar to rags and every American finding out more and Fringy put coins in their wallet. Well, <laughs> except the only difference is that people in India also say capsicum, so more people, people say India. it than the other way. Do you say more people say it than the other way? Well, if, I mean, if, I'm pretty sure like half of uh, Indians are, uh, speak English pretty well, so if you add that pool and then Australia, it's like, god damn, it sounds like more people call it a capsicum than... The Wait, you think way. India and Australia outweigh the rest of the world? Like, in terms of outweigh population? The rest of the in uh, no, in terms of... Well, it wouldn't be the rest of the world. I'm talking about English-speaking people, because I imagine it would be called something totally different in a lot of other languages. How many people are in America? Like 300 million, 350 million. And then, compared to what's Australia plus India's English-speaking... Australia... Probably something Australia like is 650, 700 million. 
Australia barely adds to the pool. Like the Australian, like India is really pulling above its weight in terms of the capsicum team. <laughs> oh my god. Well, stream heard that more than you guys did. Someone's outside doing a drag race, I guess. Oh, I didn't hear that at all, oh. yeah. Oh, no, they're gone again. Oh, oh well. There's a running joke that, because for some reason, when I'm on real BBC, like, semi-regularly, a fucking dog is outside barking. Like, it's happened several times. It's really oh, weird. Really? And, yeah, and they always assume it's just, like, rags just being like, hey, I'm here too. And it's like, oh. Hey, what's up? <laughs> What'd you guys talking about? It's a weird guys. Why'd you not tell me about it? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a capsicum! <laughs> you just really I wouldn't say that. He wouldn't say that. Well, no, he wouldn't. He'd say it's just called a pepper. Bell pepper. And he'd be wrong, while also... Would he be wrong, him. though? Well, from a different point of view, yeah. From a certain point of view, rather. Hmm. Okay, Obi-Wan Fring Obi. That's my test. This super chat is a part of us all. A part of us all. A part of us all. Sorry, I have to repeat myself, but it'll help you remember. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I think for me and Fringy, the only ones will know what's happening in that super chat. What was that mm. reference? Sorry. Right. <laughs> well, you know there you I'm go. so confident you'll get it, I'll read it again. This super the only chat is a. Why was... Yep, go ahead. This super chat is a part of us all. A part of us all. A part of us all. Sorry, I have to repeat myself, one. but it'll help you remember. <laughs> I remember that one. Yeah. The Lemon of Troy, I think. Yeah. What? Yes, that's right. That was a really good episode. I am a big fan of that where, episode. Like, the homie is like, sorry, you lose. Now if you'll excuse me, <laughs> I'm feeling a little hungry. And then he just eats a lemon. <laughs> <laughs> the face he makes is fucking yeah. amazing. He's trying to keep smiling smugly <laughs> while having to deal with having eaten something so sour. <laughs> really good. And they just like destroy... Lads is RV, I think, as well. That's right, they do. They destroy the tree as well. Like, they bring it back in yeah. the tough. What was it? And then, and then in Springfield, they have a turnip tree to have, <laughs> turnip, to have turnip juice. Turnip juice. Oh, I fucking lost again. God damn it. Oh, and that was the Roman numerals thing as well, where it was like. <laughs> he had to, you know, door number seven. The rest of them have man eating tigers in them. Yeah. <laughs> like, man. But he remembers it because of the Rocky films. Yeah, Rocky 5 plus Rocky 2 equals Rocky 7, Adrian's Revenge. How many Rockies are there now? If you include the reboot. I think there are eight. I think there are eight now, right? Because mm. isn't oh. there... What, were there four or five original movies? I don't know. I can't remember. It's either seven or eight. Mm -mm. Um, it's Fringy. Hey, Fringy, are you allowed to say Nora? What, Noah? Yeah. Like Noah? I think, I think Noah's Ark. Yeah. I get what they're trying to say. It's very clever. Yeah, no, I. No, I, I, uh, uh, I hell, right? yeah. Moses. Episode 4 of What If is actually pretty good. Don't check out the zombie episode. I don't, no, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I said I the also same thing when someone you. said that in my chat a couple of days ago. I was like, I don't believe you. Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh there he is. How you doing, Chad? Are you there? I'm there. There's something going on with my audio, because um, uh, you guys can't hear me half the time when I'm trying to share a comment or two. I don't know what's going no, on. No. I was going to say, I haven't heard you since hmm. now. I just, I just, what's going on? Nope. Yeah, so anyway, I'll keep trying. We'll try and try what, uh, what, what are your forward. comments? Um, oh, well, well, just on the nowhere thing, I was wondering, is this like saying heavier, <laughs> but like it's no, but even more so than nowhere. It's yes. like no er than on top of no. Ah, let's see. Hmm. The, the, I, I, very insightful, guys. Mm. Like, I was just, you know, <laughs> what, what would have happened if you guys didn't hear such a comment? I don't know. Gosh. I think you thought would be <laughs> over. It's all be done. Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, congrats Rebuild on the plushie sales, here. boys. Howdy, rags. Hello. And you're welcome. Thanks you. Thank you for buying them. Yeah. There's a. This is like at least. I think 2,600 little Mauler and Rags is all over the world now. 
Well, they will be. Did you buy them, Shad? Do you like to cuddle me and Rags when you're reading your books and stuff? Oh no, Aww. audio issue. Oh, that's yeah. so... <laughs> <laughs> Shad's like, I couldn't possibly answer that question because the audio is... <laughs> So, oh, yeah, yeah, someone said in a super chat for this game, but yeah, I think I mentioned it before, but the Dead Island multiplayer, that wouldn't be a terrible game to do an EFAB gaming with, probably. Mm. <clears throat> remember that game? I, I do. I vaguely remember it. The I trailer for it was it. awesome, right? That's that game, right? Right. And it had a great trailer, yes. and then the game came out, and it was fine. It was fine. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was. It wasn't bad. By the way, I feel bad if Shad was consistently trying to answer the question there. And... <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Oh, my God. Oh, no, there he is. Now. There he is. I, I literally gave us a, a whole sentence answer, and <laughs> no one can, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. We can hear you now. Go while you still have the chance. Well, you said if I, you know, asked if I bought the, the, bought the uh, plushies, and my answer, like, without skipping a beat, was, no, I'm not gay. Oh, boy. But, well, you know what? Yeah. That's, that's fine. What that's do you fine. mean? But I think you might be happy that I got muted on that one. Hmm. Ah, Maul is doing it to me. It's a conspiracy. Well, hmm. I don't want my Children, gay audience like to run off. And they're not gay, necessarily. Necessarily, yeah. If you buy a gay plushie, it would be gay. Would it? Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Easiest answer in my whole life, yes. Well, guess I'm gay now. Mm-hmm. Is it like double gay if I bought both of them? Oh, totally. Absolutely. Only if they gave Oh, what it. the? Doesn't they gate each other? Like, double gay is not gay or something? Activate. No, that's gayer. Oh. Change that's home. like saying, if I take one and add one to it, does that make zero? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I suck two cocks, is that still gay? It's like, yeah. <laughs> nope. No. Oof. Well, no, remember Cartman, he, he found out that... <laughs> He, after he sucked Butter's balls, he <laughs> had his balls to reverse the gay polarity. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that that episode ended with him just showing the pictures in front of the class because he thought that Kyle had stolen them. <laughs> it's, like, it, it, it's, you know, it's like, yes, the, the color saturation here is, you know, uh, there's a penis in my mouth right here, and, you know, it really, like, and, and the lighting here really. Uh, uh, what was it? He said, like, what is this? This is a commentary on the war in Afghanistan. It's wrong that we still have our troops there. It's wrong! It's wrong! <laughs> Over him sucking his dick. <laughs> 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 that was the whole episode where Butters had to go to the, uh... Oh, yeah, that was right. He had accountability buddies. Um, what was it? Yeah, that's right. Accountability buddies and by Curious and all that. <laughs> that was a great episode. That was a really good episode. Butters is an awesome character. Yeah, Butters is amazing. He, it's just... Hey, for you, you can't, you, if South yeah. Park or Simpsons had to be removed from existence the entire lot, which would you choose? The entire... I would... Oh, man, that is a tough one, but I think Simpsons has to stay. It's too significant in terms of, like, what it... You know, what it, what it brings about. But what I if think its influence be... maintained, but it itself had to go? I think I would still keep The Simpsons. I think, um, I think that 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 early part of The Simpsons is just like ace comedy, um, but it's not it's not a choice that I make <clears throat> lightly. If I added Futurama to that selection, would it easily be Futurama, or is that tough? All right, like if it was Futurama or South Park or Simpsons, but that's redundant. Futurama or Simpsons? Oh, right. no, yeah, the three yeah. of them. Uh, oh, like, and I have to get rid of one. Yeah. I I love Futurama, but I probably would get rid of Futurama because there is a higher quantity of great content in South Park because more more episodes that I think are really good. Fair enough. So yeah, if that was the tier, I guess it would be Simpsons, South Park, Futurama in terms of ones I'd be getting rid of first. But I would not want to be rid of any of them. Uh, hi Rags, don't watch Green Knight. Um... <laughs> <laughs> now you just make me want to see it more. Oh no. Oh, maybe that's their plan? They like, they want to recommend something, they're like, maybe if I don't, like, anti-recommend it, you know? I mean, I'm, I, I'm interested in it, I'd like to see it, so... Well, they follow up with... 
I straight up walked out of the theater right after they showed protagonist's hand covered his own squelching coom. Okay. Mm. And they suffer majorly from scenes going on and on. I have no idea what any of that means. But, um... I don't squelching coom. Mm. Okay. There is a trailer out for Midnight Mass. Who like is... That's been out for a while, isn't it? No, that's, no, that no, was released that's today. 21 minutes ago. I saw mm. on, on Twitter. You guys that... know that that's, there's, there's another trailer for Midnight Mass been out for a while. Oh. Yeah. I, I, well, I, I know you not know because Rags specifically said to you guys that he's not going to watch it because he doesn't want spoilers. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. So the, so the, I guess that conversation got memory hold. <laughs> it, it did, yeah. Well, we we have we have many many conversations. True. Can't always, you know, only so much bandwidth up in the brain zone. I think memory holding things is important. You gotta get just yeah, get some space. Like you said. I love the old M hole. Mm hmm. Mm. Chat Chi and the Legend of the Ten Super Chats. Ah. Um, oh, hey, Ding hello. Dong and the Legend of the Onion Rings. We're gonna have to give him a lot of space after I read this out, because Shad is probably still trying to answer questions, but, uh... Hey, Shad! <laughs> Gotta say, I disagree with your take on double-bitted axes, but it's a bigger argument than I can fit in a super chat. Keep up the great work, and high rags. Hi! Oh, I can see Shad's ring is green, but he's not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> and... Oh! There's... Can you get me? I don't know! Oh. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, now. yeah. Now we can. Yeah. It is. So, I have no idea what's going on. Um, <laughs> I, I literally just reset my entire Discord like voice settings then, and uh, I, it could be just the internet connection. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so well, we can hear accents. we can hear Fringy, and he's from Australia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm in Canada at the moment. Canada, remember? Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A place yeah. that presumably has better internet, but he's still <laughs> Australian. Allegedly, I don't know what you mean. He's still Australian. So are you? What? The bad internet follows you everywhere you go. It's in your DNA. <laughs> well, I assume that's what it was. Yeah, it's like a it's like a thing. I'm clearly cursed. That must be what it is. Um. Just on the double bitted axe thing, yeah, Scalagram made a great reply video. He added a bit more nuance to it and stuff, and uh, I didn't voice what I was saying probably clear enough when I said, you know, axes are heavy. I, I was meaning they're top heavy, they're not uniquely heavier than other weapons or like other swords, and you know, Scalagram was right to clarify that and stuff. And so, yeah, there, there's more nuance that can be had in the discussion, and I'm looking forward to the videos he makes on it. And uh, while, while I can be heard, I will say, <laughs> just on the plushy, plushy notes, uh, I actually think the plushies you made were great, okay? Aww. They're just not my thing. Yeah, I, I just, I'm not into plushies myself, but in terms of quality plushies I've seen, yeah. the ones These you made, the ones. they were very cool. They were very, very cool. Well, thank you, Ray. So, those Thanks. Be, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm very happy with how they turned out. I think they were awesome. Just, only plushies I will own. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I will happily own more plushies, but I think, I, for example, if Jay made a plushie, I would buy it, but I wouldn't care about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Is that it's, not, it's, plushie, it's because, because it was from Jay. It would be, well, because a Jay plushie might just be a Jay, you know? And I'd just be like, I'll put it on my desk, I guess. <laughs> you yeah. can hang out. Meanwhile, I would show all, all of my family members the rags one. I'd be like, oh, this fucking adorable dog. Yeah, look, oh, look, he's got sunglasses. What are those for looking at? Yeah. You're like, uh oh, it's nothing important. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, as far as I can tell, a lot of people are going to start doing them. I think that they want to do a set possibly for Friday Night Tights, and I was like, man, it's going to be like nine plushies. <laughs> Imagine they do like a buy all nine and you get 90% <laughs> off. 90% <laughs> off? Like, mm. I'm buy tempted. all nine, get 90% off. <laughs> it seems like a pretty good deal. It's like, mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, just go for it. Um. So, uh, out of curiosity, what is the like main counter argument to the double bit being a being a good thing? If if Shad's <laughs> able to. <laughs> <coughs> well, you know, I tried. Shad, I'm sure Chad's explaining it. Right, he's explaining it thoroughly right now, and it's really interesting. Yeah. But it's a different everyone in his living room is learning something. But uh, <laughs> so, what about now? over yeah. here? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, we can so, hear you now. You is know that, what? I sorry, ready? You're just on and off and on and off. It's on just, and off. Mm. 
Mm. So I can't even like speak up and try and intersect, you know, any comments in between things you say because I think I'm just getting, I don't know, it's like I'm getting noise gated. It's really weird. You could uh, go to uh, push to talk for a bit if you want. That, that might work. All right, all right, let's see what that'll do. Uh, voice, video. All right, so how's that? We can hear you now. Yeah, I think it's yeah. all right, yeah. And, yeah, and so, Rags, say something, and I'm going to try and cut you off. All right, well... Cutting you uh, off! I just can't, 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 can't. <laughs> Yeah, you did. You did. <laughs> Success! Success! I was so confident, I didn't even really start anything of, an, of note. Oh, the power is mine now. I can, I can do it, guys. Noise. Oh, I feel so satisfied. You have no idea. So anyway... Um, double bit versus single bit, I assume. Is that the correct nomenclature? It, it is, actually. And, Excellent. um, and so one of the, uh, you know, things, uh, like, uh, people say is like, all right, but having a, a, an, an extra axe head that's sharpened for backup, there's some utility in it. I was mm. like, I'll say, you know, maybe, I don't think it justifies doubling up the axe head myself still. Um, and then the other thing was, is like, you could have different kind of shaped axe heads. And that was kind of Scarlagrim's main point that he did in his video. And, you know, I agree you could have that. It's not kind of what I was criticizing. You I don't was criticizing... disagree that you... So you do agree that you can have different kinds of axe heads? Yeah, I agree. You could have different kinds of axe heads, but that's not necessarily <laughs> what I was criticizing. I was criticizing the stereotypical mirrored, exactly the same axe head on either side. I think, you know, that's the, that, that's the one that doesn't, like is very, or sorry, sorry, I should say, is harder to justify, uh, logically. Hmm. Do you reckon you'd beat a guy who had a double-headed, double-bitted axe head versus your single in a fight? I'm not going to give you any other specifications. <laughs> well, I like if all, if all things being equal, I, I, all other things being equal, same armor, same skill, same things like that, um, and I had an axe that was a little bit more lighter in, in the top heavy end because it had one axe head, but a spike on the other hand, and that meant I had a bit more versatility, that would give me the edge, you know, uh, over the person that just has, you know, the double-headed axe. In my opinion, wouldn't mean I would win every fight. It means I would say maybe 70, 30%. Out of the engagements, you'd probably come out on top because oh, of that shit. edge. I'm sorry, I just threw a giant banana on someone, it landed on their head. I'm just very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that is a wonderful achievement. <laughs> I agree. That's, uh, that's good stuff. I would uh, root for you in this theoretical battle, Shan. Yeah. I just, sorry, it's so freeing that I can now cut you guys off. It's great. I'm going to try and do that heaps now. And it's going to annoy everyone. Take his power away. <laughs> oh, there's someone in chat. Dude, that banana snipe. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Uh, boop boop ba doo. I need to know thoughts on Rick and Morty season five overall. Ugh. 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 That is in a sentence. Weird. Does it uh, uh, hill that much? Because I've started Rick and Morty, right? And uh, I've been enjoying. It. I think I'm on season three now at the moment. Um. Yeah, you're on the great era. <laughs> me and Frankie loved it right up until like season five, episode what four. <laughs> Four, yeah, four. That was like, oof, that was a bad episode, and it never really fully recovered from that. Yeah, well, like, Jay was saying yeah. with those last three episodes, it's hard to be as invested. But I think if we were still watching from like episode, you know, like back when we were still loving it, we probably would have had better things to say. But ultimately, like, it's they're better than some My of the other ones, but all, only because they didn't like assassinate the characters. And it's like, is that really worth a lot when you're not? Like, the plot lines are so shit, it's like, hmm. Yeah, my investment in that show is kind of gone. Yeah. Bad face. But, yeah. for those who are having fun with it still, you go right ahead. Especially if you're on the earlier episodes, go nuts. Oh yeah. Like, cause I, Free and I did rewatch the Citadel episode that we pine over a long, uh, right after, and we were reminded of how much we loved that <laughs> show when it was at its best. Yeah. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Dude, that that episode out of context is pretty good. Like, uh, I think so. Yeah. If you don't really understand a lot about what's going on, it's still got so much to say that you'd be able to pull out of it, I guess. Oh, is that the one where it's just like life in the Citadel, and you know you see yep. the Detective Morty and stuff, and 
Yeah, you get yeah. like a slice of life of all different uh, industries in this citadel. Yep, yep. I, I watched that only a couple of, couple of days ago, and yeah, thoroughly enjoyed. Well, I hope you enjoy it for as long as possible, Shan. Mm-hmm. Well, I will. I will. I'll. Yeah. I'll. But it's, it sucks when a show goes bad. Like it starts good and just goes downhill. Yeah. Um. Shad, more Vinland Saga, and tell these massives to watch it or else. Oh. Sorry, what? Watch what? Vinland Saga. Oh, Vinland Saga. So, I need to re-watch it critically. I've just kind of sat down and watched the first... Um, I haven't even finished the first season, I don't think. But, oh, you know, it was enjoyable enough for me to keep watching. Because when I was sick and I just needed something on TV, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll finally put on Vinland Saga. People have been saying I need to watch it. And I remember enjoying what I was watching enough to keep watching, and that says a whole lot more than a lot of other stuff that I end up try giving you guys. at. Fair enough. Uh, Fap E and the Legend of the Ten Frings. Hmm. Fap E and the Legend of the Ten Frings. <laughs> so, so what are the frings, though? That I really want to know now. Mm. Are they like could... rings? But... I, I, yeah, I don't know if they're just variations of fringy. Yeah. I don't know yet. We've got to collect them all. Okay. Ten different fringy-like masks? Maybe. And they each give you different powers. They have different, like, one's a crow and one's a stork. And maybe one is a, a tern. An arctic tern. Maybe one is a, an owl. One is a... Um... A, 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 maybe a house wren. One could be a robin. One could be a secretary bird. Hmm, that was one I was yeah, waiting for. One could be a, one could be a chicken. <laughs> a humble chicken. One could be a hummingbird. Just a little one. One could be a shrew. Trident Chi and the Legend of the Mother's Rings. <laughs> they made a Fringy's goo. Hmm. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's Fringy's commentary, though. It's not true. No. It's not true. Don't it's them. impossible. Don't them. Fringy, your mic is so much quieter. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> it always has been. I don't know why. I mean, yeah, you seem fine to me, but. Let me know, chat, uh, if you want to boost it. I'm gonna just reiterate the case. I miss mine from 150. I'm shocked. I still haven't heard any of you call the Suicide Squad protagonist Bloodsport. <laughs> Blood oh, oh, shit, you're right. Bloodsport. Bloodsport? Yeah, that's... Have we never <laughs> said that? I don't think no, we have, we have no. Hmm. What a shame. Yeah. Someone needs to draw a Bloodsport on Friday. Someone will. I feel like there's someone listening to this right now is like, that's pretty funny, actually. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. His suit has little patches of water on it, and you can just take them off and do stuff with them. Uh, Shad, a question about the gun blade. It's supposedly meant to deal more damage by firing shots, real or blanks, to cause the blade to vibrate. Is there any merit to that, or is it pure fantasy? More on attack. Uh, uh, an overly vibrating blade, depending on which angle it's vibrating on, would actually impact its cutting capacity in a detrimental way than enhancing it. Um, especially if the vibration had on the kind of the sideways horizontal plane of the blade as it hits, uh, that would really mess mess things up, especially with your edge alignment and stuff. And so, no, I don't think that that logic follows through. All right, Chad. Thoughts? Oh, wait, you answered that one. We got it. I'll um, put the ball with that one. If you could get a sequel to one movie, which would it be? I want a second social network. So many possibilities and stories to tell since the first events. Hmm. 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 I don't have a stock answer for this. I feel like I, I should. So, would the sequel to The Social Network kind of be like, you know, Revenge of the Sith, where it, you know, <laughs> falls from grace? Becomes Darth Zuckerberg. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Um... Uh, 
I wonder if we could include things like... Oh man, wouldn't it be cool that I think The Matrix could work if it had a sequel, you know? And it's like, it does, it's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Or, um... You know, Predator? would be like, Predator could work if it had more sequels. Like, cause, you know, I'm still not a huge fan of the, of the sequel to that. With Danny Glover. I like the first half. It's, it's good. So I'll be right back. Drink on this. Mm. 1917 sure 2. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the way I just crossed the finish line. Holy shit. <laughs> Willow 2, World War 2 2, Fight Club 2, Schindler's List 2, Tropic Thunder 2. <laughs> Tropic Thunder 2 could be a thing. I don't want a Tropic Thunder 2. Well, obviously, today. these are all <laughs> idealized sequels. They're not. Oh, yeah, then, then absolutely. <laughs> Titanic 2. Predator 2 is still good times. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm glad we have it. EFAP 2. <laughs> 12 Angry Men 2. It'll be 13 Angry Men. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. The Room 2? I'm surprised that didn't happen. Too Fast, Too Furious 2, again. <laughs> Hot Fuzz 2. I wouldn't want a sequel to any of the Cornetto ones. No. I reckon they're great. Yeah, what about Jurassic Park? That never got any sequels. There's probably good answers for this, but um, I'm just not coming up with anything. I'm sorry. Me either, actually. Yeah. Uh, Marvel's What If. What if Shang-Chi was a good movie? Nice. Also, we've done all the mirror mode now. Mwahaha. So what's left, then? Um, pretty much everything. I guess I was only doing... I only did all the hardest stuff. I didn't do any of the... And I say that, what I mean is, like, the longest stuff, I guess, rather than the hardest stuff. On uh, Longest right. stuff on hardest difficulty, so I gotta do all the shortest stuff on... So, like, I gotta beat the Mushroom Cup on the hardest difficulty when I already mm -hmm. did, like, the the four cups in a row thing. But that's fine. Yeah, yeah I guess. Um, thank you for your thoughts, Shad. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, happy to share them. <laughs> I, I can't, we can't do this one. This is Buffy's spoilers. The fuck Mary killed. They want everyone to add something. The only way to do that is to show no. fucking them all the characters, and that is complicated <laughs> to do that. I'm sorry. Don't ask Buffy questions yet. Give it 10 years, and I'm sure Rags <laughs> and Morton Metal will have seen it by then. I still don't believe that show's real. It's a fiction. It's You're a, it is a fiction. <laughs> That's true. That's why I changed it to a, it's made up. <laughs> it is made up. Yeah, the, made up. Is made the existence up. <laughs> is made up. I mean, yeah, technically. Fiction. Shut up! You know what I mean. Cried three times. Was he even bored? I, I do not know. I'm sure the brown table video on Shang Chi is going to be very funny. Yeah. Langoliers by Stephen King. Monsters outside of time eat all existence in the past. Airplane passengers have to get back to the present before they get eaten. <laughs> Man, okay. I think I watched like Amazing Atheist review that like a decade ago because I remember the whole like I'm pretty sure they made a movie adaptation of this. And it's weird. Um, hello to EFAP and Chadiversity. Nice. Chad would say hi. I'm sure of he it. Would. Any second now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know it's fine. Um, what? hey EFAP, could y'all do an impression of the jump grunt sound from Quake? What's the jump grunt sound? Oh, he does like a, huh, I think. I played it recently, but I already forgot. And what's just for you? The sound I like always remember is just the sound of them dying when you shoot them on, I think, easy mode. <clears throat> Where the, the Randys in the first like levels and stuff, the right, blah, blah, blah. I don't it's remember the jump grunt sound. The Quake guy does, does it. 
every time you jump. It was like, huh, 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 huh. oh, the her. Yeah, yeah, something along those lines. Huh. All right, rags fringy, go do it. I don't. The I don't know what the noise is. <laughs> Just yeah. I made it like seventeen <laughs> times now. <laughs> No, we don't get okay. It's just we just like, like, like going, just going like a like a her kind of grunt. Yeah, there or, you go. Uh. Right, I think all four of us have done it in some way, shape, or form now. <laughs> if J Metal and Meme Coom does fringy goo, bleh, does fringy goo? <laughs> what does it mean for you to goo, fringy? I don't goo. I like goo, I coward. It's not like, that's not... Fuck. The goo doesn't... The goo is something that is created. I mean, okay, fine. You guys, if you want him to, to goo, you're gonna have to try harder than that. He's not gonna let it get away that easy. <laughs> Damn right. Shiba Inu versus horse-sized duck. Sheep wins. Easy. No contest. No contest? Not at all? Domin domination. Indominus Inu. Indominus Inu. <laughs> uh, Y'all ever watch Nakey Jakey YouTube channel? <laughs> no. Excuse me. Who? <laughs> I that name's familiar. What does what does Nakey Jakey do? <laughs> that's that's a that's a great name. Be Nakey. Is he the one that's on like a um, space hopper? Am I on the am I on track there, chat? Let me know. I'm wait for, waiting for chat's approval. Exercise ball. Yes, he sits on an exercise ball. Ah, there you go. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen any of his videos, but I'm aware of his existence. I never... I never heard of him. And you haven't lived. Yeah, I don't know who that is. <clears throat> I've already crossed the finish line. Lame. Do better. I'm gonna have to. Okay. Rags, what do you think of the video Tifa in the box? Okay. All right. Only top tier answers today. I, <laughs> wait, Tifa in the box? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know what that is. All right. He does not know what that is. Uh. P-06 is a loving, ongoing remake of Sonic 06. It makes a 2 out of 10 game into a polished 5 out of 10 game. Lots of work going into it, made by one person, basically. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow, solid 5 out of 10. I mean, if he's... So, is that like taking the game and then tweaking it until you fix it, or is it building it from the ground up to just match Sonic 06 as best it can, but without being shit? I'd be curious which of the two What's that it? is. But, um, yeah, no, neat. Yeah, I got no. I was a passionate I, I Sonic fan, right? Really there. Li I guess. <laughs> I guess, man. Um. I, I, I the person who sent this. I'm not, I'm not going to read it out, right? Sp spoolers. Okay, I got to be got to be super careful. But um, if you think about why he made that decision. Um, to undo it, that's going to be the reasoning for why he would believe there would never be a scenario where it would be done. But uh, I can understand. You could say the same for the ring, if, if you know what I'm saying. Person who sent this. Oh, the ring. Anyway, did you guys know that orcas slash killer whales hunt mooses? I swear this is real. <laughs> I had no clue. Yeah, I, I certainly didn't know that. Uh, mooses? Like a mo if a moose is swimming in the ocean, the orca just just gulps it <laughs> i have no idea i'm trying to I imagine would be, i would be concerned that a moose would like struggle and poke it with its antlers or something hmm i guess they're smart enough to account for the antlers or would well, they because orcas are pretty smart they'd be and like oh they, yeah well they're apex predators they uh they can go for anything they want basically well, like apex on the including side. sharks i believe Good old killer whales. Um, I have clocked in over 300 hours in Doom Eternal, and they put a little heart. I hope you had fun. 
I hope you did. Oh. Um, and that's the, that. I that, that quote is from a good. Why are you doing so many Buffy spoilers today? <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. Uh, Y'all should try the recently added episode of Quake One. Recently added. What's this? Um, in Sunshine, anytime I'm in a secret level, I wish I could long jump. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's not in Sunshine, but it's in like most of the 3D Mario's, right? Long jump. Mm -hmm. Uh, in most games. Like crouch and jump, I think. Yeah. When, when you're, yeah. Right. Wahoo! Wahoo! That's what he says. Yahoo! Do you, do you do you like it when you you're low on health and you do it on all the jumps and he sounds like he's dying? It's just like, oh, wah, <laughs> yahoo! <laughs> like, Don't worry, Mario. Yeah. We're gonna do it. I'm just gonna go oh. underwater and come back up, and then you have health again. It's fine. It would be, yeah, that is one way to do it. It would be <laughs> funny as hell though, you jump into the water to do that, and then you like lose control, you don't see him, but then he floats back up face down, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Mario, please. <laughs> <laughs> you, say, you, don't, you don't respawn as well, that's just your safe file over there or not. Yeah, I'm just started, thinking about that. Just face down in the water. The Pinocchio, have you seen the Pinocchio face down in the water image? I'm just thinking about that, but with that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Um, Mr. Longbone of Mutlington Abbey, you gay, you massive faggot. Oh my god. I forgot that you can get that through with YouTube special thingy, because yeah, that's that's, that's pretty much in a, in no no word territory. Does that break TOS? I don't know. Obviously it does on Twitch, I just don't, I don't think it does on YouTube does yet, on Twitch, right? Yeah. I don't think it does yet, I'm not sure. Give it time. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah, it's one of those ones that I think will be soon. Probably. Yeah. Soon to end. It's the big offensive. Um, my Doom Eternal battle mode tier list. Top. Archville and Marauder. Middle. Mancubus and Pain Eternal. Bottom is Revenant. I don't know exactly what that means. Yeah, I don't know what the rankings really are referring to. Uh, despite pained wristisms, I had to switch to mouse and keyboard to stand a chance in nightmare mode in Doom Eternal. I just take lots of Tylenol, my liver will understand. Will it though? And uh... Yeah man, I, uh, I guess... Their wrists are in pain from doing other... Th maybe they draw? Maybe they... I mean, fuck, uh, my wrists have probably been fucked up by so much editing. Get some of that beautiful RSI every once in a while. Fringy, you've probably experienced some of that, right? A little bit, yeah. It's only gonna get worse as we get older, yay! Oh, <laughs> awesome. uh, today I heard you mention skins on the real BBC and it made me Kumatini bit. One of my favorite shows. What do you think of it? I mean, I watched season one and possibly two when it was coming out. I don't remember hating it, I remember having fun with it, but I don't know how it went. I don't know if there was more seasons than that, and I just remember it was crazy to see um, the protagonist of Skins turn out to be Beast in the in first class. And then he ended up being, Nicholas Holt is in like lots of stuff now, he's like a, he was in Mad mm -hmm. Max Fury Road, he was in, he was in all the X-Men newer ones. Yeah he was. Right. Oh wait, I just came first and I didn't unlock anything. I guess I did that one already. Fair enough. Um, what I'm trying to say is doing EFAP movies on Avengers, you massives. Uh, also, hi again, Rags and Shadman. Hello. I think Shadman and Shadiversity are two very different people, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is very true. Um... And as for a video, uh, an EFAP movies on Avengers, you'll you guys will probably get an MCU EFAP arc at some point. Or we'll go through the lot. That's probably the only way we're going to be watching Shang Chi, except for Fringy, because he's a trooper. UK hired a good actor to pretend he's Australian to progress that lie that Australia exists. The voice actor had three channels on YouTube: a Robot Head, Internet Historian, and Meme Repository. Damn, that covers most of them. Yeah. How do you explain the Fringy guy? You don't. Exactly. Unless you're just another operative? I don't know. Mm. 
um, in well, America. I mean, do we really know? Do we even know Fringy actually exists? Just saying. Uh oh. I mean, you guys have all been reacting to him. I'm assuming he's real. Why he's in your he's in your head too? <laughs> hmm. Fringy, say something that only you would know that none of us would know, but that we can verify. <laughs> um. No. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, checkmate already. Oh, uh, yeah, you kind of nailed it. All right, uh, I believe Shad. See? Told you. I do hear that this Fringy loves jetpacks, so... Hmm. Jetpacks are cool. I can agree with that, yeah. Um, in America, more than 90% coin pouches are female-only items. Well, that's fucking the men's loss, then. Favorite breed of dog? I like English bulldogs. Mm. Uh, Australian Kelpies are really cool. Well, I mean, I think you might you might be able to guess. <laughs> it's is it an Afghan hound? Oh no, those are those weird looking ones. <laughs> no. <laughs> those those are really weird looking ones, and they can't even swim. <laughs> oh, Can Mel, I'm, I'm disappointing you. You've seen the movie twice. Uh, I'm embarrassed. I don't, mm. You should be, because the last time you watched it was like two days ago. Dang it. Yeah, I'm going to wait. I'm waiting until someone helps you out. <clears throat> I just play my Mario Kart until they do. <laughs> you're someone, just paddling there, you know, like someone, you're someone drowning in chat knows. and nobody's... A couple of people in chat know that, that you can get your answers from I there. I, I don't have chat open right now. <laughs> oh, no. Mel really is oh. drowning. Yeah. Oh, fuck. We watched Suicide Squad. That's the only movie I've seen this week. I'm <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> yes. Uh, it should have been hidden enough. <laughs> I so thought you guys would all get it when I said Afghan Hound. <laughs> Oh, I thought, yeah, it's in the Suicide Squad. It's one of the things they mistake Weasel for, but I thought you were talking about, like, just, just an Afghan hound. No, when I said they can't swim, I figured that would have been the big, you know. Oh, yeah. I gotcha. I just like the idea that Mel was like, really? They can't swim? Okay, I don't know why that... What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> what? Seems mean. Um, do you have a favorite... Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, Shad, do you have a favorite uh, type of dog? I mean, there's dogs, yeah, I, 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 I like Huskies, Border Collies. Um, Huskies are wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's dog breeds that I really don't like. Uh, I hate what, pugs. What, like terriers? Fuck. <laughs> no, no, pugs. It looks like their face has just been slammed into a wall. It's like... Mm. I, I feel bad genetically for I, feel, I feel like... I feel, yeah. yeah, I feel yes. bad for them. I don't hate them. I, I just feel really bad for them. I feel very. I I just like normal looking dogs. The dogs that look like they actually did descend from wolves. So like Kelpies, Huskies, German Shepherds, Labradors. Mm. Those Shiba are Inus. all the Shiba Inus are all. I think Shiba Inu. I remember. Do you remember the game Nintendo Dogs? Do any of you remember I that? Do. Yeah, I do. I played it, but I didn't remember that the, game. Yeah. Yeah. The dog I got was a Shiba. I thought they were really neat in that game. And then there's like super adorable ones. I find the Andrex puppy to be adorable. I really like um, corgis as well. They're kind of they're, they're they're I don't really like small dogs a lot of the time, but corgis are uh, they're little fluff balls. Oh, and for the record, I really like Yorkshire terriers. I find them adorable too. I, oh yeah, no, I I I I actually don't hate terriers at all. But yeah, you there do. There's certain <laughs> types of terriers that I don't <laughs> like at all. The specific terriers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sake. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was uh? I'm just trying to think of other more obscure. I I do really like kelpies though. I think um I think long term in the future I would eventually want to get one. I just would want to if I did that I'd want to live on a, a big property like enough room for it to run around and do stuff. Kelpie makes me think of fish. Well, I. I guess I can understand why, but it, <laughs> it, uh, it, it ain't a fish, it's the dog. He's a good old Australian oh. farm dog. I mean, a kelpie could probably eat kelp, right? I imagine it would eat kelp and yeah. do it with a smile on its face. Yeah, you'd be having fun. I, 
the most famous Kelpie is, of course, Red Dog, the national treasure. Do, do you guys know about Red Dog? Are talking about Clifford, or are you talking about someone else? No, no. no. Are you talking about the movie? Talking... Are you talking about the movie? Well, the movie based on the real Red Dog, yes. Um, oh, well, basically, yeah, so... Uh, Red Dog is like a, uh, it was a Kelpie who, he belonged to, I believe it was an American. Um, I can't remember if he died or if he, if he left, but, um, this little doggo went on an adventure, like, all across Australia. I think he even went to other countries, just got on boats looking for his owner. Um, he, he got all over the place. They, uh, they built a statue for him in, um, in the town that he came from. Aww. So when you go there, they got a little statue of this doggo. It reminds me mm. a lot of, um, it reminds me a lot of Greyfriars, uh, is that what it was called? What, the, the, the one in, uh, Scotland who sat by the grave for, like, nine years? Greyfriars, what was, what was that dog called? Um. Oh my god. I think you, so that, I think, you know. <laughs> I want to make a joke. He's called Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seymour has a statue there in uh, in Edinburgh. Well, let me. I actually want to double check the the Red Dog story. I want to. I want to. I want to read this out for you. Um, let's see. Coco was the name of the no. The, the Coco was the dog that played Red Dog in the film. There he is. So, Red Dog was believed to have been born in the town of Paraburdu in Western Australia in 1971. He had a whole bunch of names, but um, Colin Cummings, believed to be his first owner, brought him to Dampier. The nickname Red Dog has been attributed to the Red Dirt of the Pirabilla region. Although Red Dog is a common nickname for Red Kelpies and Healers, much in the same way as Blue Dog or Blue is a common nickname for Australian Cattle Dog. His second owner... Uh, John Stazzanelli, a bus driver with, uh, Hamasli Iron, who took the dog with him in his bus. With John, Red Dog traveled as far as Perth, Broome, Roseburn, Port Samson, and Port Hedland. For reference, that is a significant distance to travel. Following, uh, Stazzanelli's death in 1975, Red Dog spent a lot of time traveling on his own. He was also taken in by many members of the community and a veterinarian who treated him. Each time he visited the vet, it was with a new owner. Red was made a member of the Dampier Salt Sport and Social Club and the Transport Workers Union and was also given a bank account in the Bank of New South Wales, which was said to have used him as a mascot with the slogan, If Red Banks at the Wales, you can too. Um, oh, damn, this is sad. Although Red Dog was well liked, it was believed that he was deliberately poisoned in 1979. Oh. Um, but he was, yeah, and and he, uh, there are a bunch of poems written about him. He's got a statue in the town. Yeah, everybody liked him. He was a little community dog. Just he's 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 just hanging around, and everybody he went on adventures. What a cool dog. It, it is. It is fun to think about these stories of like these animals that probably unknowingly have created this massive legacy for themselves far outstripping that of most people <laughs> yep it's kind of interesting and they did it all by accident <laughs> um i prefer mario kart on the snes metal equals hosenscheiber I don't know if that's offensive, Metal. I'm sorry if it is. I'm not a big fan of Super Mario Kart. It's 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 okay, but yeah. I don't I think I ever played this nice one. one. It's uh yeah, it's fun. It's um it's just that it's uh I think that the series benefited greatly from the transition to 3D. Hmm. Um, Molly, you're a Lisbonius now. Hi, Rex. Hi. Yeah. In chat, probably unknowingly. Yes, probably unknowingly. Who knows what dogs know? Yeah. I do. Rags does. Wow. We'll share the secrets. Nope. Okay, well mm. then you can't get upset if I don't want to share the secrets of the guru, okay? I'm not upset. Okay. He's just, just disappointed. You know, sometimes <laughs> it feels like you are. Wow, it's silence. okay. Yeah, I know. 
Uh, found you guys from your reviews on Star Wars. I loved your commentary on Batwoman and just finished watching your Lord of the Rings defense. Much love. Hey. Hmm. Yeah, all kinds of bits and bobs to grab from you <laughs> at this right point. right in front of a banana. <laughs> I did. I did. Maybe I did it for a reason, Fringy. Well, to prove a point. Drop it. You, you got dropped in front of it. Oh, That's no. unfair. Oh, I had to. I, I had to commit to that because I think that it's time that if I start taking the hits on purpose, then the other, you know, cart drivers will start feeling guilty and maybe stop trying to hurt each other. Hmm. You know, like stop this violence. Just fucking race. You know, just do your own thing. You don't have to attack people all the time. And that would be a weird variable, wouldn't it? Like. You have to, there's like a, multi, a modifier where everything's the same rules-wise. Well, item-wise. But if you hurt another driver at any point, you lose automatically. Oh. Right. What was that? Chad telling himself he had a text message. Oh. Oh, you, oh, you actually heard that. You hear my phone, but not me. Well, no, we heard <laughs> you talking about your phone. <laughs> <laughs> Unless your text message notification is you going text message. <laughs> Which would be weird, but not, you know, impossible. Got a text message, mate. Hey, by the way. Chad, it's weird that you do that, but I'm not going to tell anyone, don't worry. Someone wants to communicate with you, but like, not urgently. <laughs> um, but yeah, glad you found us and hope you're having fun. I, I figure at this point, if you type in EFAP and then a particular thing you like or a selection, you'll probably find something that we've covered that you have interest in. Maybe. I accidentally bought the plushies separately. Oh, That means you don't get the discount. That's how that works. I'm scary. Um. <laughs> Does anyone here watch Survivor? So addicting. Surviving? I'm addicted to surviving. <laughs> I mean, it was Survivor, like Survivor, but, but uh, I don't watch that either. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh, so many references we're not getting today. Yeah, stop it, chat. Um, will we ever get blind mana coverage? Also, are you as excited for Midnight Mass as I am? The answer to both of those is yes. Yes. Very excited for yes. it. Because blind mana was incredible. I would like I mean, more. Boring. <laughs> Shut up, Metal. Okay, I'm sorry. But yes, we'll be watching it. Um, and I assume yeah, we'll yeah. be watching it in October times. You guys remember when we'd finished, I think, was it six episodes of Bly? And then it was like, some two people wanted to go to sleep and we were like... <laughs> no, come back. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It was Jay. Jay was definitely... No, didn't we get to episode 5 and then I had to leave like I had to? Was it? I, I just remember that we wanted to carry on, that's all. Yeah, yeah no, I do remember it. that. Dude, I love it when I love content so much that I, I get that experience where I'm just like, I must see more, I need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Feels good, man. Feels good, man. Oh, that was a mistake. If Shad is still in Montreal, he should Google Le Dragon Rouge. It's a medieval-themed restaurant, tad expensive, but the atmosphere is fantastic. I'm literally going there tonight for dinner. I'm not kidding. Whoa. <laughs> oh, wow, go. my god. Who wrote this? God. Oh my goodness, the simulation is breaking down. <laughs> Forgets who has yeah. the cheat codes. I don't mean, and like, I'm actually gonna have to say say goodbye to you guys in like half an hour to an hour because that's where I'm going. I'll be going to dinner oh at Le Dragon Rouge. Nice. We have to tell us all about it. What does that uh, translate oh, oh, oh. through? Red Dragon. Rouge Dragon. Oh right. Okay. Maybe it's referencing the Welsh Dragon. Maybe, yeah. Oh, oh. What, you're saying that you've appropriate, or alternatively, the Welsh dragon was appropriated from this specific place in Montreal? Potentially. I can't know for sure. Um, I bought both plushies for my daughter. I'm going to settle the ongoing debate of who is cuter between Rags and Mauler, once and for all, using science. It's me. <laughs> I somehow doubt your daughter's going to find the Lovecraftian plushie cuter <laughs> than the dog, but we'll see. <laughs> Your um, daughter might be a freak. Wow. No, it, it, I welcome all who find Cthulhu cute. That's that's totally fair. Um, hi, Rags. Hi! 
Oh my god, that was a loud one. Can you give me your pitch on why Paladins is better than Overwatch? Oh, um... So... I think there's a bit more customizability to Paladins, and... In a way, it's... I don't know, I've, I've been frustrated, like, the last couple times I've played it. Um... I feel like there's a lot of just cheap character. I don't know. I think it's better, but... Like, I've played it a decent amount, and I've... I think I've mostly enjoyed it, but... It's... Like, there's customizability for characters in terms of builds and stuff, but I feel like half the characters are just... Cheap. And there's a lot of bullshit in the game. Like, in terms of characters you could just, like, leave, they could press a button and teleport away or run away from you. And a lot of the game is based off of trying to outnumber the opponent in terms of, can I do more sheer damage than their healers can heal them and that sort of thing. There's a lot of meta combinations of things and... I don't know. Uh, I, I do... I would rather play it than Overwatch, but... I... Eh. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't really given it like a lot of thought. I just, I just know the last couple times I've played it, I just ended. I, we just quit because we got fucking frustrated. Uh, they followed up with saying got into Overwatch this year, but it doesn't seem worth it until the second one comes out. I don't know yeah, actually anything about Overwatch that. Are they making a second years. Overwatch? Yeah, they're making yeah. Uh, Overwatch Two, hmm. which is just like an extra mode for Overwatch. I was gonna say like. Oh, you guys remember when they did that with Left 4 Dead? I, and, and admittedly, Left 4 Dead 2 is the better out of the two, but man, that was a weird time because it really felt like they'd just not made much difference. Mm. Felt like DLC. But hopefully Overwatch 2 will have significant difference. Well, they are adding a story mode, but I don't know how Ooh. much that's worth. With everything, Fringy. You like stories, don't you? I do like stories. I'm not sure how much I like Overwatch's story though. Like, um, I like The Last Bastion a hell of a lot. Like that's, I really enjoy that. But yeah, The Last Bastion is great. I don't know, the rest of it, I've, I've sort of changed my mind on a lot of those shorts. I'm like, they're, they're, yeah, they're neat, but like they're not super impressive in terms of, I like The Last Bastion, I like dragons, and I don't know if I could qualify the other ones as being that great. Um, <clears throat> I recommend the standalone Transformers vs. Terminator comic. Cleverly spliced story of two franchises, a Terminator that isn't depowered and a T1 version Sarah Connor that even manages to get a kill in. Transformers vs. Terminator. Well, yeah, like, which one? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, this is all it says. Hmm. Um... I think Transformers would win pretty easily. Um, I think so, yeah, because like they have quite the weaponry. Um, exactly, and the size. You, Optimus would just be able to pick a Terminator up and rip it in half. You'd think. And toss it into space. <laughs> just be like, bye. <laughs> See ya. That would count as a win, I'm sure. Uh, have you watched the thick of it with Peter Capaldi? No. But I've seen clips and it looks funny. I'm assuming everyone else here has not seen it. I haven't seen it. But despite uh, Game of Thrones, right? Oh, not Game of Thrones. House of Cards. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> but maybe. I think it did. A chance meeting leads to the breach of taboos. Their eyes pregnant with passion. Fringy eagerly deposits his goo into Metal's wanton blowhole. No. no. They're no, both saying no. It, is that no, a little... you liar. Is it still canon, even if you guys say no? Yeah, wait. It's not no. canon. It never happened. Alright. Sorry, Super Chatter. Uh, Shad, what do you think of Ender's Game book series and the terrible movie? I love the book series. Um, uh, Ender's Game, of course. Absolutely phenomenal. Speak for the Dead. Ah, oh, some of the most insightful and creative kind of uh, exploration and portrayal of alien life forms, and how if it really goes along a completely different evolutionary path, 
but it still follows its natural kind of progression how different kind of the creatures would end up also scott card is i feel one of the uh greatest writers of uh, the modern generation and he um uh, does not get the credit he deserves and uh, and so yeah and then uh so the bean series when you follow because speak of the dead happens so much after enders game and then he wrote several books kind of in between that are the more chronological sequels and stuff uh really really enjoyable he is a master of sci-fi also scott card uh the movie of course was disappointing it doesn't hold a candle to the book yet i as a just a movie by itself i found it enjoyable uh if i was to just rate it on its own uh but judged against the book nah it doesn't it doesn't come close What's in Scott Card is, uh, people don't like him, right? Like, some people don't it's like him. He was outspoken. Yeah, he, was ver he was very vocally outspoken against gay marriage, and then people uh, maligned him as the devil as a result. Um, and he he literally he got pilloried. He's one of the first victims of cancel culture before people actually started to push back against the crap. Uh, he's actually a tremendously, like, kind and thoughtful person. Like, I've, uh, I've uh, I followed him for a long time, reading his reviews and vlogs and stuff. And you can just like if even if you see the how he represents other religions and stuff in his book, like in Ender's Game itself, he, you can actually see he's a very open and considerate person. He's also just very has his strong religious beliefs. Uh, okay, look, I mean I don't like that it, take, but you know, like yeah, it's, it's not a that big shit deal. Take. But was he has well, he since? Just, does he separate the art from the artist? I guess. Does right? he? Does like, he maintain uh, that position, or? Oh, what take? That he. The, um, the, the gay marriage uh, one. The gay marriage one. Um, I mean, I think he's. I don't know. I, I, the most, the the most recent thing he said on it was when the law passed. He said, uh, "Yeah, the argument's over now. Now it's uh, become the law of the land, and." Uh, and that's the end of the discussion, basically, uh, is uh, mm. the last thing he said on the matter. Um, okay, so has yeah. A... Uh, Which is fine. Hold on, I'm just, uh, I'm just, because I'm, I'm just on good old Wikipedia, because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not super familiar with all this. <coughs> um, uh, yeah, I think his take sucks, actually, as I'm reading it, <laughs> but, like, it's, um, yeah, it's whatever, right? I, I haven't read uh, I haven't read Ender's Game. It, that's the one where it's like they play video games to to like prepare to fight a bunch of aliens, right? Is that like sort of the um, uh, young kid young kid recruited into kind of like a battle training school, and right. uh, to prepare to prepare for an alien invasion. And I won't spoil the twist, but it has a just a phenomenal twist. I think I might own that book, actually. I'm not sure. I think I bought it because, you know, it's like one of those almost feels like required reading sort of things. Oh, totally. Like, if you're interested in sci-fi, um, Ender's Game is like one of the greatest ever written series. I will have to put it on the list. Mm. <coughs> um... You should watch all of Skins sometimes. There were seven seasons, and the characters get switched out every two seasons. Season seven, six episodes that show us what selected characters they've been up to. Good rat. Well, that is an interesting little format. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe someday. Um, Shad, love you and your book. Very excited for the short film. Always thought your book would be great as an animated series. Would you ever try that? Uh, yeah, if it ever came uh, as a possibility, uh, I actually think um, it would translate quite well into anime. Uh, there are certain kind of uh, action sequences that I think anime would be able to just go nuts with, with uh, the way that they're able to just do really over-the-top stuff at times. Uh, so yeah, it has crossed my mind, and I think it would translate really pr pretty cool into an animation. Um, don't know if it'll ever come about, because uh, I would need to get the book translated into, you know, Jap Jap Japanese first or something. But in terms of uh, a Western animation studio, I don't know. See, I'm more skeptical if they could do it justice. But there's a couple of good ones that could probably do an interesting job with it. Uh, it would work better in terms of uh, uh, outlook when, you know, being produced in, uh, you know, um, in English speaking things, I think it would uh, work better as a movie or a TV series, which is, you know, we're actually exploring the possibility of pitching 
the um, Shadow of the Conqueror as a TV series or film to uh, some potential investors or studios, you see. Ah. I think. Um, crocodile versus tiger-sized brown recluse spider. Oh <laughs> God. Say so. Say the matchup one more time. Crocodile versus tiger-sized brown recluse spider. Crocodile-sized brown recluse. So if the brown recluse can't penetrate the um the the crocodile's hide, I don't think it'll have any kill potential. Yeah, I mean, first thought would be crocodile, but maybe it's because I don't know enough about the brown recluse to know what kind of danger it would be to the crocodile, I guess. But, um, meh. Yeah. yeah, I am... Um, I'm not certain. I, I'm really not certain. Hmm. I'm going to go with the crocodile for now, though. I think I'm going to go with a crocodile as well, because I'm just not convinced a brown recluse can, can essentially can kill it. Uh, have you guys seen Cromwell from 1970, starring Richard Harris and Alec Guinness? If yes, what do you think of it? I have not. I have not seen not that either. I have either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. Nah. Toad, Toadette, and Toad Cart. Let's get that. Wait, I think I already... Oh, fuck it, whatever. Um, Love how Ritual of Chud was useless in It Part 2. Ritual of Chud? I have no idea what that is. How many of you guys have seen uh, It Part 2 here? I haven't seen either of them. I have not seen it, no. I still think I'd recommend the first one. The second one was a little bit meh. Bill yes. Hader's in the second one, Fringy. There you go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I meant to do with that. I mean, like, I think he's a pretty good actor. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, like, because uh, was he? Did he start on Saturday Night Live? He did. He uh, he did some lines. Because he was uh, t briefly in the writers' room for South Park for like a couple of seasons. Hmm. He was also the voice of someone from. It was Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, right? Rags, you. you I think he does a lot of voice acting. Bill Hader. Yeah. I think he was. Um. I think he was Flint. The, That's the, the main Tagus. character, right? Flint yeah. Lockwood. Yeah. Flint Lockwood. Um. Fringy thoughts on Tenet 2020 and The Evil Within. I have not watched Tenet, nor have I played The Evil Within, so I have no thoughts on either of them. <laughs> I've played Evil Within. I have played the a... second Evil Within, and I, I enjoyed it quite a bit, and I would recommend it. I've been told it's better than the first one. Um, I wasn't a fan of the first one. Some no, stuff I liked in there. director of Resident Evil 4, right? Oh, I think so, yeah. I remember that being part of the marketing. Um, and yeah, Tenet, we've not, we all of us haven't seen that yet. We'll have to do that at some uh, point. I've, I've seen it. Oh. <laughs> Does that count? In the Fuck you. <laughs> 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 no, it doesn't count. You uh, loved it, right? It was your favorite? I was entertained, but I think it's very confusing and I don't think it makes a lot of sense. Wow. Um, What's the last movie I watched in the cinema, actually? <laughs> Damn. Tenet? Yeah, I, I hear regularly that it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Is it that, or is it that everyone doesn't understand it? It could be that, but I feel like if the director is the only person who understands it... <laughs> <laughs> there's, like, there's like one guy out there who understands it, come on. There's one guy who understands it. Maybe, oh, what if it was like a random cameraman or a lightings guy, and he's just shocked that nobody else gets it, but he's the only it's like, no, seriously, it made loads of sense. It. it was really good. You guys are haters. <laughs> just haters. You guys don't get it? Don't you get it? Going I can't hear what they're saying. 
Yeah, that 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 part really blows my mind. That all of all the fucking directors that consistently fucks up sound, it's Nolan. It's like how. I really want to be in the room when they decided to commit to the stupid Batman voice. I want to see <laughs> Nolan defending it. Like, no, seriously, it'll be great. Um, we got to split up because we fought that one time. I... Oh, I think that's referencing it. Uh, blame rich people for modern pugs, looks, and problems. If you look back a hundred years ago, they did not look like that. I'm not gonna blame... Yeah, you still I, I blame people. Like, plenty of people encourage that industry. Yes. What I was gonna say is that you do see those pictures of, um, of animals about a hundred years ago, and, like, how they've been kind of destroyed. Yeah. Um... Apparently, German Shepherds, a lot of them, their their back tapers down a lot, and that just makes it difficult for them. And then you got like, I think beagles have spinal issues, and yeah, like these animals, they looked fine a hundred years ago, but then they got bred completely into something else. And it makes me sad. It makes me really sad that we would do that because we want the dog to look a certain way. Well, it's weird to me because like they'll often say like it looks cuter, and it's like it doesn't though. <laughs> I don't think it looks cuter, and also it's harder for it to be alive. Exactly, like, it's life is a lot harder. I don't find it so... cute when they die. <laughs> like... well, yeah, wow, I, I guess it's, like I actually do have kind of quite negative opinion on like just breeding dogs in general and participating in it. I really don't like it. Well, I'm fine with it if it's not, like, if it doesn't hurt him or anything. Well, yeah, sure, but I mean, I guess that there's more than that, right? Isn't isn't the uh, isn't the whole thing that there are just, like, a lot of dogs that get bred? It's like, oh, they're not cute enough, and then they die, they get put down. Just, like, that there's a lot of dogs that get churned out, and a lot of them don't get adopted or picked up, and then they just oh, get killed. Oh, like, and oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, I'm against that. Yeah, no, I hate that, but unfortunately that's like what happens when that's the system that's in place in terms of people wanting to get dogs bred, right? Ooh. So it's like, a, it's, it's, it's a natural consequence of that system. Mm -hmm. I, it seems like cats don't I... have this problem. You know, cats yeah, just it depends get on what the. Yeah, I think it depends on what the end goal is, um, because yeah, yeah, dogs get a lot of selective breeding for cuteness and stuff. But I mean, on the inverse, look at horses. Like horses have become bigger and stronger, um, and because they started out tiny little things, and now they're yeah. huge. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I, I mean, because of course, so, like selective breeding is kind of what created dogs in the first place. But it seems like we went from really good results where we had like really healthy, strong dogs that were friendly to people and could do stuff like wrangle sheep to these dogs that could not survive on their own. Yeah, the design to be kept yeah, it's, in it's... like a bag that you just go, yeah. look at my dog, isn't it cute? And it, it always feels like, I guess it always feels a bit weird that that it's almost like we're not respecting the animal by trying to keep it, you know, as as, as a self-sufficient being that we, that we had to turn it into something that is... You, you're almost connecting a Jurassic Park, where it's like, you're trying to harness nature. Stop it. Let it be its Well, I feel like it's not even harnessing nature, it's like, it's kind of squandering it, because like, we're removing all these really cool aspects of dogs, just to make them look a certain way, when the dogs that we have are perfectly fine. Like, I think that normal looking dogs are neat, you know? We don't need to have all these crazy breeds of dogs that, like, can't walk and need to get their spines operated on every couple of years. Um, I'm fine I with... I, as long as... If it doesn't create, like, health issues and that sort of thing for the animal, I'm fine with selective breeding. Sure. But... A lot of the time I, it seems to, though. Like, pugs, yeah, any short, yeah, that's short snouted dog. Like, from what I understand, pretty much every short snouted dog has so a wait. lot of difficulties. What if we make changes so that it is absolutely healthy and fine, if not literally lives a little bit longer, but simultaneously cannot survive in the in the wild without human... Well, it just can't survive without humans. Um, I guess... I'm not sure how I feel about that, because I always get the concern... I guess the problem is that we... Like, we, we don't just release dogs out into the wild, you know, yeah, if they don't the get thing. adopted or anything. If they, if, if there was a situation where, cause they, they lived, they lived to, with people, 
their entire lives and they don't exist yeah. in the wild at all so in that sense being able to survive in the wild doesn't have any like point in that sense um so as long as because there's plenty of like plants and stuff that just do not exist out in the wild and yeah, no, of course. It's, to, I mean, yeah. it's it's something like wheat. Wheat is from the uh, the the um, from like the Middle East. That's where it came from. But wheat, I might be wrong about that. Well, we're talking about the corn it documentary uh, that I, I mentioned <laughs> earlier. You always um, find a way to get back to the corn documentary. Uh, look, corn is interesting. I, I will say, <laughs> I um, I'm not denying like, the interest in corn. I I, I would yeah. never. But I guess that, uh, that that example, right, of like wheat came from one place in the world and now it is everywhere in the world and it's incredibly useful. And in fact, the presence of wheat everywhere has made it to where there are a lot of societies that can actually, you know, like farm and, and, and do that and have stable, somewhat stable food sources. Um, so I guess that's, an, that's one to think about in terms of like the benefits of creating things that are kind of entirely dependent on our survival i guess it's the idea would be that as long as we assume that human beings are going to be around for a while then um yeah yeah I as guess long we... as you don't yeah well, if, if you, i'm fine the, with the idea of making an animal that can only exist in captivity if you take care of them as a result like you now have a responsibility in a sense yeah I, I, I well i mean i absolutely agree if you take on an animal you're responsible for that animal's well-being I Just got the impression, and... by listening to what you said, Freen, that you, you were more appealing to the lose attributes, and that alone is a bad, like... I, I don't think I could possibly say that, while also being like a hardcore, I want us to go into AI, I want us to build like cybernetic parts, I want us to basically try and control our own evolution, in a certain sense, like, not in the, like in terms of pushing ourselves forward and trying to improve ourselves and things like that. I don't think I could have that stance while also saying, but nah, animals, you know, just the way they are, you know? More of an errant thought then, because I, I was, I found it interesting, that's all. Uh, oh, I, I um, guess, go ahead, Chad. Oh yeah, just uh, an interesting side to this about the morality of creating human dependent animals is that it doesn't necessarily come from like a, a malicious beginning where humans like animals, the animal like the humans because the human is feeding them, they don't need a hunt, and then the animals are actually choosing to stay with the humans as much as the humans wanting them, and then the natural byproduct of their cushy life ends up being the evolution that they become wholly dependent on, they lose the attributes needed to stay alive independently. And so it's just an interesting thing that this was also done by the choice of the animals because they also kind of preferred that outcome as well. Now that that is an interesting point that you raise there because you're right. Like it, it started off as a mutually beneficial um, relationship, but then you have to think about like, for instance, a lot of animals in the modern day. Like, is the cow there? The cow is incredibly uh, evolutionarily successful, at, at least. If, if the only metric for success is how many of you are there, but the no, average, average cow... Health of, I think the average well, health of the animal and its longevity... Well, so, that, that's, and... so that's that's where I'm going, right? Is that if you look at it purely from a numbers game of how many of them are you, if that's what evolutionary success looks like, then cows are incredibly successful. But if we're talking about how happy these animals are, cows are not very successful at all. I'm, I'm sure that the yeah, average I mean, cow... If they treat them so long until they die... <laughs> well, well, I mean, well, it's it's the whole idea that, like, for instance, the chicken, right? Like, a lot of chickens get kept in, um, in, like, these tiny little yeah, cages. Yeah, there are horrible conditions they... for yeah, chickens. Yeah, but, yeah, that's, that's I, I guess bad. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's what I'm getting at, right? Is, like, the average chicken probably would have been better off out in the wild doing its own thing than where it is right now. Um, it, it has provided everything that it needs to live but not live happily or comfortably and it's kind of the issue of the psychological needs of animals you know all animals including humans it's just um it's not really accounted for in just keeping everything alive and existing wild cows would stand no chance against predators that doesn't change anything that i've said what what do you mean that that wild cows existed for a long time like and even then that's not 
there, there are animals that have predators that would probably be better off psychologically existing out in the wild than living in captivity. Oh. I don't know and, if it's uh, cows, cool. <laughs> yeah, cows are capable of defending themselves to a certain extent, especially I'm, the bulls and stuff. Like, I'm sure that I'm sure they are. Yeah. Yeah, like I, we I, we used to cross a uh, paddock on our way back from getting dropped off at the bus stop, uh, and uh, my brother got chased by a couple of cows once, <laughs> and it wasn't the bulls; they were just the cows, and he totally got freaked out. He came home crying. Yeah, I'm Aww. I'm sorry. I got to call someone out and chat. It's a chicken. Who gives a damn? I don't care about the comfort of chickens. What what is what's your problem? <laughs> like, oh my god, a freak. <laughs> I don't know why you would be completely and utterly like indifferent to the welfare of animals i mean Hopefully they, that's I would, i'd be curious to extend that to dogs and then you know well i mean that's that's when you get into the real black pill isn't it when it comes to like the welfare of animals everyone watch blackfish it's a documentary about how is it sea world or whatever the fuck in america treated uh, orcas it is so fucking sad yeah. The, wow, whole, the whole thing is just really yeah. sad you just watch it and you just get really sad about the state of the world with animal care Mm-hmm. So anyway, like, where, 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 where? Wow, it's, um, I, I don't disagree. I, I don't know. So here's the thing, like, you can, you can simultaneously be like, yeah, I'm okay with just, I don't know, like, meat consumption and stuff like that, while also not wanting the animals to suffer horrendously in the process. Yeah. Um, Those are two entirely, they are not uh, contradictory things at all. So, yeah, that, that's what I was referencing before, is uh, battery chickens. I'm pretty sure that's what they're called, where they're basically just born and bred to be eaten, and they don't have yeah. happiness whatsoever. No, they just exist to die. Um, but but not even exist to die in, like, hey, well, at least you get, like, a solid few years of just having... roaming around and stuff. But, uh, yeah. So, so question. What if we could mm -hmm. engineer, through evolution of some kind, a chicken that was mostly brain dead and its only function so, was to Oh my god, eat, Bojack. Basically. I, I, Bojack, but, you know, I'll do you <laughs> really? one better. Bojack did a thing, except it doesn't make sense because Bojack is in a world where chickens are like human beings, basically, so yeah. it doesn't really make any sense. Um, but, I mean, I feel like this is the... It feels like the inevitable end point is that we, we just are able to organically grow meat. Yeah, we're already getting there, right? an animal. <laughs> that feels like the natural yeah. end point. I've seen some kind of fake meats that are actually really close. Because, I mean, animals essentially convert, like, organic matter into meat. Like, cows eat grass and stuff and hay, and but there's a, there's a mix. But still, they're essentially converting that type of input into meat. And so, you know, people are starting to try and figure out almost close ones. And I think, yeah, you're right. The end result will be, will be able to make it ourselves um, artificially, think... but actually have it. Yeah. And have it be basically meat, like not have it be a meat yeah, substitute, exactly. but that we're actually getting to the point where it is basically meat. But you can't tell. Yeah. Um, I I think that probably would be that would be that would be ideal. Um, that that would well, yeah. And if be... it becomes way more like way cheaper and way more efficient, then that's going to change the world. Oh yeah. As soon as it becomes cheaper, and if it tastes just as good, it will flip on a dime instantly. Like. Um. Yeah, I, I, a few things in chat. Um, the idea that chickens suffer from captivity is just silly. I don't know if you've seen, like, the videos, my dude, but it, it ain't a fucking nice life, living in a battery farm. Yeah, um, the ones I've seen, they're literally in cages that are only slightly bigger than they them. They can't move. Yeah. They basically can't move. They sit there to grow and then die. It, uh, I, I doubt that the chicken's like, hey, this is great, man. I'm having a great time. And um, there was another yeah. one, to pray animals live comfortable lives in nature. I'm not sure that it's like a matter of comfort. It's kind of like if you've if you've developed as an animal to be a prey animal, I wonder what that means psychologically in terms of the things that you value and care about. The impression that I get is that the lives of a deer is basically la 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 la, eating grass. Oh no, a wolf. Oh no. And then it runs away. And then as soon as the wolf's gone, it's like, ah, yay, grass. I'm so happy. That's the impression I get. I could be totally wrong, <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, and then when they're in the cages, they're forever waiting to be like, when am I going to, when are we doing the walking when around stuff? 
don't look up veal i don't need i saw the south park episode on veal <laughs> that was like uh that was one of them oh god like i didn't know that um yeah yeah and so the the answer of course is like free range chickens and stuff which there's a lot of farmers way. and companies doing that and uh and that's that's a perfectly appropriate answer but there are like some like there are chicken farms that have them locked in like pitch black sheds with no grass or anything and they are they are piled in shoulder to shoulder and they have so many hormones to grow bigger you know breast meat and stuff that they're so fat that they can't even walk um Mm -hmm. And they're just kind of just flailing about uh, in in crap, just in their own feces, um, yeah. in this pitch black shed. It's it's uh, yeah. pretty. Yeah. It yeah. it is basically yeah. just the clear example of it. survival does not equate to like happiness in terms of just the that there is a distinction between the two. Um, when it comes to especially animal, like it, it doesn't really matter how happy they are because they can be you know turn into massive meat and then sold and and then you just keep the oh. cycle going over and over. Bring it, what just oh, happened? What? Let me see. Oh nice. Oh wow. That was incredibly lucky. <laughs> that was all bland. <laughs> um if intelligence is important, that's why I'm eating against eating octopus and pigs the same way most people would be against eating dogs. Yeah, pigs is the one that I'm starting to get a little complicated on. I'm not sure how I feel about that anymore. Um I don't know, pigs are apparently quite intelligent. I know octopus so are intelligent. They use tools. That's a so really question. Cool. Yeah? Would you object to eating dog and like if it was humanely, you know, cut up well, and you like see, a, a, a this, did normally? This is what I'm talking about. This is where like it starts getting weird. It's like, I would not like the idea of eating a dog. I was like, but you would like the idea of eating a pig? Or conversely, well, what's the problem? Like it's a dog, right? So then you have to start trying to figure out where your standards are. Get your principles are. in place. Uh, you gotta get your princ- yeah. And that um, gets real complicated. I've listened to loads of vegan meat-eater debates, and it's a- That's oh, a tough one. Um, what do you think about other people eating pigs and be honest, Springy, even if it'll make you sound like a vegan? Dude, like, pork and bacon is my favorite meat. I really like pork, I really like ham, and I really like bacon. But I also like pigs, just as animals. <laughs> so it's, that's the part where you're just like, hmm, I'm just trying to figure it out. I, I think it's I think it's difficult because it's just the whole thing of like, well, humans are omnivores and that's how we, you know, that's how we got here. We ate meat and meat is delicious. Um, and But also what are our obligations to just animals in general? Do we, as people, want to assume the position of, hey, let's, um, you know, basically be like, Earth's custodians and try and take care of it and uh, take care of the things that live on it. Um, at, at least not, or, you know, to an extent that is reasonable, not to the point where we're like significantly compromising our ability to improve as, uh, ourselves as well. Um, I don't know. Feels feels like a, I, it feels like a, a difficult um, thing to reconcile, that's all. It's tough to try and figure out how to keep your principles in order. Uh, the super chat that just came up is uh, just fringy. A pig would eat you, so don't sweat it. Oh yeah, I'm sure that like lots of animals would eat the as dead we version of me. Um, from snatch, getting rid using pigs screw, is a great way to get rid of bodies. Yeah, um, but I mean that's not like I don't know if that's my metric for whether or not I should help an animal. <laughs> like, Will they eat me? <laughs> yeah. I, I do feel because of our greater capacity for empathy and understanding, there is a stronger responsibility on us as humans than I think what so. we could yeah. on we, animals. Yeah, we, I are, think so. I, we, we should hold ourselves we, to a higher standard. We have the intelligence and the means to do it, where other animals don't, so I think that we should. Um, like, I, I don't think that's unreasonable at all as a position. Very well. Uh, Rags yeah, is right. Dead tangent. Space 1 is weird on PC. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That is the... If any of y'all have played it, it is, it is wonky on PC. That was that was right, but that was before. Now, Dead Space 2 and 3, they play great on PC. I was going to say, but, what, what's the uh, main criticism? Because I think I've played it no, on just PC. Kind of everything from hmm. the controlling, from, from aiming when it comes to a mouse, to the physics breaking when the FPS gets, like, anything um. over... No X amounts. 
There is a there is some good It's not a good boy. Yeah, mm. There is yeah. But this I was remember. back in the day where it was like legitimately like we don't fucking care about PC yeah. ports. Fuck it. Man, I like, fucking oh, yeah, there's money to made. I'm so glad like, we paused that era. Well, almost. Me I don't too. know. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Having I think we are for the most part because mm. just didn't work. Like the the resolution was all fucked up when I started to try to stream it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not doom and gloom about video games. One of the one of the really good things, uh, especially in terms of modern video games, is that pretty much the when it comes to like PC ports, a lot of them aren't even ports, and generally they tend to be pretty good. I think companies are starting to finally just like a Warner decide Brothers? they like money. I'm Warner Brothers, like the worst, or one of the worst when it comes to ports. Absolutely, they're one of the worst when it comes to ports. Yeah, Mortal Kombat X and Eleven, um, Batman mm. Arkham Knight. I guess The Witcher Three was a pretty good port, but that feels like more of a Project Red thing. A port to what? Well, like, oh, well, I wouldn't call The Witcher 3 actually on PC a port. Like, the console versions are more like a port. Um, it was just the idea of the PC version of their game was pretty good, and that was published by Warner Brothers. In some countries, I think. Well, yeah. Um... In, in some countries, like, the local, it had localization issues? Or no, some countries like, just it, got better. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying The Witch, Warner Brothers the publisher, the game's publisher, is pretty bad when it comes to PC ports, but The Witcher 3, which I think was distributed in some regions by Warner Brothers, is a pretty good, you know, version on PC. That's, that's basically what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me double check that though. Um, yeah, Witcher 3 was... Oh no, it was published by CD Projekt, okay. I thought it was, I thought it was distributed by Warner Brothers, alright. Um, there you go. Remember Balto, Balto 2, Balto 3, Balto 4, and Balto 5? I never saw those. I've not seen them either. That was just some of the movies I've, I never, I never, never ended up seeing the Balto uh, movies. I haven't seen certainly Zootopia. Heard of it. So what was that? Oh, I've certainly heard of Balto, but no, I haven't seen them either. And you didn't miss out anything on Zootopia, it was... I didn't like it. I like Zootopia, but I think I need to rewatch it. I saw it once in, in a room that had people talking in it, so I don't know if it counts. All right. Guys, I'm surprised at you. Yeah, a lot of people think that, of course, I've seen it. No, I haven't. Wow, that does surprise me, actually. Um, Angel Dance from Season 1 is precious. Agreed. Agreed. You guys should play Total War Warhammer. It's objectively best Total War game. When it comes to RTSs, believe it or not, like within the last week, on a whim, a friend and I were just looking for co-op games and we started playing StarCraft 2. <laughs> and I kind of got back into that. I'm playing it now. It's just, it's a neat game. I was like, ah, Blizzard's already got my money. Fuck it. This is, this game's like 10 years old. A lot of golden oldies. I wonder if StarCraft's just gonna <laughs> die. Surely it won't, right? Like, you'd think out how big it is in terms of the RTS scene and the competitive scene. You'd, you'd think that it would, you know, just, like, keep existing. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know who makes these decisions. I guess you'd... Yeah, that's the thing. You th you'd think a lot of things if you uh, played video games, so who knows. Uh, Rom's vacuous, Rom the vacuous spider's fight is so visually distinct. Yeah, it is. It's still a shit Someone boss. So it, it already yeah. has rags. They stopped supporting it. So the game's ten years old. I like when games continue to be supported, but if a game lasts for ten years, I'm okay with it not getting supported after that. And it got three campaigns. Yeah, it got three different campaigns. So it's it's not like it. It's not like they just dumped it out and left it. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I don't, yeah. how long should a game sh be supported is kind of a complicated question, right? It's like, because it's going to be down to, as long as they complete their job in terms of the game, and I guess it's up to the developers how long they want to support it. And well, I think there's a lot of community them. stuff uh, in terms of maps and modes and things that you could uh, play. 
So I, I, I mean, it seems to be a, a good example of things being supported. What game is this again? Sorry, that you're talking Starcraft about. Starcraft Two. Yeah, I mean, ten... okay, right. Does that mean that they may be making a third one then? Well, maybe, but I the, the existence I of Blizzard Activision as a legal <laughs> entity is in question, I suppose, at the moment. Yeah. It, well, I mean, so... it, it seems like they're actually like seriously in trouble. Um, they they might really be, uh, you know, having having a big problem here in terms of their yeah continued existence as a company. I know that um I mentioned it, I mentioned it a couple of times, but Call of Duty presents the new Call of Duty, not Activision. It's like, that's weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> that feels on purpose. I, dude, that game looks so fucking crap. I gotta tell you, like, the new Call it of does. Duty looks really shit. It by looks like... By Call of skin. Duty standards, it looks Yeah, by like Call crap. of Duty standards. It, 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 it literally looks It looks like looks a mobile like, game. It looks like a worse reskin version of Modern Warfare from 2019. And like, it clearly is, copy is using a lot of the same animations and, like, infrastructure. You can see that in that game. Dude, Call of Duty, like, <sighs> Black Ops Cold War didn't look that good either. It's like, what what happened? You had like this one game that was cool and then you just back to normal again. They um. really need to like make changes to that series. They can't keep doing it like this. Well, I guess they can, because it's probably gonna <laughs> sell really, really well. Yeah, as long as it sells. Yeah. Uh. Oh my goodness, gracious, gracious, Amagara's fault is scary. Anyone know what Amagara's fault is? I, I, I don't, don't know what that is, no. There are so many references that we're just, we're just blanking on today. Sad. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I just don't know what that is. I just is, don't know what Amagara's fault is. It sounds like, a, is it a band? Is, is it a, a, a DLC in some horror game? I don't know. Um, best butt, Tracer, Miranda Lawson, or Helena Harper? Helena Harper. Who's that? They're from Resident Evil, right? I'm assuming Tracer is from Overwatch. Wait, right? sorry, what what were the characters? Tracer, Miranda Lawson, and Helena Harper. And like Fuck Mary Kill, right? No, best butt. No, best ass. Oh, uh Miranda. I'm probably gonna go with Miranda as well. I'll trust you guys. Then again, to go she with was genetically engineered to have an amazing <laughs> ass. <laughs> then she's got an advantage, I guess. I know, I know they took it out of the uh, the new edition because it's it's not politically correct, but remember, part of the reason that she hates her father is because she was genetically engineered to be super, you know, the way she is. Super ass. Also, by, uh, the, one of the few times where someone's amazing ass actually is important to character development. Hopefully Shad's coming back. Yeah, just, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Look at Black Mirror White Christmas. Horrifying. I think I've seen that episode. It was, it was quite, like, a lot of people like, got it spread around word of mouth style. Um, I quite like it. Hey, guys. It. Uh, Hello. I'm going to have to duck out. Yeah, um, I'm now heading to that Red Dragon restaurant, and I'm going to have a great dinner. So Excellent. Nice very, very exciting. I hope you have a great rest of your trip. Sounds like you're having a lot of fun I will. there. Oh, it's been mad fun. Things have certainly wound down, though. Um, right. I've kind of done most of the most of the stuff. Uh, shooting is wrapped up, and that was that was amazing. Damn. Um, and so, yeah, now I'll be, I'll be heading back to uh, home on touring? Monday. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I got... Yeah, I, so I got to go to Quebec. That was amazing. Uh, Quebec City, I mean. And uh, yeah. I stayed in the Chateau... Uh, from Tanak, and it was a oh, oh, look that up. It is a uh, good time. It's pretty. I show yeah. Quebec City <laughs> is basically like a like a little little Paris in Canada, right? That's kind of what it is. Yeah, it's it's probably one of the most beautiful, well, probably the most beautiful city I've ever visited. Right. Mm. Um, but hey, look, uh, all right, guys, uh, have a cool, fun rest of the stream, and I will catch you catch you another time. Doodle bit. Yeah, see you. Doodle. See you. Is oh, bye. bye. Um, in October, Blind Manor is coming to Blu-ray with director's commentary for some episodes. One of the episodes with commentary is episode 5. I Sweet. think I'll be buying that. <laughs> I would like to know the thoughts of the director and actors on all of those episodes. Yeah. That'll be good stuff. I've got the Blu-rays for, uh, Hill House. I will be grabbing that as soon as I can. 
Um, hi, Raggy, Longman, and others. Hello. Hello. Ooh. How would you make sure a story surrounding a character with godlike powers stays interesting? Um, just do what One Punch Man did. I mean, that's obviously one option. Um, <laughs> I'm a big fan of, like Jay was talking about on Twitter the other day, just you can make a Superman game where the stakes are not can you be defeated, but rather um, How many you know, the collateral you damage, basically. Well, yeah. you, can, you can involve property in interactions with governments and then civilian lives, yeah. I mean, you, there are plenty of games where RTSs and uh, 4X types of games where the player themselves isn't even like an entity, where your personal, you know, health and safety are never in question. It's what you control and your investment in the things that you have, you know, essentially command over. And there's no reason you can't do that with a Superman game. You just take more of a personal role. And not to suggest something that feels almost just boring at this point, but... Um... You know, your concern could just be, let's hope he stays invested in saving people, this guy. Let's hope he doesn't get any of the normal human problems and thoughts and feelings, and as if he's truly unstoppable, you know? Let's hope he doesn't get... So, Fringy, you were saying don't focus on the person with godlike powers at all? I mean, I don't feel like One Punch Man doesn't focus on One Punch Man, but... I mean, that's weird. I don't know. I don't know how yeah, any, sure any all of our suggestions so far are going to involve the POV of the the hero or well the creature yeah. whatever. The POV is probably the really important is one of the most important parts of making this story work. I think. Um. Also, Sabretooth Tiger versus a Liger. What is a Liger? Like so cross between tiger. a lion and a tiger, the bread for the oh, magic. Ah, I see. Um, I guess the Liger would probably win that one. I don't know, it depends on what traits you get, you know? Because uh, maybe true. if you cross two things, maybe it's just a weaker version of both of them. Or maybe it's a stronger version of both of them. Maybe it has that... I don't know, I don't know, maybe And it's what behavior does it have? The behavior of the lion or the tiger? Yeah. Because yeah. as the behavior of the tiger, I think that it stands a better chance. I'm not sure about with a lion, because lions tend to hunt in packs, whereas so tigers uh, typically hunt in alone. Let's take a look here. Liger. The liger is a hybrid offspring of a male lion and a female tiger. What a player. Yeah, that's Wikipedia. I'm looking at the same article, because I see. will keep using Wikipedia. <laughs> the liger is distinct from the similar hybrid called the tigon. Which I assume Whoa. are the genders swapped. Um, uh, they enjoy swimming, which is characteristic of tigers. They are very sociable, like lions. And okay. They, they grow larger than either parent species. Really? Interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me see here. Uh, uh, I feel like that makes it more likely that they'll. Uh, uh, apparently, they have a lot of health problems and they can't breed like they're. This, this looks like the fertility of hybrid big cat females is well documented, blah, 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 blah. In hybrids of animals whose sex is determined by sex chromosomes, if one of the two sexes is absent, rare, sterile, rare, base, male tiger. So male ligers are consequently sterile. Female ligers are not. Are not, yeah. Um, I'm trying to look at the... Well, I think the problem uh, is we can't get behavior because it seems like all Likers are basically in captivity, so we don't know how they behave out in the wild. Yeah, because these 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 two groups they don't meet in the wild. No, Tigers are, and lions. What well, what's interesting are, though is that yeah. in the in the in the wild, yeah. like naturally, these two are like distinct species from one another that have been separated from each other for God knows how long, and yet they could still interbreed. I guess that is uh, just is is it is it just because could a leopard like breed with a with a mountain lion? Is that I don't know. Um, could a could a huh? So I... one thing that's that I thought it was very interesting, right? Was alt history Earth. Uh, if you want to, you want an interesting idea for a, a book or a world? Here's one. You could take this to the bank and smoke it. Alt history Earth. Columbus never sails the ocean blue. Europe never takes an interest in the new world for whatever reason. And so humans from the old world and the new world, they never meet. They never make contact. Thousands and thousands of years go by. 
many thousands. Maybe the old world humans got their way sooner. Whatever, whatever you want to be, right? They eventually, given enough time, they speciate. They become two distinct species that can no longer interbreed. Boom, and then they meet. Do that. I guess um, it would be very difficult to justify why they would never meet. I think that would be the hard part. Like, why would nobody have ever gone to America? Uh, you could make it a uh, anything from a. If you want to change, you could try change stuff up in terms of make it probably the easiest thing is humans got to the old world way sooner than they did before so that they're sort of developing at about the same uh the same time you right. could do maybe like cro magnons and neanderthals and stuff they don't get wiped out i they... like the idea of the neanderthal not getting wiped out that to me feels like a potentially very rich story idea yeah, like so if we could... if we just have a medieval society at some point where these two species like coexist. Species feels weird to describe different human like yeah I guess because the case, right? yeah because in this they would be two different species. I human. guess that's why I find it an interesting idea because it's like the same like they're actually different. You know they're yeah. different people. That it's not like yeah, it's with not race, just different flavors are... and details. It's yeah. actually distinct species. They can't even. Uh, breed with each other anymore. They've become so species. Yeah. I think Cro Magnon um, is a cool name. Are you are you pro Magnon or anti Magnon? Um. Does it involve magma? Bro, are you pro magma or anti magma? Um. I guess so, I'm pro magma what? if it doesn't melt anyone. I'm pro so magma just... because if it's it's not on the surface because I feel like if it's on the surface it like burns things. Hmm. So. I'm pro magma. I'm I'm anti lava. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, to address the the chatter, uh, you mentioned that like until the Enlightenment, there wasn't you know tech was comparatively stagnant. So I I can totally see that. I think what I find harder to believe is that as technology improves, that there wouldn't be that we wouldn't just inevitably go to the new world. Like if if yep. we assume that you know Christopher Columbus and all that, but technology just keeps advancing. I guess we would have to assume that the age of Enlightenment just doesn't happen or occurs much much later yeah, but eventually it's purely philosophical or something like that um i guess the problem is no a revolution like i the, guess the ideal the is, go ahead yeah oh, oh I, was, I was just gonna say that i guess i don't know that i see the psychological happening without also the uh the 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 technological happening i feel like they were quite interlinked in maybe um, you could find a way to make it work though have it be you could either have a a religious reason for technology not uh progressing maybe um, yeah. you could have a a it's it's sort of i think it's both in warhammer 40k like you know why does technology not keep improving and getting way and way and way better there's i think there's there's physically a an aspect of you're not even allowed to develop new technology culturally um but also hmm. there's there's some kind of like force that keeps them from kind of I, I don't know I'd have to read up more on it um, but you could have you could literally have a maybe a god of technology that exists that that keeps you know mortal creatures from developing too good of technology I guess you know that's that's an idea I guess the difficult part would be human beings just kind of like try to optimize things so it'd be yeah, hard well, yeah. Well, this is what I was getting to, yeah? So, like, if I make a Pathfinder world or something, it will be, like, how good... If you don't have... Uh, you don't have... Um, what would an example be? If you, for instance, knew how to make a steam engine and you tr were transported back into the medieval ages, there would be applications that you could use that in, right? Because you mm -hmm. just have the knowledge about it, right? So, so think about a, a renaissance era, you know, civilization who just, who never progresses past that. But what it means is that they get super good at that level of technology. You <coughs> had, they're right. very, very efficient at everything. They, they've used it for so long and they improve it and improve it and improve it <laughs> that it's just, everything is incredible for that level. It's like the ideal peak version of what that, tech level would be and everyone is like you like you could theoretically have a have a have a situation where you know class stuff isn't as you know there's there isn't as big of a class divide a, a relatively um 
like made progressive modern kind of society they just don't they just never developed the new technology they just had to re like uh, like um streamline what they had and make the stuff they had more and more and more efficient um and and you could throw in stuff like you know printing press here and there stuff that's reasonable right mm -hmm. um but you could do something like that or yeah everyone's still sailing on the ocean but the ships are amazing they're still constrained by having like masts and sails and there's only so big you could yeah, there's only so you know how there's only a certain size that you can make a boat out of wood but man they'd be amazing because they've just done it for so long and they never yeah, so it, you, I, I, I absolutely think you can make the premise work. I think you'd have to put a lot of work into explaining why it developed this way, though, because, of course, there's a reason why we went to the New World. Like, these things happen. Um, or maybe don't. Know, because That's the thing. I guess you have to go either hard one way or the other. You just never explain it, and it's just a fact of the universe. I, and no one ever brings it hmm. up. Or you have to like, come up. Because I feel like it's almost in a situation like that trying to explain it might be something people could poke holes in depending on what the explanation is instead of just it's like it's like lord of the rings it's been thousands and thousands and thousands of years and we're still hitting each other with swords we just this is you know the way the world is i i guess that is the thing you have to either call attention to it or don't like don't don't do the middle ground where you sort of half ass it i guess it's just um i guess then again, what I would say is that usually the if the nature of the world is significant to why this plot is happening, I kind of do think that you need to uh, provide answers. Um, yeah, or you could throw in the throw in the details and the throwaway lines where where it's like people don't even believe it's possible in a sense to make a make a ship out of iron. Like, n you can't make a ship out of metal. That's preposterous. Have you seen how heavy metal is and how ridiculous? Don't be, don't be stupid. Like, it's not the idea to people, for whatever reason, just isn't even, I it just toyed with. I guess their understanding of, you know, the kind of, like, flying. Like, maybe if you want to push it, you could say, like, an, like airships. But they're super rare and extremely expensive. And only like the the wealthiest of kings could afford an airship, right? Um, mm -hmm. But like, you know, biplanes and things like that, like combustion engines, like, yeah, right. Right. That's never Appar happened. Apparently, did you say that? Uh, did you say that like science something to do with the church? Was that because? Yeah, you could have like. Chatter. I mean, yeah, you could have like. What if you you could? Because that's the thing, religion. It's 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 the bullshit excuse for anything you want in a fictional universe. Well, um, I, I think the reason why, because in chat it's been brought up, is that the interesting misconception is that the church was opposed to science. What? Fuck, it's complicated because like a lot of depends. scientific, a lot of stuff that happened during the Age of Enlightenment was from people who were both religious and also spurred on by uh by certain religious sentiment. Yeah. So absolutely. like for a long time we didn't really get anywhere. And whether or not that was because of religion is like you could you can make the argument but like the age of enlightenment there was there was definitely like religious elements to it for sure sure you can have like if you try to there's there there's an inquisition sort of um agent you know i guess faction within an, a government or a religious body or however mixed you want those two to be and intertwine you want them to be well of course you, you can create whatever like, world you want yeah yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, that's no, we don't do that. That's that's bad. That's that's it's heresy. That's a, an aberration against the natural world. You you can't do that. It, this is no no. We're gonna destroy all the materials. It's evil. It's immoral. It goes against the you know the the way that the the god or gods intended things to be. Don't do it. Or or the the legends and cautionary tales that speak of mechanical monstrosities from the sky or whatnot and we can't do that we don't want to do that because we don't want to draw attention from the evil spirits of the beyond so we have to you know stay where we are you, you come up I mean, with all kinds of different reasons for it you could i mean another another possibility would be what if there is like a god entity in this universe who has for whatever reason deliberately kept these different parts of humanity separate and has for a long time prevented on purpose the ability for people to travel between the two regions and then just at some point for whatever reason 
uh, people can just start traveling again freely. And then somebody eventually discovers that and we see what happens. I mean, that could always be an idea. It's, it, it would be an interesting framing device to just start off your story with the, this concept that there's a bunch of these little mortal humans or whatever you want your species to be. Um, I know in, I know in, um, I think Isaac Asimov and Robert Silverberg, I think, though I might be thinking of Hammer of Dawn. Um, no, not Hammer of Dawn. Uh, it's Hammer Gears of, of War, no? Yeah, I, I confuse it. Um, just now it's Asimov. Asimov, Hammer, uh, the Gods? Was it Hammer of the Gods? The Hammer of God. It's Arthur C. Clarke. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, by the way, great, great fucking book. Uh, the Hammer of God by Arthur C. Clarke. But there was a, but Isaac Asimov and Robert Silverberg wrote Nightfall, which is a really awesome science fiction book. Um, and he keeps the species of the planet on which this, you know, uh, this story takes place ambiguous. Because uh, it's not really that important if they're humans or not humans or whatever. Um, but you could do that. But anyway, you have your, your race on this planet and they don't even know it. Or maybe they've had glimpses of it. But there are these big Lovecraftian entities that exist beyond time and space or whatever bullshit nonsense you want to say. And one of them, one of these creatures dies, right? This, it doesn't even have to be like a, a deity. It could just be an, an insanely super powerful race of aliens or just some form of life that exists that was controlling them and it dies for whatever reason. It just ends, it, it gets the end of its lifespan, gets sucked into a black hole, whatever. And then boom, its influence over this race of mortal creatures suddenly and inexplicably ends. And they have no idea what causes it, but they're starting to think new thoughts and do new things. And that's where your story begins. And to them, they never know why. But it's like, yeah, they, they had no say in it. It just sort of happened. This cosmic accident has released the minds of all these people. And so the story begins. So anyway... Nightfall was cool. Nightfall was a novel about a race of... Uh, uh, it just it was just a race of uh, humanoid creatures on a planet, and the planet is surrounded by suns. It has the solar system has a few suns, so there's always light. It's always light. There's never night, and so these creatures evolve to the point where they are. They have to always be in light. Think that the, the darkness is like psychologically it fucks around with their heads. They can't accept being in darkness, and even when they sleep, they sleep with what they call god lights that are turned on. Um, and somebody invents a ride, an amusement ride, that puts people through a tunnel of actual darkness, and it starts to make people freak out, and they shut it down, and people can't handle it. But every every tens of thousands of years, or however long it is. Um, there is a, a an astronomical, literally astronomical event, in which the suns go into all the, these eclipses simultaneously, and there's a short period of total darkness over the entire planet, and it causes everyone to fucking lose their minds. It goes insane, and it's really really nifty book. It's not that long. I would highly recommend it. It's got some. It's, it's a it's a neat story. It's like um, Pitch Black sort of is a similar concept that would be a trio for efat movies pitch black chronicles of riddick and what was the third one just riddick yeah that would be a trio i remember liking pitch black and chronicles of riddick i never saw the third one they were very silly but fun i i, I liked them i would hope pitch Vin black Diesel. holds up um i hope so too it had the chick from uh farscape Oscar, yeah claudia black Cla she looks like me. she looks like a Claudia Black. Doesn't she looks look like a Joan Dark. Yes, she could have played Joan Dark. She I would have, have liked she to could have, have seen played that. Joan Dark. Joanna Dark. Wait. It was so weird that that girl was in fucking Nevers. Who's like the bad apparently, guy? Apparently, like there apparently was a video game as well, Escape from Butcher Bay, which I hear was really good, though I've never played it. Wait, Joan Dark. Sorry. Who, uh. Yeah. Was, who's that from? You don't know like who Joan our... Dark is. I feel like I'm blanking, maybe. My god. I'm disappointed. Well, also, talking about well, the darkness. Wait, no. What? It takes place well, on a space station on the. 
like a, like a like an, an outpost, science fiction outpost. I think the reason why I'm getting confused is because isn't Joanna Dark the name of uh the the in in Perfect Dark? Oh, we said Joan Dark. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Oh, it was one of our favorite characters. I guess you've never heard of her. Oh right, is you uh. Do you not remember old, old Joan Dark from that movie we saw? You didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't watch it with you guys. Which movie I, are you talking about? Isn't jo Joan Dark is in some Doom, right? Yeah, Doom Annihilation. Yeah, Joan I haven't Dark seen Doom Annihilation. <gasps> you haven't? I think there's no, an I wasn't. on it. He doesn't Did watch the EFAP movies he's not a part of. Oh, I watched, no. I don't watch the EFAP movies I'm a part of. Like, why would I watch I it if I've already I'm seen the... Part of. I watch all of them. I watch all I of them, I probably watch some of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was a fun movie to watch. I, I enjoyed... I think I enjoyed Doom Annihilation more than the first Doom, in terms of I watching didn't. it. I can confirm you that didn't? much. I really like watching The Rock overreact to things. I love um... a lot of his... I, Doom is a movie I saw a whole bunch when I was younger, the, the first one, and I just... Yeah. I love his delivery for so many things, so silly. Um, I love it when he just kills the kid. Because <laughs> the kid's like, hey, we shouldn't execute all the civilians. And he's like, fuck you, and shoots him in the neck. They and are do you remember? Very fun Carl, Carl Urban says, Carl Urban sees him, like, you know, coughing up blood, and then he shouts, it was his first mission! And it's it like, his, Carl, that has mission. nothing to do with what just happened. <laughs> <laughs> if it was his second mission, it'd be fine to shoot him, you know how it is. You never shoot someone on their first mission. And uh, the rock snaps back with, and it's not going to be my last. He's very yeah, emotional so about it. Doom. Guys, these movies are great. Yes. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Well, we pissed we off some people because they were all like, no, original Doom 2003 is good. And we were like, no, it's shit. <laughs> Why does this keep happening? Oh, no, I don't this know. This one is actually really good. It's like, hey, it's, it's not. It's like Gary from Nidrotic said you'll like EFAP right up until they come with something you love, and they will eventually. They will, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's okay to say it's shit, but I like it. It's okay. It really is. It's just fine. But yeah, Doom's bad. <laughs> Doom is really bad. I which one which one of the two is worse, do you think? Easily Annihilation. Like Annihil Doom 2003. They actually cuz I I think I said this when we were watching it. I remember seeing behind the scenes stuff. They did work hard on that film. <laughs> they tried. It just wasn't very good. Like um they they all took like soldier training and and there was people on board who really liked the games and, and wanted. Do you remember the, there's a video game section in it? They were like, "Hey, Video games. Um, the new one was like crazy nonsense, and nobody made any sense. Um, except for we liked that one character, I think, when he was introduced, he was like, Ah, oh, I got a wife and family, and I'm three days away from retirement or some shit. That, yeah, we I mean. knew that he had a timer on him instantly, <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think I, um, yeah, I, I like them both. I think I do like Annihilation better. I feel like it just, I don't know, something about it. I, uh, it's tough to say. I, I like how they reuse like a staircase like three different times. <laughs> yeah. And they would take a hallway and they'd change the color of the lights yep, yep. and try to repurpose it. You know, it had that like a like like a what like a Don Doler. Well, so Annihilation is like really close to a B movie, while Doom 2003 is just a bad high budget movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. And I do you, feel like do you there remember, are lots of those. Do you remember the boyfriend? Rise is like, we were all trying to pick whether or not he would be killed for an emotional payoff. And they literally established, like, we used to go out with each oh, other, we yeah. don't anymore. Maybe we can get back <laughs> together once we save the day. A door opens and he just gets eaten. <laughs> it's it's shocking. It's like, you know, you know how in movies you have, I don't know if you guys have heard of this, but you have what's called, colloquially, a setup. Mm -mm. And then... Mm -hmm. After that, a period of time, you know, occurs. Then there's a payoff, right? Which harkens back to that original setup, right? It's like you're planning something to happen in a movie, right? That sounds like hard work. Gener that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it, it is. It, it's a, a lot of work for some people. Some people put a lot of effort into it. Uh, you know, your your blind manners, your your Chernobyls, your you know all that stuff out there, right? But. Um, if there is literally like two seconds in between your setup and payoff, <laughs> I mean, that's still, I mean, 
like Jurassic Wait, we got, look, world. We, we got aliens to shoot. Well, I think what was strange, Mahler, about Doom Annihilation was the entire ending sequence when she goes to the hell world. <laughs> oh god, yeah. That was, that was, that was it way was, higher budget, because like, it was done by a different studio. Yeah, it looks good. And it, it looks so good compared to everything that had occurred before it. It was bizarre. Because the movie up to that point had been like <laughs> like a cheap piece of shit. They were right? sequel bait too. She comes back through and she's like, You gotta close the gate. You gotta oh, close the gate, guys. Yeah. You gotta fucking close the fuck front. Then they inject it like you're crazy. Take her away. <laughs> and there, there will never be a sequel to. Well, I. I hope there is. I, I hope there is. I. That's. That actress I deserves another is. chance to play Joan, Joan Dark. Dark. Yeah. Uh, incredible character. Mm -hmm. But. Such an Doom, Doom is kind of like Resident Evil in a Doom is like a not. Oh. Um, apparently when it comes to movies. Apparently yeah. it's official. There's there is people, gonna be people, one? No, no, no. People are saying in chat, so apparently they've they've announced this, so I can tell you guys. Do you know who Friday Night Tides' next guest is gonna be? No. Alex uh, Jones. Gina Cr Oh, really? Alex Jones. Yeah, because everybody's Whoa! saying that. Wow. <laughs> That's fun. How they managed to get him. I wow. like the fuck if I know. I just love the idea <laughs> that we've always memed him coming on EFAB, and it's like, that's probably the closest we'll ever get. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'll be watching that episode, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I that'll, that'll be interesting. But um, when it comes to movies, Doom is like the shitty version of Resident <laughs> Evil. Like, the, the less successful version of Resident Evil. Like, they're all bad. But Resident Evil just keeps on getting movies made. They just um, keep going. Yeah. There was like six of the originals, and then there's the the computer ones that they did, and then but now Resident another Evil live action one. There's going to be not only another live action film, but also a TV series on Netflix too. Yay! And the, it's the Netflix live action. series, and, yeah. and action. Doom is just like, well, we have two movies, and like they both the shit. They probably didn't make any it's, money whatsoever. You, sounds like you're trying you to make the meme wonder, like the strong Doge and the weak Doge, like. <laughs> <laughs> We have two Do you guys ever wonder though, like about the decisions that are made in terms of films? It's like that are based on video games. It's like, okay, so we got not only like two Tomb Raider movies, but also a reboot of Tomb Raider. Uh, like three nine Tomb Raider movies. movies. Well, you yeah, had three. the two with um, you had the two with yeah. what's their face. Yeah. Yes, that's um, yeah. There, there were two originally, what, and then there was a third what's one. Your, what's, your, um, what's her name? Angelina uh, Jolie. Angelina Jolie. We had two yeah. of them. We had Tomb Raider, then Cradle of Life. Yep. And then yeah, there was and, the and, reboot one, which yeah. was just the what? most. <laughs> it was. It was a thing. I didn't see that one. Yeah. So um, I saw it in theaters with my dad, and I <clears throat> like. I thought it was in terms of like it's 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 probably super shit. But I was like, I'm okay, pretty sure I'm I watched satisfied. it. I watched it on a plane. And I was just like, oh, this is like generic action movie. It is very like, generic okay. action movie. It is generic action um, movie. There's, there's a couple yeah, no. cool nifty things in there, but it's like they took the the original reboot from, what was it, 2016 or something? From 2013. 2013. Well, it's clearly based on the reboot. Oh, yeah, it's got um, Kimiko and everything and the island and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, or Himik yeah. Himiko, not Kimiko. Um, but, yeah, they... Uh, Clearly based on that video game, it's not very um, good. I, I, it was entertaining. It was just a standard plan. But um, the, the, I guess the, the point I was getting at is that I've always found it weird the choices to be made in terms of video games that have been adapted. You got like Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Doom, and like Prince of Persia, and and Mortal Kombat several times. And you just sort of sitting there like, why has there not been a Halo? Like, I know that there's been a project that's been in the pipeline, but that never happened, and Halo was monumentally popular for for a, a time there. Makes you wonder. And, like, Uncharted's getting one now, which well, I suppose um, makes a little bit more sense. I thought Halo and Bioshock are properties that, like, the movies were fussed around with for a long time, but just never happened. Yeah, Peter Jackson was uh, involved as a producer, I believe. Oh, Hitman's another one where it's like, that's an interesting choice. I guess I'm surprised by... The fact that franchises that are like categorically more popular have received less uh, like attention in terms of making films. Um, I suppose Tomb Raider was quite popular at the time that that game came out, but it, it was such a new property, and it's like, meanwhile, there's only been one Mario film. There's been no attempt at making like a Zelda project. Um, Which you'd think that's a like character oh, who's I, adventuring, I mean, you know, like exactly. could, yeah. 
Because the Mario yeah, one, I can kind of see, like, oh, it'd be weird to be Mario Mario is, but, uh, yeah. well, Illumination's making a Mario film, and I'm not looking forward to seeing that. Like, I really yeah. don't like that Illumination is is the people are the people who've been tasked with it. Hmm. Um, yeah, no, the Halo movie did become District 9. Um, well, kind of. Um, oh, yeah, and of course, Sonic. He, he's got a movie. And he got a movie in the 90s, too, an animated one, right? I think so. Um... And World of Warcraft got it. That someone one said, uh, Maul is so salty. If, if it's about the game, I'm on 50 CC, so I'm always gonna win. Like, it's, it's super easy. Like, if I'm getting beat around, don't worry. I'm not too invested at this point. I'm just trying to unlock everything. If it was about, um... Alex Jones going on Friday Night Tights. I'm super happy for him. That's that's like super awesome. But I'm also a little bit worried for him too because he's been banned <laughs> on YouTube and like that is. So what does that mean? I'm not even joking, yeah. Metal. Like that's gonna put a lot of eyes on him. Um, oh, okay, I see. They gotta be very careful because well, they're already at like I mean, an average of eight to nine k viewers, and they've got Alex mm -hmm. Jones on. That's it puts them on the map in a way that I've basically never wanted EFAP to be on the map. Yeah, I gotcha. I can totally appreciate that. I I mean. Can you, if, if somebody's been banned from the platform, are you able to talk to them on that platform publicly? I think Twitch have rules for that. I don't know that YouTube has any rules for that. I think Twitch do. Yeah, because I remember like one time Destiny debated Vorsh. He had to do it on YouTube because Vorsh had been banned from Twitch at the time. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, I didn't know that's a thing. Yeah, I Twitch think, do not is, allow yeah. you to broadcast banned Twitch users. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, but I don't know so, if YouTube is that specific. I, I don't think YouTube... It never seems like YouTube enforces their rules as strictly as, as uh, they oh, and are Twitch. If the salty part is like, oh, you can't get Alex Jones on EFAB, it's like that. So if, if Alex Jones offered to come on EFAB, there would be a conversation to have with Fringy and Rex. <laughs> be like, I don't know. Because <laughs> the thing is, it would. Mm. First of all, it'd be like, what would we talk about? Hopefully, Star Wars. I would just talk to him all the time. I'd be like, tell me all your opinions about the sequels. But, like, say, for example, <laughs> if he had a huge rant about, you know, Dr. Fauci, vampire demon killing the whole universe or something, I'd be like, what are we supposed to do with that? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, apparently Tim Pool had him on after Ben. Okay, then maybe, yeah, maybe then YouTube doesn't really enforce it the same I way. I think, yeah, well, YouTube, if your account gets banned, you could make a new account after a while and come back. I don't think you yeah. aren't there rules against it, but they just don't enforce them? Well, that's uh, really difficult. Well, I mean, it, it would be very difficult to enforce because you could always come back anonymously. Well, the I example. Google account, but, yeah. Well, no, they. I think it's like in their rules, written in everything, where if you have an account that's banned, it's and I'm paraphrasing a bit, but you can essentially come back as a as a different channel or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And Indigo's saying in chat yeah. that YouTube bans channels but not people. I don't know if that's yeah. true because. Uh, I don't know that that's true Team, either. Actually, Teamstar got banned a bazillion years ago. When he started up Drama Alert, he had to say it wasn't his channel. He's simply the presenter. Uh, it might okay. be just Let covering me, himself, well, covering for himself I mean, to be safe. Well, that's the point. I he, guess so he did it because of the fact that if he wasn't that way, he would have been banned. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, so power, uh, I, I guess, uh, well, I mean, that might just be a, a moment to peruse the uh, Terminations effect. Uh, okay, so apparently it says that if a Google account is terminated or your Google account's access to the service is restricted, you can use certain accesses such as viewing only without an account. Um, so I don't know that they do just ban channels in that case. It sounds like if you get suspended, that's that's it for you. That's what maybe I thought it was. It. I, I, I mean, that's, I that's what it, it. Maybe they That's what it, it is on basically every platform ever. Yeah, I guess there's no reason. Yeah, the more that I think about it, the more I, I don't see why you. It'd be pretty redundant if they said you can just make another account. That's fine. I guess you know there's some application to that, but it seems like it doesn't really address the point. Right. Um. But yeah, um, I'm sure they're gonna have a hell of a time with him, and it'll be a great mm -hmm. stream. I just, uh, I just worry for him because he'll be like, I, I would absolutely worry for them. I think that that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you're calling a lot of attention to yourselves there. Alex Jones yeah, um, episodes what... on anything get a lot of eyes on him because of the ban, and and he's he is a fucking character, Alex Jones. He perhaps should just get Trump on. <laughs> I was about to read that out too. <laughs> and yeah, I think that's happening this Friday, so uh, not long. Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyway, Christian Bale should redub the DK trilogy. Maybe with the um, the Snyder Batman voice. 
yeah, you can call it that. And I'm even complimenting Snyder's work. Batman sounded pretty cool in those. Yeah, he did. I like I like the just I like the um uh the the Justice the the Joss Whedon uh, Steppenwolf voice more. Oh, I, I was talking about Batman, but, but I agree with that too. Um. Yeah, no, I was just saying yeah. in the in the thing of like different versions of the same characters' voices. You know, I mean, in that I, same vein. Yeah. He looked dumb as fucking both of them, but I think I prefer Whedon's uh, Steppenwolf. Is it uh. Good? Yeah. Is the, yeah, I don't know. The, the, I think we've talked about that on one of our EFAP movies at some point as well. We did a lot of comparisons. Shout somebody, somebody in chat, somebody in chat thought when you said DK that you're talking about Donkey Kong. It's like, <laughs> not gonna lie, I also thought about Donkey Kong. When I heard that Christian too. Bale needs to like, redub Donkey Kong. Plays Donkey Kong. <laughs> yeah, that was, well, that's my thought. That'd be, what? You know what? They should make some Donkey Kong movies. Have it be like a film where none of the characters talk and it's all visual. That could be really cool. Donkey Kong needs to stop that blasted crocodile from stealing his bananas. Crocodiles don't even eat bananas. I don't understand. Is it just out of spite? I think so. I think it is. I think he just wants to make life harder for, for Donkey Kong. I don't know what his what problem an evil is. bastard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, King K. Rule? Yeah, he's a, he's a real piece of work. Oh, hey, that kind of, of that kind of sounds like the word cruel. <gasps> I, it it does K sound K a little bit like cruel. K Whoa, uh, no, K it, works, it, works, it works on multiple levels because King and K start with the letter K, uh -oh. and rule is like ruler. You know, like you're in charge, like a king. Oh, Ooh, and cruel. He's a cruel king. Oh my god. It's oh my like god. K K K. No, oh, no, no. no. <laughs> ends with K. I, what do you mean? It's KKR. That's what is. That's his name. I just like the idea that you're trying to explain it, and that's what the audience jump ahead to. Oh god, this is a metaphor for racist. <laughs> like, no, no, stop, hey, well, stop. I mean, no, stop it. You're ruining it. Yeah, you was recommending Snyder. Donkey Kong Snyder Country. Country. Go away. Yeah. Oh, Donkey racist Kong. Con I will say. This is a hyper tangent, but kind of not. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That is a wonderful game. Everybody should play that game. It's one of this... the best platformers ever made. Which one was that? Was this a it was on one? uh it was on Wii U, but then it got ported to Nintendo Switch, so you got no excuse. That game is really <laughs> <Sorry>. good. <laughs> no you have excuse. no excuse, I'm right sorry. Fuck, okay. Don't talk to that us about a... no excuse for not playing certain games. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll play Soma eventually. Oh, right, I'm Soma, sorry. Yeah. I'll play Soma eventually. I'm playing Hollow Knight right now over on Twitch. <laughs> that you could game legitimately is a lot start and finish Soma in the time it takes to do an EFAP stream. Yep. Probably. I mean, I could probably That's start and finish a lot I of did, things and... between EFAP. You, you have no excuse because I played it all the way through while I was sick like a dog. Yep, no like a dog. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I'm not making I just, you know, I mean. I'm just. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, I'm okay. Mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm, it's October mm -hmm. soon, so I'm gonna get to play. Octemburary. I need to make my spooky avatar, but I haven't decided. I went as a skull thing, and then I did Frankenstein Fringy. Frank I don't know fringy. what the next one will be. Maybe a ghost. Fringy. I'm not yeah. going as a vampire this year. I'm gonna go as one of Rags' favorite Halloween enemies slash, well, partners. I don't know. Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Um. <clears throat> Zombies? No, I I feel like it's r like more obvious than you've probably thought. I'm trying to imply it is. Oh, um, um, oh you're being a, a spooky pumpkin are man. Are you gonna go as Ares? No, mm, none of those. He will destroy me. <laughs> Wait, why is oh, Rex? No, I meant Ares. Ares from God of War. How's oh. that connected to Rags? Oh, yeah, I thought I thought you said scares metal. Oh, um. Oh, rags huh. and metal. That sound. This sound. No, so I said the. Ra <laughs> I said rags likes them. Oh. Um. Huh. How did you get scared? Oh, metal? werewolf. <laughs> yeah, that was. I yeah. That was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad now. It's like I tricked everyone to think it was going to be something more interesting than just yeah, werewolf. <laughs> well, I mean, you could. No, no. I, I knew you were going to say werewolf, but I wanted to kind of keep the thing going. Mm -hmm. So I just love <laughs> I'll go love Craftian next year, okay? Red Barrington. Gosh. 
gonna get force me to wear particular costumes. Um, Shang L no. Oh, I'm saying that. That's making fun of two movies at once. Fringy thoughts on Mulholland Drive and Wolf Among Us. Uh, I haven't watched Mulholland Drive, but I do really like Wolf Among Us. I like Fables itself. I read a few volumes of that graphic novel. It's just cool. I like that game a lot. Um, I think there's a second one that's being developed. I'm not sure how I feel about that anymore, because just Telltale in general. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, watched Stranger Than Fiction the other day. An author's character comes to life after finding, even after finding out, she's still gonna kill him in the book because it's a masterpiece. She doesn't, but, and then it just stops. And there's no other one, so. Yeah, I've seen Stranger Than Fiction. Will Farrell's the main character, and he's, uh, he, like, realizes he's in someone else's book or whatever as a character. I can't remember if it was good. The book or the show? The movie. Have you guys ever read Haunting of Hill House? I recently finished it and it left me emotionally disturbed on a level I wasn't expecting. Thoughts? No, I've not actually read not the book. Read it. No. And I'm not exactly inclined to, based on enjoying the show, because apparently they have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> so it's like, uh. Um, but maybe, you know, one day. Uh, it's got a lot of respect, the book, so probably got some good stuff going on in it. I've seen the movie adaptation, the one with Liam Neeson, which apparently is much closer to the book. Um, it's a weird, it's a, it's a weird movie. Hey guys, hey Shad, how's your movie going? I'm afraid he's gone now. But he did kind of answer that question. They've ne they finished filming or nearly finished filming. No, they finished filming. I think he said wrapped. Yeah. Yeah. Watching your video vlogs and I'm very excited. Any dramatical prolonged cross sword stare scenes? Well, I guess we'll find out. Don't know. Uh, thoughts on tickle torture fetish? <laughs> what? Tickle torture? Listen, what two consenting adults do in the privacy of their own tickle chamber is their business. Well, they follow saying Tifa in a box. I guess that's what that is. I don't know. Tifa in a box? This person really wants you to see Tifa in a box, I think. Whatever that is. I don't well, know. Well, isn't Tifa from Final Fantasy VII? I don't know. Well, I... I just... I, oh, okay, right. Hello there, everyone. Have any of you seen the film Zulu? If so, what do you think? I have. I think I've seen it ages ago on TV, but uh, I I don't know if it's good or not. I, I It's just been too long. I have the same thing, but my dad showed me it a bazillion years ago, so I don't remember. I have Zulu. All right. Um... A turn, an arctic turn. I give you points for that, Rags, but the points don't matter. Also, hi, Wags. Oh, hi. Thank you. Glad you, glad you got it. I thought I'd throw that one in there. I think ugly dogs and cats are adorable and sweet. Oh, That's nice. Huh. Yeah, that's nice. I'm sure they really appreciate that. You know if Weasel from the Suicide Squad was considered a dog, would you consider him adorable and sweet? Oh, I don't know what oh, I Oh, in, in his own way. In his own way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know about you, Frankie, but I want to see what his adventures were at the end of that film. Oh, yeah. I do, too. I, uh, I want to see the Weasel spin-off show on HBO Max. It's just Weasel going on adventures through <laughs> Central America. Accidentally surviving everything, mostly. Yeah. I just love the... Meow. <laughs> 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 Nobody understands. <laughs> Maybe Weasel's gonna go discover the entire context of the movie and then go on a revenge mission Maybe for a flag. Weasel's Maybe Weasel's gonna go on a mission to discover why the suicide bomb, uh, the suicide squad failed at the box office. Be like, what? What's going on? Why is this even a thing that's possible? I wonder how it did on the streaming service. Well, I mean, like we. It, it's something like five million households saw it in the first three weeks, which was better than any other DC film, but below Godzilla, Kong, and Mortal Kombat. So the competition there would be Wonder Woman 84 and Snyder Cut? Yeah, uh, which it did better than 
than both. It did. I think it did better than Wonder Woman in terms of box <laughs> office and on HBO Max. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it did just, better than. It's funny to me because I'm just like, well, obviously, because out of the three films, mm -hmm. it's the only one that's like a film. The other two are painful I mean, Wonder... experiences. <laughs> Wonder Woman 1984 is honestly baffling. Like. M Average film-going people think that movie is, like, really stupid and absurd. And when you've achieved that, it's like, man, you've really made a piece of shit. That movie is awful. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that, like, the day it came out, they're like, yeah, no, we we're gonna do a third movie. I feel like they'd take back that decision if they had waited a couple more weeks. Oh, you think so? I think, yeah, I mean, people don't like this movie. Like, it, it has a really bad reputation in general. Like, well, people I'm just, just think it's a joke. I'm glad the fucking rape thing actually managed to, like, move into more discourse, because it seemed like most people fucking missed it at first, which is really embarrassing. I don't know how. And I hate the fact that body swap, like, movies and tropes get thrown in with it. It's like, uh, no. Like, the it's most not body the same. Most body swap stuff doesn't do that for the obvious fucking reason. In fact, the only thing that I know of that kind of did it before that uh, made it at a specific point that it's rape. Um, so it's just yeah, amazing. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Well, and, I mean, it is. It's it's usually when that element, like body swap or possession or something like that, is an element in a story. It's usually a bad guy trait or a bad guy thing. Or miss. It's not mishap for the good guy. Or a mistake. Yeah. yeah. And it's you know, it's not a surprise that like Mystique is a bad guy or why a lot of like it, stealing somebody's identity and like their autonomy. These are not good thing it's a, at all yeah it's it's not generally viewed as a heroic trait that you know the s the the aspect of subterfuge mm -hmm. you know yeah. that's not like tricking people well, uh, I mean, you know for whatever if, reason if, you know, it, is if it were a thing that were possible in the real world it would be one of the most significant violations possible uh you're violating a person's ability to be conscious and exist and have autonomy it's really bad yeah, and then they do the fucking obvious thing you shouldn't do. <laughs> and I'm not even yeah, talking the about the fact that they put him do. in danger. Yeah. You're looking at the scene with bad faith. Yeah, I, think, I remember. I think they were just saving face. Well, yeah, I mean, Patty Jenkins retweeted some fucking Twitter thread explaining was how so it was embarrassing. fine. I can't, that I can't is fucking believe we, we live yeah. in those times where you a director retweets a tweet defending, explaining the rape in their movie. Like, oh my god. Because, I don't know, you just didn't realize what you were doing. I don't know how nobody noticed that. That's one of those things where it's like, dude, we nobody noticed. You gotta, you gotta imagine possible? a lot of people did notice it, but were just like, everyone else seems to be fine with this, I guess, okay. So, I guess there's no problem, yeah. Like, I'm, I don't get paid enough to fucking <laughs> complain about this. <laughs> and then, like, big producers see it and notice, but they're just like, I don't know, people like this shit, I guess. I guess the problem is like, oh shit, we filmed this silk movie already, like... <laughs> you can't... Oh, you could cut that out though, yeah, you could. You could. Or you could do a reshoot. That's always an option. Because the question was still awkward in terms of like, should Steve be putting this man's life in so much danger when he's not consented at all? But that's... And the answer is <sighs> probably not. That one's a little complicated, I guess, because like, Wonder Woman needs he's help to, to save, save the, the world. world, yeah. It... We could, we could talk about that one, but, like, literally they just have sex for fun, and, like, oof. But then the fact that Wonder Woman later on is like, no, I don't want to lose you, it's like, oh, but screw the other guy, right? Like, Steve that needed to be. To that would have been so much better if he said, like, it doesn't matter how much you want, don't want to lose me, this man did not fucking agree to this shit. We gotta yeah. give him his but life the fact back. That you even, the fact that you didn't even consider it, like, that's a pretty damning indictment on that's you. That's a good old-fashioned shitty writer. They accidentally leave well, their plot issues on the floor without thinking about them, and then it fucks the characters up. Yeah. Yep, because that one really does. It's like, man, the fact that you said that is like, oof. Yeah, thanks a lot, Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah. What a, what a hero. Well, yeah, that's the thing. And, you know, you said Shang-Chi is, like, not even a villainous person, so that's nice. Yeah. I'm getting back to basics. The solution is to it. stop buying meats from these giant companies. There are wholesome ways to raise any animal, but big companies need too much. I mean, you have to figure out who's doing the humane stuff, right? Yeah, and it can be tough sometimes from what I, you know, figuring out where it comes from and how it's produced and if it's humane or not. And then, of course, there's kind of like the, the byproduct, right? That is it. 
I'm pretty isn't isn't uh agriculture not agriculture specifically but like farming and just keeping especially meat farming is that not like one of the most significant contributors to uh climate change I believe or or like at least uh emissions cattle farming specifically yeah so it's like and then once you start expanding that it's like oh awesome so that's like a byproduct of that man what is what what is the healthy compromise here where we where we balance it all out if it was like yeah growing meat in a lab probably is the way that it needs to go um i want vegetarian i went vegetarian five months ago based on these philosophical discussions it's been incredibly hard uh, but I've got the means to do it, and it fits my personal moral choices. I tried cheating a couple months ago because it smelled so good, but it actually made me sick. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, interesting stuff. Um, it does seem that over more time, not only will we start making, like, you know, faux meat that everyone can eat and, and be satisfied, but also just a lot of people are turning vegan slash vegetarian. It seems to be more common now than it has. I guess it's the whole thing of, um... <sighs> That becomes the other thing, right? Like, if you're living in um in a developing country, it may well be that that like totally eliminating meat from your diet is just not viable, or yeah. at the very. I could be t again. I, I might be wrong on that because I'm not. I don't know. There's but, obviously going to yeah, be like, human beings that it's not viable for, but of those that it is viable for, a lot more seem to be doing it. From what I've yeah. Heard. Well, I mean, I guess it's the thing of, is it a surprise that we naturally, naturally, uh, you know, started eating meat and, and that it became like a big fixture of the diet? Or, uh, then again, it might be, because from, isn't it, isn't it just, like, isn't it just the case that, um, that we eat more meat now than we ever did? Meat used to be kind of not as available to people, even, you know, as, as long back yeah. as 70 or 80 years ago. Um, I mean, as the, I'm pretty sure, like, eating rabbit, that was common in the early 20th century. Like, having chicken or beef was more, um... More of a delicacy. More, Yeah, exactly. Whereas now, it's like, you can get beef, it's easy. Food's everywhere. You can get heaps of meat. Um... Okay, yeah, original report compared meat production, including production of feed and transportation of meat versus just emission from cars, oil drilling, gasoline, effort for all left out. Okay, I mean, there's a lot of data to sift through, but from what I understand, and it seems to be mentioned again by several people in chat, like, yeah, specifically cows contribute a lot in terms of CO2 emissions, or just emissions, yeah, in general. Um, the pig is haram. Inshallah, my brothers. Imam Fringy, 2021. <laughs> is that is that which uh because it's cat hindu hinduism is cows right is oh right wait i oh, damn i keep getting them confused is it uh judaism that they don't that like that uh that it's pork is not fuck me which one doesn't let you eat pork, pork is not <laughs> fuck me that was I think it's <laughs> both it's both Judaism and I think it's also Islam, I think. Which really so yeah, uh Islam don't eat pork, Buddhists are vegetarian. well, I don't know if all Buddhists are vegetarians, but uh Okay. Religious restrictions on the consumption of pork, an entire Wikipedia article on this. Um Uh particularly in the Middle East among Jewish people and Muslims. Oh, okay, alright. Thank you, Wikipedia. Never change. I love you. Mm. <laughs> Give me all this juicy information. Uh, Fringy, you'd find the Stone A... Sorry, Stoned Ape Hypothesis very interesting. You should look it up. Mola, you're neat. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hold on. Just give me a second. The Stoned Ape Hypothesis. Theory. Okay. Um... Uh. Oh, so apparently the the TLDR from a source is that what I I don't know some sort of chemical in, cause primitive brains information processing capabilities to rapidly reorganize, which in turn kickstart the rapid evolution of cognition that led to early art language and technology. Is that something to do with like the cognitive revolution? Basically, when like fifty thousand years ago, humans just 
for whatever reason, just got a lot smarter. And we don't quite know why. I don't know. Is it? I think I, it might, because I know that that's... Uh, then again, I'm not sure how accepted that is, but there's the idea that um about 40 or 50 years ago, for whatever reason, humans just really started getting a lot smarter and building building tools and developing that language. Recent? Damn. Well, yeah, because I think Homo sapiens have been around... Modern humans have been around for about 100,000 years. Uh, 150,000 years, something like that, but that when we started to get super smart was a lot more recent than that. So 40, did 40, I say 40 to 50 40, years ago? 50 oh. years ago. <laughs> yeah, I figured. It took, me, took me a while to figure that one out. I, I believe in you, Franny. I think it was around 40 to 50 years ago. We started developing tools. Yeah. Yeah. Know, around, yeah. you know, mid 1980s. <laughs> God, the 80s was 40 years ago now. Jeez. Um, speaking of red dogs, any chance of an EFAP movies on the new live-action Clifford the Big Red Dog movie? Looks like it'll be hilariously bad. I would be down. I'd be fine with that. I I really don't care, but, I mean, if all of you wanted to... <laughs> I mean... Clifford the Big Red Dog, those movie. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. It's probably got some wholesome values. Uh, Arkham Knight is great on PC now, but holy shiz. Yeah. Yeah. The got delisted from Steam briefly. Well, not briefly. I think a year or even. I think I said before, um, when it released, you could get lucky, and it just worked. And I think Smiler got a copy, and he like played it throughout with no problems and he was just seeing all of the reports stuff he's like I don't, I don't understand like <laughs> everyone's saying it's so horrible and I, I had fun when is the super chat catch-up for this super chat catch-up from a video that may have had super chat catch-ups now <laughs> yeah all I want is to remaster the legacy of Kane series such a badass series also keep the good work guys crushing it good day fringy oh thanks hey uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I hear Legacy of Kane is really cool. Um, Only ever heard good things. I, yeah. Um, hi, Rags. Hello. Hmm, thought about a follow-up for Fallout 76. It's still shit, but I'm curious of your thoughts on its evolution. Heard about Fallout Worlds? No. Um, so, I, I have considered just playing it casually and then making a little video as to what I thought and was it better um, but I don't know I don't know how how really interested I am in playing Fallout 76 again it's just like what an insanely botched concept you know uh, yeah it probably it's probably not gonna happen I've toyed around with the idea in my head but meh hey free just meh yeah you see these happy little clouds? I do. They've, they've got the <laughs> smiles on their face. So I remember that in the game. They're so happy. They're so happy about life. And But what yeah, happens when it high. rains? They just start screaming <laughs> as they disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, I'm so happy. Hey, buddy. Oh, man, it's like a whole gathering of us guys. Is, is this going to be a fun time? And then there's the one cloud who's been through it all before. Just he's already, he's already starting face. to cry, and they're like, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, hey, parts of you are falling off. <gasps> ah! <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just like, I'm getting it done faster, and they're like, getting what done faster? I think about all the things that have, like, there are hills that have smiles on their faces. What happens when they get a hole drilled through them to, like, build a, a tunnel? Are they just screaming the whole time? Think of it How like an ear piercing. They'll get over it, it's fine. I mean, an ear piercing through, right through their stomach, but yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a wonderful process. Uh, started reading Calvin and Hobbes because you guys, and I'm invested. Yes. Did you check out Fujimoto's Look Back Froingaloinio? I... no, I haven't. What was that? Froingo Leono? Froingo Leono? No, but what was what was the thing that I was meant to be looking at? That. So, did you check out Fujimoto's Look Back, Froing? Oh, I guess this thing, right, so it's called Look Back, I guess. For a second there, I thought maybe it was called Look yeah. Back. Yeah, okay. And then some alien fucking planet name or something, I don't know. 
Oh, it's a one shot. Oh, there's a manga that like came out this year. Ah, uh, no, I haven't. I haven't looked into that, but I might. Oh, I'll, I'll, let's see. I got too much stuff to read. Um, yeah, if, if if we could just stop writing books for a while, so we yeah, can catch yeah. up. <laughs> Same for movies. You know what? Not only so I can catch up, but also because you all suck at it right now. <laughs> like, oh no! They're like, hey, it's like I'm sorry. I was kidding. No, you weren't. No. Liar. If you could combine one apex animal with one lesser animal, such as slug, sponge, or planarian, what two animals would you mix? So a, a shitty animal with an... Well, Are we doing shitty, this for fun? Kind of or for imagine really? A, imagine a big fucking, like, um... Like, it, take a prey animal that's really good at... Like a... Like, um... Like something that's the, the strength and size of a bull, but it's like a... A cheetah. Hmm. A hippo and a mouse. Like, just something that combines the speed of one with just the strength and size of the other to make some terrifying... Like a, like a crocodile the size of a horse. Aren't some crocodiles, like, longer than horses? Oh, there are... I Maybe mean, longer, saltwater crocodile is, like, four meters long. Yeah, but if you take the... Because the, if you take the, 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 the speed and endurance of the horse... And then you make like a crocodile version of that, where it's like ch it's not an ambush predator anymore. Fuck that shit. Nuh uh full Chad mode, and it just -uh. it doesn't give a fuck. It's just that gonna run like after that. your ass, and oh, it's not like a dinosaur as well. Well, <laughs> it's like... funny you say that because there was a dra there was a uh, dragon. Well, not a dra well, I mean you could call <laughs> it, it a dragon. A dra it's like, it's, Cut my it's a big now. lizard oh. that lived in uh, Australia before humans showed up. That was basically just a, a, a well, crocodile that lived on land and ran around and ate things. It sounds like what Rags is describing as a Spinosaurus, though, to a degree. Something like I that. Guess so, yeah. um, or let let's take some birds, right? What if you had? Oh, what if you took a a mosquito? I don't know. And combined it with maybe a, a sort of. Um. Let's see. Like, like some sort of blood-sucking insect, and you combined it with, like, a falcon or something. Ugh. And they'd fly around, and they dive bomb, and just Inject suck your blood. down into your Thanks. spine, yeah. and suck everything out. I hate it. Because if you take a lot of the stuff that insects do, and blow it up to our scale, it's, like, legitimate body horror, just awfulness. <laughs> big lizard isn't a dragon for you. <laughs> well, so I know that a big lizard isn't technically a dragon, but I mean a Komodo dragon is, by definition, a dragon, and it don't breathe fire. So if that's what if that's what constitutes a dragon in our world, then yeah, this this one definitely was a dragon. Imagine having a Komodo dragon just running after you. That'd be uh, <laughs> that'd be. There is a horror a little... movie for that called Komodo Dragon, I think. Oh, well, I mean, you don't need the horror movie in real life. Sometimes Komodo dragons will chase after you. Yeah, but I don't want to risk uh, it. I'll experience it vicariously. But when a Komodo dragon runs after you, remember Zigzag, Serpentine. Komodo dragons can run really fast straight ahead, but they are not very good at going in different direction mm. and pivoting. Uh, but don't, you know, if... if Wait, what about if, running if in a big run... curve, then? Um, well, I mean, I guess that would just bring you back, right back to the dragon, right? So I don't know if that's going to help you out. Would um, it? If it's chasing so, me, it wouldn't. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. I guess you could keep running in a circle, but, like, ideally you'd want to get away at some point, I imagine. Well, big coup. I don't want to annoy like... it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you want to do that, I, I don't know if Komodo dragons get tired quicker than our humans. Or just shoot it. Yeah, but this is assuming that you don't have a gun. <laughs> I like you oh, when people say, exactly. I'll just use my jetpack to escape for you. I'm not I, I'm not sure if serpentining is an effective strategy against, like, a lot of animals. I, I a think, serpent? Well, so serpentining is basically when you... It, it's just when you zigzag to avoid no, something. I know, I mean, or, like, what is, is serpentining an effective strategy <laughs> against serpents? I... I would imagine that you can outrun a serpent without needing to serpentine, yes. But you still uh, well, might so be no, able to outrun them anyway. Be... 
Well, I mean, you could. I guess the question would be, is Serpentine going to help you avoid being bitten by a snake? I, I suppose it could, right? Like, if you're moving left and right. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, I will qualify. Um, you cannot rely on this advice that I've given you if you do encounter a Komodo dragon and you <laughs> do actually get... And Serpentine doesn't work, all right? That's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's your fault. That's the no responsibility eat the, the, like, on my first part. thing I'm doing is fucking talking to Fringy. <laughs> I'm setting a super chat right now. Fringy, what the fuck? Well, I mean, there is a super chat right now that said how many people has Fringy's advice killed so far? <laughs> 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 um, I, I, but like I said, I'm not sure if serpentining... Fuck. Because I know that, um... Because there are certain animals you just can't outrun. Like, if a hippo's chasing you, give up. It's over. You're done. And if you get chased by a, a my polar advice bear, is not like, to give up. Just if we're handing out advice. Um, <laughs> I mean, I I suppose the question is, do you wanna do you wanna die quicker or slower? And if you fighting should means give you yourself die. a chance and run and you should run away as hey, fast as you possibly can. Oh sure, you might as well run, I guess. But oh, well, I said give up, so I guess I disagree with what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> just well, I don't know. I mean, if you if you're being chased by a polar bear, I feel like you best choice would be to try and jump so high in the air that you can flip up and snap your neck on the uh on the ice that's some great advice well yeah i mean <laughs> if i can get myself I just imagine someone, Dude. oh show the polar bear he's gonna do a backflip <laughs> i just i love the idea that it's a guy with a gun with one bullet against the polar bear and a little poof freaky pops up and they're like what do i do for you like shoot yourself right now <laughs> just do it you, because do you well i think my question would be are you a good shot <laughs> like you know, dude if, if you said yes you're like still shoot yourself <laughs> still mad i don't know don't risk it unless you can find a way to i don't know like seppuku yourself with the with the gun somehow like put it on the ground and try and impel yourself on it <laughs> i feel yeah. like that's a, that's an interesting uh that would be an interesting thought experiment in terms of i guess how much confidence do you have in yourself if you have a dude, gun I, with one bullet i can guarantee you there. that would be a hard if it's if it's barreling toward me and i have a pistol with one shot Oof. I, I don't know. I think I, I think I would just... I think I'd shoot myself in the head. I'm not gonna... Uh, the thing is, I'm, I'm worried that if that I one. even tag the head, that it might not kill it. That was, So that would be my concern. Is um, But there is the question of if you harm it enough, will it leave you alone? I guess I don't um, know enough about polar bears to know if that's gonna happen or not. Does that make it more aggressive, or does it make him run away? Um, I think that... I'm pretty sure that a lot of animals will just, like, back off of the fight because they don't want to get hurt. Um, I think, I guess that's the question. If the polar bear is already charging me, it seems like it's made the decision to really mess with me. And um, polar bears are not, polar bears aren't afraid of people. That's the big thing that makes it tough What about people situation. with guns? I, no, but polar bears, I don't, polar bears are not well acclimated enough to humans to even, I think, I think recognize the threat that a human could pose to them with a gun. I think that's- Do uh, elephants uh, that's recognize it? Uh, elephants are pretty smart. I think that they, I, I don't know that many animals recognize the threat that the gun presents specifically, but if they hear it or, ah, oh, no, now, now this is taking me down a whole other rabbit hole. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure. I think I think the general thing is that a polar bear, unlike a, a lot of animals that recognize what humans are and that there is actually reason to be concerned, polar bears just don't care. Right. What um, do you uh, What do you reckon, Rex? Would you risk the shot? I think I would. You would risk taking the shot. Yeah, I would. Polar bears eat things alive. They don't do the lion I'm thing. I'm sure he knows. Just... Then, yeah. I feel like he's probably taking it all into consideration. Yeah, I I still think I don't think it's an like an obvious choice. I just um, no, I don't think it's an obvious one either. Um, I don't yeah. trust myself enough with the gun to do it. I think I'd be like, man, I, think... I feel like I'm I got like a two out of ten chance to get this perfectly right, and I don't want to risk that eight out of ten of being eaten alive. That sucks. I uh. Hmm. Animals don't understand the concepts of gun, fringy, please. It's not specifically gun, it's the idea of ranged weapon that can hurt me. 
more because we've had ranged weaponry for a while. Yeah, yeah evolution like, has I, not prepared these critters for for firearms. I would be curious to know if well, some elephants actually recognize the danger, though. It would be interesting to know if that's a possibility. Yeah. I associate the sound with. I mean, because a loud noise is pretty. Uh, a lot of the times, loud, that in and of itself, people, you know, animals might associate that with. Oh, that's not good. I think I think that just makes sense, right? A startling loud noise out of nowhere. It's like, oh no, that seems like unpredicted uncertainty, and I don't want uncertainty. Let me get away from this uncertainty. Um, somebody said this is bad survival advice. Isn't what to which, which one specific? <laughs> well, you killing yourself is definitely bad survival is bad. advice. Yeah. That's <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the goal is to survive. <laughs> Shooting yourself is probably really. I was gonna bad. say, do you yeah. really think it was our survival <laughs> advice to kill yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Convince the bear to kill it. No, Dude, we should release a book running... written by Friggy and Muller as one page. It just says Smile kill yourself. Kill yourself. I, I, you know what? I love this idea of a fictional uh... book that is really bad advice for surviving encounters <laughs> with animals from like some hack fraud adventurer who goes out to the wild. Um, I, I, oh, I, I like that idea a lot. Actually, that's uh, I'm putting a, I'm putting a pin in that one. Um. No, but I mean, I'm pretty sure that the, that uh, with the Komodo Dragon one, that serpentining is the... Uh... Friggy is not an authority on these things, by the way, has zero credentials. I... <laughs> yeah. How did they figure that out? <laughs> what? What's, hap what's happening? <laughs> My god, they've hacked I... the Matrix. Look, all right, I've got a, I've got a maybe medical degree, all right? I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not giving you uh, fully authorized advice on... Um, S Steve Erfring. <laughs> That's really good. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, I think, I think when it comes to, you just, you just hear these little tidbits, like, just little bits of information. The other one is, um, that I'm aware of is, if you are attacked by a crocodile and it pins you down like it's biting you, poke it in the eyes, uh, or punch it. Yeah, poke it in the eyes. That's like the the sure, f the most effective way to let yourself get free. Yeah, Friggy, you need to get more experience with shooting yourself in the head. <laughs> 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 it's in my eyes. Jeez. Um, I and I think uh, isn't it with with sharks? You punch them in the nose. That's that's the way to get them to let go. I think. Yeah, and then you get people like Steve Owen who can almost they're almost like animal whisperers where they can do they can put themselves in situations where you're just like what um <laughs> yeah like yeah. Uh, a lot of people with tigers are capable of doing that and stuff mm -hmm. um, yeah there's there's a lot of mechanics to these animals that you can take advantage of well yeah it's the whole idea that you kind of have knowledge that they don't have a view that you can use to um to outsmart them yeah, because obviously, like, particular colors or movements or positions, sounds, like, the, the, the all stuff you can learn about animals. I think, uh, I think what I find super interesting about the interactions between, like, humans and animals in terms of saving yourself is that a lot of the time, things that you assume will instinctually help you don't help you. Yeah, it's so, like, like the reverse. Instance, you yeah, like, if you turn your back on and run away from a lot of animals, that signals that you're weak, yeah. and then they're gonna try and attack you. But it feels like that's what you should be doing, getting away, yeah, you, kind of almost, yeah. If you watch them fight each other, though, that'll often be how they end fights, is looking at each other and moving backwards. Yeah, like when you see a bears fight each other, like in that uh, Grizzly Man documentary where you see the, bear, the bears fighting each other, it's like... See them... You see a lot of behavior in them that reminds you of humans in a, in a very primal sense, but there are some key differences. Yeah, see, that was Taskmaster's fuck-up. He just turns his back to, to Black Widow on that bridge, exactly. you know? Mm. Yeah. Black Widow's like, aha, a weak spot. And yeah, by the way, he may not have, like, credentials, but he survived Australia. For the most part. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Um, yeah. it's survival advice if you're attacked by a platypus. Um, man, get the hell out of there. Shoot get out of there. Shoot yourself. <laughs> That's our advice you know role. what? You know what? If you get stung you know by that yes. thing, Shoot if you get stung by a male uh, platypus's little pincer, you may be tempted to do that.
Dude, you need you need to make how? that character and like a lot of the advice is kill yourself for all of these situations. Like, give begin. Yeah, no, I, I love this. I love this idea just of um of like this fake survival guy who a lot of the time just defaults to kill yourself if possible. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> if you encounter these animals. But you know, the reason why I survived is because I have this extra knowledge, you know, that other people don't have. Like he, he He's, he's like on a panel show and they're like, you dropped in the, you know, in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. Like, how do you survive? And he's like, I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, why? And he's like, well, you know, it'll, it'll save all of the suffering, well, right? Or, or alternatively, it could be like, well, see, I'm an expert, so I can make sure that I don't put myself in situations where my only choice is to kill myself. So if you follow this advice. Oh, dude, if he was, he was that kind of person, they're like, you dropped in the middle of the yeah. rainforest, what do you do? And he's like, I wouldn't be. I would. <laughs> I don't see myself in that scenario. And then they're like, Imagine okay, having... fine, you kidnapped, you know, drugged, and we, we do that to you. And he's like, no, I wouldn't allow that. That's not possible. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> Advice for drop bear attacks always have an umbrella handy, okay? Yeah. You can block them with those umbrellas. Uh, it, it, make sure you have a sharpened end just in case you need to fight. Um. Yeah, that's that's the general thing. Also, Mola ever thought of Spore for a game on Super Chat Catch Up High Fringy? Hey, dude. I've never played Spore. I, I typically try to go for games I have played, so I know what I'm in for. In some Spore way. Spore is a uh, man. I remember when Spore came out. Like everybody was so disappointed about that game. All right, like, I it think, was super hyped up. I think I've unlocked everything now. Oh my god. Could you, you mad look at look Rex, all of the characters now. Oh, let me look at them all. The visuals, I got the chats coming back. Oh but, yeah, look um, at that. Awesome. Rags, metal, choose one character each that I must play as now. Uh Wario. Wario. <laughs> <laughs> Two Wario. <so>. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Fring, you get the third choice. Don't pick Wario. <laughs> Diddy Kong. Alright. Wario. <laughs> I guess I'll choose the- oh, look Look how fucking badass Bowser's car is. We'll try and win with this. Actually, wait, where am I on? 150? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do the, the big tisms with these two. Alright. Fucking edgy car from Bowser. Um, wh What fictional assault rifle would you outfit your army of toxic broodlings with? Pulse rifle. I was thinking about saying the pulse rifle. Good. Um, I'll give him the BR from Halo. Uh, I'm definitely not. Uh, I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna do burst fire or anything. Uh, cause burst firing is meme. Um, let's see. Huh. I like how you just immediately insult my choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't give an army burst fire. I'd give them training instead. Um, <laughs> give them training instead. <laughs> what? No. Well, yeah. So burst firing is essentially when you have a, a weapon that has burst fire options. Generally, what it's used for is to keep um, insufficiently trained ground forces from getting rid of all of their bullets too quickly. Because a burst is short enough to where you're probably going to hit them, but we want you to not just dump your ammunition down range. Right, so it's a it's so it's mm -hmm. a middle ground in between of we, we don't want you to you know get rid of your all, all your ammo, but you're not quite good enough to control full auto yet. And besides, the majority of the fire you'll be doing is in semi-automatic anyway. So I'm, I'm probably not gonna maybe a two-round burst option, maybe, but probably not. Um, so I'm trying to think of what a, a fictional assault rifle. Hmm. Well, pending your. Now the advice you've given me, um, hmm. hmm. Yeah, like in video games, it can make a lot of sense for balance and stuff like that, but, yeah. um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to... Well, they haven't specified anything um, about the training, and I'm, I'm assuming you could still have trained no, people using probably. first weapons. Then, well, then, then I'd want them using full auto if, if there's I a situation... I might give them the, uh, 
I'll give him the Halo One assault rifle with sixty rounds. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good. And that shit. That shit shoots three oh eights too. Like one of one of my complaints about Halo was that the description of what that gun is and its effectiveness in game are two completely different universes. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, that's a good option. The Halo one. So, well, here's my issue. One thing I don't like about the Halo assault rifle is that there's no like sights for it. Yeah, it's true. got that that hump on the front, and you have to use like a heads up display to hip fire it, which is great when that's all working and you have people who can use it and stuff. But um, and I and I want them to have zoom. They gotta have zoom. In fact, zoom is a, a necessary thing for me. It's um, cool. Yeah, it's gotta have uh, it's gotta have uh, an option for mounting optics. So, like, I would be more like a DMR, the 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 the, um, the DMR the Halo DMR wouldn't be a terrible option as a well a DMR, but as for assault rifle, um, oh, oh, what are there any from Apex that I'd give them? Oh, um, I might give them the, uh, the, the Titanfall one, then, the, uh, yeah, yeah. C, like, 103 or whatever it was called. <laughs> yeah, maybe, like, an R301 is a potential yeah. that I'd give them. Uh, it's a, sin a single shot and full auto. If yeah. it's a... It's I might scope. give them something a little beefier, uh, but I don't know what light ammo means in that world. But, yeah, an R301 wouldn't be too bad. Um, if we're going... If we're going by game logic, it can it can equip up to a four times scope, which is pretty darn good. And past that, you'd want a DMR anyway, not really a, an assault rifle, assault rifle. But yeah, yeah, I would I would be keen on that. That would not be a bad option. There, there's probably a, a there's a crap load of correct answers. Um, but I yeah, think there's I, a if, lot of correct answers. For sure. Yeah, if I gave a, if they had an R three hundred one, I'd I'd be pretty uh, I'd be pretty satisfied. With I that do myself. honorary mention for drinkers six cylinder revolver. I was thinking about that. Oh it. yeah. <laughs> and plus, we have to keep in mind like eras. Like, what well, I could give him a, a fancy space Mass Effect gun that shoots like superheated plasma that'll just rip anything apart. Right, it's yeah. contemporary. Ha, so I'm, I'm, I'm working a little oh, bit. Yeah. Maybe I could give them the uh, maybe the carbine. Hmm. The Covenant Carbine. Yeah, if we're going with, like, with alien, alien weaponry. Yeah, if we want to go into that route, then, um... Uh, for future weaponry? Hmm. What other alien? I feel like all my references are Halo. I need something else that I'm thinking of. What about the, uh, what about uh, a weapon from Doom? Like the, um... The uh the the like assault the plasma rifle from rifle. seems pretty good. I wouldn't give him the plasma rifle. Um, in terms of it takes so long for the rounds to travel. Oh, good it, point. Good point. And yeah. it has a very obvious trail of where the fire is coming from. Uh, true. I see. I it needs to be. So here's my big. Here's my thing. Right. It needs to have optics. Uh, optic mounting on it. It's got to be able yep. to have a scope. It has to be suppressible. Oh, well, then that um, would probably eliminate all plasma weapons, then. Yeah, I don't know how... Yeah, I, I don't know how suppressing plasma weapons works, if that's a thing. But plasma get weapons of... aren't... Flash, but then again, I, I... plasma weapons aren't very loud, ever, in anything, usually. What, like, would it be loud compared to a bullet being fired yeah, from I, a gun? Yeah, I don't know if it would be like It would probably be quieter, I think... But mm -hmm. I don't think it would be quiet, but certainly quieter. Sure. But the trails that the the energy leaves is a little bit more traceable back to the shooter. Then again, I don't know if plasma is necessarily better than projectile weapons. Um, I think that's one of those. Uh, it's almost like one of those things you learn. It's it's one of those science fiction kind of almost black pills. Like oh, we interstellar travel like how are we going to account for g-force that's going to be really hard and same with like plasma weapons it's like why bullets are pretty effective bullets as are they, uh... yeah um yeah we're, we're kind of at a we're, we're kind of at a small arms plateau at the moment um but until when we it comes... yeah find some way to do something incredible the way we haven't even thought of yet the the biggest 
advances that are taking place in that field right now are in the realm of optics and mounting systems and targeting right. things. It will probably be and electrified skins. rails. <laughs> and of skins, course, super true. cool skins and dances <laughs> as well. Um, yep. It will be uh, heads up displays. It'll be like gadgetry is mm, what's going to really get, be the big advancements in small arms. It, it's not going to really be the guns themselves or the bullets, I feel. Um, so let's see. It's like, how can we, how can you just get better at hitting targets and hitting and shooting good in a, in a wide variety of situations? Um, but yeah, um, hmm. So yeah, it'd be projectiles, has to have a scope, needs to be suppressible. It would be nice if it had a lot of modularity to it in terms of there's carbine versions of it and, it, you know, more rifle versions of it. Um, uh, let's see. Are there any new Halo weapons that I'm just not familiar with? Halo 5 um, weapons? So the problem is that, like, uh, well, when I'm thinking about Halo... Because um, I need to uh, see some of these to sort of... All right. Uh, allow at fuck off. All right, let me open this up in incognito. Uh, oh, I have to. Okay, give me a second. Let me allow. I can't... Ooh, pause on this site. Okay, let's see. I have a sniper rifle. The saw. That's a squad automatic weapon, of course. Um, battle rifle, DMR, Hydra, missile launcher, assault rifle. Yeah, if it wasn't for the assault rifle having this goofy top cover thing on it, it'd be pretty perfect, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be pretty good because it shoots like a 308. It's got a six. Well, here's the thing: I don't. You can't have a 60 round capacity. That's just not. You can't do that. You're not going to just give a. It's. It's not like, like that's a that's a light machine gun at that point, essentially. Um, I'm fine with an assault rifle in the future, especially having a higher caliber for peri uh, barrier penetration and defeating armor. But a 60 round magazine is that's silly. Um, it would have to have like a like a drum or something, and we're not doing drums. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I have to keep looking to find something good. Let, let me look up that pulse rifle from Aliens, because um, it seems really big and cumbersome for what it is. It definitely got that 80s aesthetic to it. I don't know what sights it. it has as well. I think it has iron sights, but I'm not sure. I believe that you... But doesn't it have a thing at the top that you could mount, like, a red dot sight on, I think? Possibly? It probably... I think it might. Um, it... It's not too... It's a little... Let's see... Um, Oh, what about the one from Starship Troopers? Starship Troopers Assault Rifle. <clears throat> the Merida 3. Let me see. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. I, I like the... I like the underbarrel um, pulse rifle aspect. You could probably put a 40 millimeter grenade launcher in there. You can put a shotgun in there if you wanted to. And you could put smokes. If if you just put a 40 mil tube, you could do all kinds of things with that. It could shoot buckshot. Uh, it could shoot little mini grenades, and who knows? But, Guns. Uh, and then I guess there's different variants of it. The M41A2, M41A3, M41A. Yeah, like future, future like this. Here, let me copy and paste this. So that doesn't look too bad. Um, it's got rails on the top for optics. You can probably, with a little tweak, it, you can probably suppress that. Uh, just have it, uh, just give it a, a proper barrel end right there, a muzzle. Uh, that looks like you can, uh, you could, it's got a space for underslung uh, launchers and whatnot. Uh, 60 rounds, I, that's, I don't know what I don't know what it shoots. I don't know what caliber it shoots, but I, I highly doubt it's got. If it's got sixty bullets in there, they're probably not very beefy. Um, does it say ammunition? Ten by twenty-four millimeter caseless. 
Um. Hmm. Huh. Maybe if if you're gonna. Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I don't like the. I I would rather have. Yeah. Uh, also, it looks like the smart gun uses the same ammunition as well. But I, I want something a bit more, with a bit more oomph. We gotta get body armor and barrier penetration, and it's gotta be good at uh, ranges. Though that 60, the 60 round capacity, it doesn't look like it has much in the way of recoil, so I'm definitely not writing it off. Hmm. But it's a contender. The M4A... Let me take... Uh, the M4A2 pulse rifle... There's an M41A2, which is similar. So th that's definitely a contender. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's something to... Yeah, we've talked about this enough. Uh, that'll be my placeholder, <laughs> but cause this is something I would really want to think about, I guess. But I, I, hopefully we've given them enough food for thought. There's a book called Hominids. It's about discovering a parallel universe where the Neanderthals won. It's okay. Okay. <coughs> we're, we're not doing the Lancer. That's silly. Oh, is that the thing from Gears? Gears of War. Yeah. <laughs> that is very much a video game firearm. As if you've never needed a chainsaw or something in the middle of a fight. <laughs> By the way, there's me. probably like 80 great options from just the Call of Duty series that I'm just flat out not familiar with. So, yeah. Uh, Russia discovers the new world with Sputnik. That was in reference to you guys. Uh, uh, Ultimate I Histories. That, That'd be that weird. weird. That, <clears throat> I like, guess it's, that's the thing, though, is like... Would by the time that we've developed something like Sputnik, I'm pretty sure we would have figured out that Earth is of a certain size, and that you know we would have been able to figure out that huh, there probably is land over there. If it's a cultural or religious thing, if there's a theocracy maybe that they live in, then... I guess. But again, they would have had the understanding of like space and sending things to space, and some awareness of how big the planet is. Yeah. But they just assume that it's all ocean for some reason. Like, they've never gone there or really looked at it. So it really is, in a sense, like, they know of the coastline because they can observe it. But it's, like, considered this forbidden continent you're not allowed Maybe. to go onto. And so then, Spike and the okay. satellites are finally able to look at it from a safe distance. Hmm. That might be an idea. I think y'all would I'm, like. Okay. By the way, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna peruse the, uh, the 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 assault rifle thing as we continue. So if I if I randomly interject with pictures or thoughts, then that will be what that is for. I am more than okay with you randomly interjecting with thoughts. Okie dokie. Um, I think y'all would like the night gallery segment. Midnight never ends. It's a meta story about writing from the Rod Sterling. From Rod Sterling, sorry. If you haven't seen it, please oh, do. Very well. Perhaps. Um, I think you keep having serious plagues like Black Death. The Enlightenment wouldn't happen. Nobody's settling the new world when the old one's empty. Uh, well, I mean, that's the interesting idea. This, I mean, this true. feels like a... Well, well, so, the interesting idea that I was gonna <laughs> uh, follow through with would be uh, if the Black Death killed more people than it did is there not a possibility that it could just like have destroyed europe as a as a place in general like there'd still be people who live in europe but it would destroy the more complex uh societal structures that were there at the time maybe if i mean that would be interesting what if the black death was like <clears throat> i really yeah. really worse. i was gonna say yeah, it would like, be categorical exactly. depending on how many kills uh, yeah, well, I'm talking like if it killed 90, 90 to 95% of people, it's like, well, that would be the end of a lot of societal structures. That would be like, like a, that'd be a reset level. Like, it would be a reset, yeah. yeah. And and imagine, dude, that's, imagine if you had a story where it was like the Black Death did that, and so Europe didn't become the dominant, um, the dominant sort of power of the, the, the 
later, you know, the later parts of that millennium. And then it was, you know, elsewhere that saw more development, like, um, I don't know, certain African kingdoms or East Asian kingdoms, or hell, even, like, the the Aztecs or the, the Maya. That feels like it could be an idea. And so then Europe becomes the untamed or mysterious land that has traveled to instead of uh, the Americas. Yeah, yeah. That feels like an idea. That'd be interesting. Hmm. One thing that you could do a, a sort of like the Black Death happens, have a, like a, find a way to make like a stalker situation, but in uh, like medieval or Renaissance age tech, where cities have, are like safe zones because they have, they can build or utilize some, just something that's extremely rare and difficult to make and it keeps cities safe, but venturing out is like super dangerous or something. There's this, there's a miasma so, that covers the world, or a cloud, or a pestilence. I think my favorite part about this scenario is that already in chat there are conflicting ideas on what would happen if uh, if Europe was essentially depopulated. Certain people are saying it would be Persia that would take over, some people are saying the Ottomans, some people are saying the Mongols, some people are saying the Chinese. It's like, yeah, this is why it's what a if, really cool idea. <clears throat> what if you made it so the, the Black happen. Death not only knocks out let's say 95% for, 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 uh, of Europe, but it also, um, like, it, it's not just that it kills you, whatever, it, like, reanimates into some kind of <gasps> Yes, medieval zombies, we I wasn't actually, more. I was gonna say, zombies, that would totally work too, but I was, I was more so going, like, so, like, creatures that are actually, you know, they, they start a civilization, they have preferences, but they're, they're disgusting, horrible things that do, like, horrible things, or whatever, like, you know, like, like, orcs, but way worse, and, uh, you know, Europe is just that, and they are they are quicker to advance. Oh, Europe is Mordor, basically. Yeah, and then the Americas and other countries have to just they can't beat them, but they have to hope they don't get invaded by them until they unite and try and take over what is essentially Mordor Europe. Huh, that'd be a, that feels like an idea that could be really cool. I just like the idea that the orcs have or whatever we call them, they have better tech. Um Yeah. Well, this, it's funny, this honestly sounds like the premise of Resistance. Do you, do you guys remember that game? Resistance they're, on um, PS3? Are they aliens, or are they...? They're, they're aliens. So the idea is that a meteorite crashes in Siberia that's carrying an infection, um, and that infection turns people into chimeras, which is like alien-human hybrids. And basically, over the course of, I think, like 20 or 30 decades, the they amass strength and begin converting more people to their ranks and eventually they spill over into Europe and then America. Um it just sounds similar in that there was a region where people got turned into monsters basically and then, you know, the monsters take over the world. Mm -hmm. That game was uh that game was kinda scary to me when I when I played it when I first played it. Like uh That was uh that was a <laughs> scary little premise there. Aliens in Siberia. Oh no, tomorrow war. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh no, <laughs> no, it's not like... Well, I remember, um... Oh, I remember, because there was even in-universe in justification for that, because the Chimera, they had such a fast metabolism that, um... They needed cooling systems to die. Uh, but the cooling systems to not die. And then the end <laughs> I was game... Gonna say, what the hell? Yeah. I just um, want to die. Get the fridge. Get the fridge. Yeah, then Mr. Me seeks Chimera, but uh, but then the the end goal was to lower the the temperature of Earth um, to make it more akin to a place that they could actually live comfortably. Killzone had the hell gas. Well, sure, but they were still people. <laughs> I know that. Uh, it's like the name gas, Hellgast, know, right? Yeah. It's a cool name. I remember that the interesting thing about Killzone is that, like, the Hellgast are obviously meant to be Nazis, but the actual in-universe story behind their race makes them incredibly sympathetic. And so it's like, you've kind of made this huge mistake, you know? <laughs> like, they're, they're meant to be space Nazis, but the actual in-universe explanation for who they are and why they exist paints the side that you're on as not exactly noble. And of course, they have the cool factor going for them with their crazy helmets and all that stuff. And Brian Cox making speeches. Well, yeah, because they had all the all the interesting characters were on that side, like um, Radic. Uh, not yeah, Radic. That was his name. Like Radic was really cool, but they're meant to be the bad guys. <laughs> it's like, whoops.
Um. Boop, 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 yeah, boop. Seriously though, more more medieval Renaissance zombie stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. <laughs> Rags, easy way to Friday sea travel until society is more advanced. The, did they not? They must have meant something else, not Friday, right? Easy way to Friday sea travel. Easy way to. Um, I, I, I. Huh. It can't be Friday, Friday that they meant. <laughs> I don't know what it means to well, Friday you can, something. You, can, you guys don't have to hit enter, but until you check your messages. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, it's the thing is, it's, like, sides, okay? it's like, capitalized, like, like it's purposeful, like the easy way to Friday sea travel until society is oh, more advanced. Oh, is it advanced. stand for something? Is that a... No, 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 not the whole, like, it's properly, you know, it's a proper noun, sorry, a noun. Um, as in, Friday is spelled with a cap, you're supposed to do capital letters with days, are you, or am I making that up? You meant not to do each, capitals not each on letter. Days. It, no, yeah, not, okay. I don't mean that. I just meant the, the first letter. The names of days are proper nouns, so you meant to so, capitalize yeah. the first letter. Yeah. You, yes, you absolutely are. What, what's that called? Um, where the letters mean something? Um, the what you, F R I D A Y. What's that called? An acronym? acronym? Oh, I, well, there's a difference between an acronym and a abbreviation. Uh, abbreviation, yeah. We you did talk about this before, but I've probably forgotten at this point. <laughs> Oh, it's it's from Marvel Comics Dark Industry. Uh, that's oh my god. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I have no clue. Still getting blue shelled. I'm just too good at the games to keep blue shelling me. That's what keeps happening. I consider it racist. Uh, anyway, rags. Easy way to Friday sea travel until society is more advanced. Make the Oort cloud denser without a reliable Q. Of the stars, I think Q. Maybe they meant track their movement. Seafaring becomes much more difficult. Oh, so the idea would be that we basically change the world that we live in to where the sky is so dense that it becomes basically impossible to use the stars as a guide to travel. That would I be think an... the problem is that that's a cool idea, actually. I'd like to, yeah, you, you'd do... like to know what the knock-on effect of all that would be, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, if the if the if the night sky looks so radically different, and if and if stars and stuff are much closer, does that not mean that there will be changes in the composition of the Earth itself in terms of natural resources? Very like, um, like if, if there is a higher density of stars, is it more likely that we'll find more complex elements on Earth? And what would that yield in Maybe. terms of uh? Well, I mean, it seems likely, right? Isn't isn't basically the reason why any complex elements exist is because of fusion stars and other sort of reactions going on in space. So if it's denser, Maybe, I'm not sure. I think it is because, well, uh, oh man, I'm starting to doubt myself in this one here, but maybe someone in chat will know, because isn't the general gist of it that like the, the, the creation of complex elements is because, you know, hydrogen fuses to helium and then when it starts to run out of hydrogen, you need to fuse helium into something else. And so as that process goes on, you just create more and more complex elements. Oh, only up to iron, okay. Um, I remember learning about this, but uh, it's uh, eluding me right now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting to create a world that way, as it is for a lot of them. Mm-hmm. You want a fun series for this purposefully repressed tech level versus religion topic? Try out the Safe Hold series by David Weber. Fair enough. In my DVD settings, there's a literal wall of stroms stopping travel between continents and a godlike entity that would kill two advanced civilizations. Storms, oh, sorry, D and D, not DVD. <laughs> I really got confused because it said DVD <laughs> settings. I was I was picturing them, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's fine. Um, so yeah, in D and D, they have a wall of stroms stopping travel between continents and a godlike entity that would kill. Any civilization that becomes too advanced, apparently. Dicks. Yeah. Look, the cool thing we did. Die! Like, no! Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> Put it I don't know. The, the idea that a, a, an alien or mag some super... Any, like, a sufficiently powerful entity that can do that is afraid of you developing, like, steam engines. Like, I don't know. I don't think they'd give a shit. Hmm. <laughs> Um, like, oh, what are you gonna do? It doesn't like, have it, to be because they're afraid, be. right? It could be for any reason. It could be. It, it it couldn't be because they're afraid. It has to be something else. 
Morbid curiosity. Morbid curiosity, curiosity of what? Yeah, I'm not sure. Preventing what you, mean. you from using technology and seeing what you'll do to try and get around it. Like what? What kind so, of? So see how they oh, get around like, creating oh, technology like without creating Put technology. Put limitations on them. Put limitations on them to see what they'll do because of those limitations. Yeah, you are one fledgling species out of many. Many. Yeah. This is what your test is. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how yeah. good you are. Okay, that's something. Like, like you're just a science experiment. They discovered you, and so they have been kind of setting exactly. the parameters to see what you're going to do and how you're going to behave. That's interesting. You could do that. Because I could see that being a thing that's plausible. Hyper-advanced civilization that just wants to acquire knowledge and information. And so that's one of the ways they do it. I mean, I guess that civilization would eventually have like the greatest technology possible with stones and and other stuff. They would have potentially. It depends on where the barrier is, but yeah, if you're not like if you're never allowed to develop siege engine or not siege engines, but you know, steam engines or apply electricity and things of that nature, then it probably. Oh. I mean, the ingenuity that <laughs> exists in you would do the best you could with what you've got. Um. Uh, to backtrack, for whatever reason, I mistook the Oort Cloud for, like, the Magellan Cloud, <laughs> so... The it's Cloud's totally where stars or asteroids come from, right? So the Oort Cloud is the, the uh, basically the, the whole layer of, like, ice and stuff that surrounds our star. And I'm for mainly, whatever reason, I just... I mainly know about that because of the Captain Marvel video. Alright, well, I Fucking mean, I didn't know about it before, but we did do research Oh, I, that, yeah. I knew the word, I just never knew what it was about, um, but loads of people yeah. are arguing whether or not it should count as part of the Define solar system. As the, oh, yeah, yeah, because the Oort Cloud is one of those things where it's like, should this be defined as the end point of the solar system, or... Because is I think the Oort Cloud is the furthest extent to which any objects are directly influenced by... The sun? The sun. Yeah. And so it's that feels like a good way a to good, define yeah. the extents of our uh, of um. Okay, what was it? Damn, I can't remember what the premise was before because it was something to do with Oort Cloud. Well, it was just the the, the Oort Cloud's so thick we can't see stars beyond it. Oh, oh, oh! Well, that would be a that would be a totally different premise then. Um, that I think that would significantly change our understanding of uh, reality. And, um, well, yeah, and the, space. they were specifically yeah. talking about seafaring, just you can't use stars to guide. Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be basically the same end consequence, right? Either to, yeah, you just see nothing. What, would, what if stars I guess, what would you... appear one day? That's the thing. What if Oof. you, that's yeah. the world you live in, and then all of a sudden some celestial you think it's an occurs, and then all of a sudden there's stars everywhere, like day and, let's say day and night, but all of a sudden they just appear. And who knows what yeah. else they like? I really like the whole Witcher. Uh, they had that conjugation of the spheres thing, where like two different, at least my my out of memory, where, like two different ver like planes of reality just sort of collide, and it introduces magic and monsters and all that shit to the the normal actual world. Yeah, that's interesting. That's I think the idea of just having a world and then shaking it up in a really interesting way from a really simple thing can yield some great results. Yes. Do you think Movie Bob is always salty because he thinks he lost the coin toss and is jealous of Bob that's enjoying his perfect Mars colony in the Ark? <coughs> <laughs> that's only something that everyone but Fringy should actually understand. That just sounds funny to me. Like, yeah, I can see why it was so funny anyway. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure he does feel that way. Like he said that Republicans destroyed his chance of becoming a robot <laughs> on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want Trump to react to that. Like, <laughs> you stole his chance to be a robot on Mars. Trump would be like, okay. okay I'm sorry, I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. We had some other focuses, you know. Oh my god. Busy building a space force. Movie Bob? Probably out of McDonald's or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's space force. <laughs> Above the sh he's just got a fleet of spaceships constructed out of McDonald's food items. <laughs> the burger ship, the Ma the Big Mac ship. That was a that was a plot of an Aqua Teen Hunger Force episode. I, that doesn't surprise me at all, actually. <laughs> 
the armada. It's it's called pretty small for an average size person. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he said that. It's a pretty small armada for you. It's something I would for genuinely like to ask yeah. him about. I'd be like, do you actually <laughs> think this is normal <laughs> for, for... And I want him to be like... No, not normal, small. This is below average. No, normal amount of food uh, for yeah. a small... Oh, wait, sorry. No, did he say... Did he, say he, s thinks, he said it was small for the average person. Let me see just, if I can uh, find it. I don't think Hold he on. said small. Just, I think he said it was normal. Just, did he say fairly just small? By the way, we're just debating, like, really the small. degrees of how stupid he oh, is. Oh, absolutely, Not yes. that he is or isn't stupid. No, Movie Bob said that is a fairly small amount of McDonald's for the average he size did? person. That's where I got confused, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, I, I so, let um, Az and Gary see that because they hadn't seen it before, and I was like, he described that as fairly small. He was just like, <laughs> it's like, how could you possibly? That is, like... It's, it's four meals. It's four large meals. Like... It's not even... Like... There's four drinks! Is he drinking yep. all four? That's the thing, man. Those you four... bet your ass he's drinking all four. Those four sodas, I'd already feel like ill. Like, before <laughs> I could even get to the yeah. food. Oh, that yeah. Is... Tell me about how ill you feel after doing that. <laughs> yeah, and like four You didn't even burgers, do it, Mel. You gave up. And, like, about 24 McNuggets. Maybe even more than 24 nuggets. And two large chips. Like, what are we... What are we... Man, you are, um, you're gonna have no, like, uh, Diabito is the, <laughs> like, he's seriously, that's, that's actually what he thinks is a small amount of food, he's in serious jeopardy. Like, I don't know that there's the, the world that he lives in where he gets to go to the Mars colony, like, with these choices that he's making. Dude, he fucking cooks <laughs> his turkeys in, uh, Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. <laughs> Mountain Dew chicken. I, chicken. I, I, I can't, no way, no way. He's, he's, like, he's proud of it, he shows Twitter and stuff. Oh my god. Because generally when you do that sort of thing, there's the added, I know it's stupid, this is just for the memes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, look at the stupid thing I did, let's see if this is, tastes as hey awful man, as it looks. it's Game of Fuel, okay. Yeah. Uh. Oh. This is gamer fuel. This is gamer protein. Mm-hmm. Hey, long Stay man. hydrated, gamers, doesn't mean drink more Mountain Dew. Liar. <laughs> uh, hey, long man, do you believe Vision would feed civilians to his zombified wife? Apparently Marvel does. Okay, I have no idea no. what happens in... What is going on in the newest What If episode, huh? Something spooky. Feeding people to a zombified. Okay. <laughs> I mean, isn't aren't they supposed to be of a particular age rating? Like, I can't see them doing that. Or how far are they I... willing to go in this what if stuff? Uh, probably just PG. Nothing worse than that. Hmm. P and G. <laughs> nice. Thanks, man. I mean, as long as you don't show blood, you're okay, I guess. Yeah. Um. Tim Poole has had Alex on. Alex can come on other people's shows, but not his own. There are eyes on where he goes, so TOS will be enforced. Yeah, just like I said, just just be careful, guys. Cause, uh, mm -hmm. You know, because that they already get like 8K, so I imagine with Alex Jones, that could go up to like 15, 20, because there'll be a lot oh, of people boy. just being like, "Holy shit, Alex Jones!" And then, um, yeah, it'll be it'll be dependent on what they talk about. Like I said, I would just want him to talk about the sequels and what he thought of them. Because it would be funny. Um, Justice League Steppenwolf looks so dull and uninteresting. At least Snyder's Steppenwolf was kind of funny in how edgy he made him. But I thought the Justice League one was funny, because he looked like a really bad video game character. The, but I will agree that the Steppen Snyder Wolf was also funny. Snyder mm. Wolf. When, when they pull the cue boy from him and he goes, No! Like, aww. Doesn't get to have his cube. You dick! Can we break my cube? Come on! It's mine! My cube, <laughs> dick. I searched really long for it. All I want to do is destroy your planet. Who do you want for? the last smashed ultimate character to be? I don't give a Crash. shit. Crash. <laughs> yeah, I don't give a shit. Uh, Danny DeVito. Crash. <laughs> Danny De I thought you were going to say Danny Phantom. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um. 
Scorpion. That'd be pretty cool. And he's just the only super violent, gory character in the <laughs> <Yeah>. whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he just performs I don't know. What a about um, like what? What about Cass? Daddy Cass. He should be in there. Big strong stud. Stable family life. Uh, good with instruments. Talented singer. I mean, geez. Think geez. of the ways he can beat people. Got it people. all. Bringy the Weir Cassowary. Hey. <laughs> he I like that a lot. That's moon. that's awesome. That's uh go. maybe that's the Halloween costume. Fuck Mongos. All my homies hate Mongos. Real <laughs> and then weird that I would get banned for saying potentially. <laughs> Rep Team Artards. Can I get a gang gang for all of our Artard brothers out there? Also, when is YouTube gonna fix this font loophole? I don't gang know. Gang. I'm surprised I haven't done it already. It seems like something they would be able to get easily done. Like, you just import it into the thing and just, like, remember this. Yeah. Or just don't give people the option to do different fonts. <laughs> yeah, yeah that'd really be a lot. Yeah, one. yeah. Um, is there a formal definition for tism? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Make Fringy's Halloween PFP a cassowary. Ah, you were slow well, on the draw there, so someone else yeah, already exactly. suggested it. Yeah. Slow on the draw, just, said it hours ago. It just redirects you back uh, to the to the slang. Back you, Mola. I'm catching up with EFAP72. And you kept talking about Buffy, so I watched it now. I'm halfway through season two, and I can't stop crying. Poor Buffy. <laughs> Aww. Dude, if you're having feels at season two, you better, better, better have a sit down. Release? Okay. No, raise slash farm cows in forests. Problem solved. Does that solve all of the problems? I don't know. After almost 40 runs, I finally finished another The Lost Run. <laughs> Nice. Yay! I hate this character so much. <laughs> Weed. Is it God's herb or devil's lettuce? How? Oh. Why? Maybe depending on the one you get, it's a bit of both. Hey, wonder what y'all think about Sardonicast? Never watched it. I don't have an opinion on it. I thought it was boring. I find that YMS is the one that has the most interesting things to say. Um, well, I mean, YMS usually, yeah, has super interesting things to say about movies. Yeah, I just don't, like, I just don't give a crap about the other two, really. I'm just not interested in anything they really have to say. That's the thing, I usually just, like, I would unironically say you guys should totally fucking subscribe and check out YMS's Twitch Highlights channel. It's way better. Yeah, yeah. It's really funny um, what he gets up to in his day-to-day -day with Twitch. Um, but yeah, I, I've tried to watch a couple of episodes of Sardonic Cast and I just get a little bit bored. But, um, you know, not everything for everybody. That's how it works. Would you say that bloat in a story such film is bad, even if it makes sense? Also, you're my favorite paninis and high rags. Right. I think by kind of by definition, bloat is something you want to avoid. It's like saying too much of something is bad. It's like, well, yeah, that's why it's too much, you know? Right. Like um, it's sort of baked into the word. I try to define bloat. I think I did in the Snyder video is like, you're not giving us any new information. This is serving no purpose um, in the story, which is typically how you try and construct a story. You give us the information we need for, for additional things to happen. You don't just put in random shit. Typically, but even then, that could serve some purpose compared to just nothingness that also doesn't help. So it's. I would definitely recommend avoiding bloat. Um, I'm trying to think of. Would there be times where it could be purposeful and still be called bloat? It's like, uh. Like you're trying to specifically make a point for something? Yeah, maybe. But at that point, would it be called bloat? Yeah, that's the thing. By the point that I would say that bloat's good is it's not bloat anymore. Yeah. Um, 
Pěkný. Damn, I keep coming fourth. It's embarrassing. Um, you should look up the golden crowned flying fox. Whoa. What a name it's got. Golden crowned flying fox. Oh man, it's like a bat. Oh, it's big too. Yeah, just make it a little bit bigger and you could have yourself a horror monster right there. I'm afraid no one else is interested, and that's okay. It's okay. Um, being eaten by a Komodo. With my dying breath, I blame Fringy. Yeah. <laughs> and shoot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't risk your life off yourself, Fringy2021. Pretty much, that's <laughs> how it goes. Smart. Are these survival techniques taught in Australian school? What the fuck, Fringy? <laughs> like you said, you know, if it involves killing yourself, it's probably not a survival recommendation. Flying Fox are fruit bats. Interesting. Hi lads, hope you're all well. Mola, miss your dedicated gaming streams. Cheers. Um, well, you got the Bioshock ones recently. I'm thinking of doing another set for a different game relatively soon, so... You'll have me in solo mode, more than likely. Avoiding all of these creatures. You've been doing a good job avoiding me with your sleeping pattern. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it is. It's a sleeping pattern. That's, that's yeah, there's nothing I can do about it, you know? Yeah. Uh oh. Um, elephants don't actually think you're cute. Oh. Oh man. Elephants? I mean, Assholes. some of them <laughs> might. You don't. You don't. You don't know. Oh, I almost threw that ball at myself. That'd have been awkward. Um, can't watch the EFAP today. Currently in Krusty Land at Universal Studios in Florida. Hope the revolution goes well in Australia. Fringulos. Fring. Ringoliosis. I was just hit by so many things. Um, yeah, Krusty Land. They actually, like, like in the episode, because holy shit, I hope you don't get killed by the robots there. I guess. But um, yeah, this will catch you around. How would you fare out in the wilderness with nothing? I wouldn't fare particularly well, but I imagine Rags would. Uh. Probably not great, but I think I could live. I would like run on basic random things I've heard from shows and stuff and be like, I can try and eat something and then it kills me and I'd be like, oh. I didn't realize it was a poison berry. What am I supposed to do? That's a fifth? God damn. Mola, whenever you beat Bioshock 2 on stream, instead of playing Infinite, you play Prey 2017, because it's a much better game of the same type. Thing is... Yeah, Prey is good. Prey 2017 is pretty great. I really like Prey. Thing is, I still want Prey 2. Thing is, people don't want me to play Bioshock Infinite because they think it's good. They want me to play it so I can complain <laughs> about it. Mm-hmm. About right. Mola finally admits the Earth is barely habitable. True. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's such a fucking man of steel arc, man. You know, everywhere the universe is habitable if you have a dome. But shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Build a dome on Earth, and Earth is like double habitable. If you had an IR laser strong enough to blind, which exists, couldn't you still flying large groups just by shining it in their eyes? Oh, couldn't you sit there blinding large groups? I'm very confused what this relates to. Is this relating to when people point those hyper-powerful lasers at the sky and it potentially blinds pilots of commercial planes? Oh, dude, that was just happened. Yeah, 
So that's super illegal. Um, oh, I mean, it was it was a problem. I remember that. like five or ten years ago when it was just a thing that people were doing and getting arrested for it naturally, because it's an incredibly dangerous and stupid thing to do. I mean, yeah, that is a really stupid thing to do. Damn it! I, I don't know why the question's been asked. I guess. Yeah, I'm very lost on the context. It probably makes sense, but I just don't remember when it, when it came from. The UNSC from Halo versus the Galactic Republic. Who's winning? Galactic Republic. Probably the Galactic Republic, yeah. Well, so More not only are they enormous, but if we're talking prequel era, they have soldiers with magic on their team, which probably helps. Yeah. I think the UNSC pretty good, but they're small, relatively speaking. Um... Then again, I guess that's the question. Would Master Chief be able to beat a Jedi? I suppose the answer would have to be no, yes, right? Yes, he's got bullets. Just... Well, oh, they have oh, the Force. True, yeah, that's right. But but can I was a, about yeah, the Force. That's... What can the Force? Can the Force stop bullets? We wouldn't need to, right? Well, we were at the problem of a lot of our animal discussions. Who's got the jump on who? Who's also, Fringy, you have to yeah. see what just happened. Holy fuck! Let me see. Oh wow! Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> that's, that's possibly the most luckiest thing that's ever happened to me on this game. Holy fuck. I missed it. I have to rewind. <laughs> rewind. <laughs> oh shit. Oh man, oh. what a... <laughs> Oh wow. That was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the most embarrassing death ever. It's just like... Wow, DK. What the fuck? <laughs> um, but that was pretty cool. Uh, Rags, I think the bolt gun is a contender for the AR. Sure of all our arms would break after the first shot, but with a bolt gun, one volley is all you bolt? need. Wait, bolt gun? As in a bolt action rifle? I don't think so. No, yeah, bolt action rifles are obsolete. Um, I'm not fucking giving my troops bolt action rifles. Um, I'm assuming it's a reference to some game that I don't know. Bolt gun? Me. Bolt gun. Well, remember the, uh, what was that sniper in Modern Warfare 2 that everybody used the bolt action one? The intervention? I yeah, that's right. That. The, the I attack, remember that. Uh, M200 or something like that. Do um, you mean the bolter? From mm. Warhammer? I don't know if I could classify that as a, as a, um, an assault rifle because it's, it's like a grenade launcher. It shoots these like little. It shoots these little rockets that explode when they hit. I don't know if it's an assault rifle. Uh, have any of you guys played all three Killzone games? If so, what do you think of them? I played none. I played none. <laughs> I played one of them, but man, that's that was so long ago. Wasn't Killzone PlayStation 2? Yes, it was. Yeah. I did. I don't remember how many I played. I played the first one for sure, but I don't remember anything about it. When does it come? When did it come out? 2013. No, wait. That's Shadowfall Killzone. Whatever that is. Yeah, I remember that. that was 2004. Nine. Fuck me, I'm a mold. Oh, I'm a mold. Boy. I'm a mold. I'm a mold. I'm very I'm a mold. A mold. I'm mold. Also, right. I'm I didn't mold, come man. first. The combination of Diddy Kong and Wario clearly doesn't work. We gotta do a new combination. Everyone, put your votes in. I think I found it fun uh, back in the day, but I don't know how much weight I would give that opinion of little me. So. <laughs> Waluigi. <laughs> okay. Rags, who else am I playing as? Uh, B Piranha Plant Man. Alright, Mel, what car? Uh... Uh, the, 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 the third one. <laughs> just say, <laughs> just say stop. Okay, stop. DK's car it is. Nice. Do, 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 do. Look at how happy Waluigi is. Yeah, he's just like, oh, you're playing as me? Sweet. <laughs> Sick. They need to make a game that is just Waluigi's adventures. Waluigi's through, Mansion. He's just got to save Wario. Waluigi's Mansion. Yeah, that's right. And they kiss at the end. Because you know what they got? They got forced diversity. <laughs> 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 uh, I've been playing. 
Three. That game is fun. Guys, look at Discord chat. We've had a vegan discussion for about an hour, and now it's an existential discussion about the sentience of ants. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how that could have oh. happened, yeah. Sounds about right. Well, who knows? Maybe ants are... <laughs> No. Well, who knows? <laughs> the freaking good one is the lock there as well. <laughs> uh, what did What's you up? guys. I am gonna peace out now because I have to work tomorrow and it's getting quite late. I don't know if you want to stay for this next question. It had the word biggest disappointment in it, so I figure that relates to you. Oh, that's probably about me. Yeah, I was saying. Yeah. What is you guys' biggest disappointment in media? Mine is the lack of Titanfall 3 and Battlefield 5 squandering of momentum from Battlefield 1. Hi, Rags. Squandering of momentum? Yeah, Battlefield 5 squandered the momentum of Battlefield 1, I guess. Oh, definitely, yeah. I'm playing Absolutely. Battlefield 1 right now as we're, you know, chatting about this. And there's a lot of really good stuff in Battlefield 1 um, from 4. <laughs> they, they made some good stuff. A lot of infantry changes, mobility and movement changes. There's good stuff in here. And yeah, Battlefield 5 just shat all over the Pretty well received Battlefield 1. Do you want to go oh, first in that one so you can escape? Sorry? Do you want to go first so you can escape? Oh, uh... Well, the first thing that comes to mind in recent times was probably Amnesia Rebirth. That was a fucking disappointment. It's a fair choice. Yeah. Mine's gonna be Game of Thrones or TLJ. Probably Game of Thrones. That squandered a decade of work. Well, I mean... I got a recent one for you, Rick and Morty Season 5. Yeah. That was a huge disappointment. What would your be pick be, Rags? I'm assuming it isn't the Battlefield for 5. For squandered stuff? Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, it was biggest disappointment in media, so it could really be anything. Yeah, I'm... <clears throat> hmm. Uh, I mean, Game of Thrones is definitely up there. What what little I've kn I know of it more than I know it. Um, just because of how long and the the huge cultural influence that it had and just threw away. Mhm. Mm uh, I don't know. It's legit kind of tough to say. I'm trying thinking. I'm trying to think about game series. Halo might be up there, depending on how infinite Ooh. goes. Ooh, that's a good one too, yeah. Mass Effect. Um. <coughs> uh, oh, no, Battlefield's not there yet. Battlefield had five, which was bad, but that's just one thing. I feel like they still got a lot, uh, a lot of a interest lot to lose. going on. <laughs> the only that came to, uh, to mind for me was. <coughs> the destruction of uh, the two WWE 2K games. They just became worse and worse over the years and riddled with microtransactions, so basically unplayable. Mm -hmm. So no, it was normally I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna create like some silly wrestling person and then I'll do some, some wrestling. And the last one I bought was 2019. I was like, yeah, here you have four things you can choose or, or, or four sets you can choose from. You can make a rest out of this. All the other things you have to unlock or pay for. It's like, oh, great, thanks. Well, those are some bis disappointments. There you go. Yeah, I feel bad Fun. now, so I'm gonna go to bed now and cry. Thanks. Okay, goodbye, gotcha. Mel. Sleep well. I'll, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. Bye boy. Um. Little context to the whole movie Bob Robot thing, he was just giving an example of the transhuman tech he feels the GOP has denied him. Oh yeah, yeah, we got it, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, movie Bob should learn to take care of his, uh, his organic body. <laughs> yeah. he I like the idea, I like- robot parts. I do very much like the idea that he, the reason why he's, his lifestyle is the way that it is is because he was just banking on being able to turn into a robot, <laughs> and now that that might not happen in time, it's like... Well, this is someone else's fault. <laughs> this is yeah. someone else's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do wonder about that, like, if it would be, uh... Like, imagine dying the day before immortality becomes viable. <laughs> That'd be, uh... 
Mm. Um, then again, maybe immortality. If only I ate one more apple. If I, yeah, exactly. By the way, honorable mention for Cyberpunk, for the whole massive disappointments thing. It's just that yeah, I wasn't... Oh, I feel like that disappoint, disappoints a whole, like, genre of things. Yeah. Destiny. Oh, that was a huge disappointment. Was Anthem, or did nobody think Anthem was going to be good anyway? I don't know that people expected much of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> could be wrong. I mean, the whole idea was, oh, see, Anthem is Bioware A-Team. It's uh, Edmonton. Yeah, that'll be good, guys. Then that it was development hell and awfulness, yeah. and it turned out to be shit. Exactly. Bioware that should would be, be lucky that the lights are still getting kept on. So in chat, with reference to immortality, that would be a blessing. Would it? If you're... If you... I, th I feel like it'd be a bit more complicated than that. Well, like, the binary of you live forever or you don't? Well, yeah, because think about how it would change your attitude towards life if you now been told, hey, look, if you don't screw up, you'll live forever. It's like, well, shit, I don't want to ever screw up then and make a mistake that could kill me. And, like, imagine... You know, you know what I mean? As opposed to, like, if you know that your life is finite, you will take some risks, but if your life goes forever, you can have, why do you ever take any risks? That could be a mindset, but you could also have reversing the position of being, especially if you had it before that it wasn't that, therefore you're like, this is all a gift, and so I'm going to continue taking risks because it's all bonus time. Um, uh, I guess you could have that mindset. I don't know that most people would. I, I think I mean, that the other one would be more likely. If you, like, your most extreme sort of, like, sport people, if you told them I can make it now so that you won't age they'd be like, sweet, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing though Oh, uh, yeah, probably I, I guess, but, but we're talking about people in that particular instance who are probably pretty uh, well aware of their mortality, right and they've already sort of grappled with it and um, and have probably even thought about these things already, I guess I'm thinking about like the average person, it's just like hey, you get to live forever now, and I wonder how that would affect your decision making um, yeah, well, it definitely would affect it. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is I don't know that it could be said to be, like, categorically a great thing. Well, I, I thought we would go into the direction of if, because that's why I said binary, if it meant I will live forever to engage with it, that would be something I'd be like, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to want to live forever. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's no way for me to cut it off, I'd, I'd be concerned about the ultimate uh, place I end up in life, you know? Uh, you could also take some more risks because you got infinite time to get over the cost. Well, I mean, that depends, right? If it's, if it's a risk that kills you, then you, you don't have infinite time to figure it out. And what if the mistake that you make makes living, un like, pretty much unbearable, whether psychologically or in terms of physically? I think, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, actually. I, so I, don't, the, I don't know that the human... The, the elves in Lord of the Rings don't seem reckless, like... They're also not real. I don't know that we should base it on them. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what the how the human condition would change. Yeah. If, because I, I think that I think death is kind of like a fundamental aspect of just existence as we understand it. So I'm not sure how we translate into that world that does a world where that isn't the case. And of course, imagine what would happen if the only people who could be immortal were rich people. Like, because it costs so much money to do it. Could you imagine the existential dread that's going to bring about? There is no equalizer anymore of, like, at the end of it all. You'll die, but the people up there will live forever. Oh, that's a, that's a scary thought. Um, Movie Bob doesn't want so much to become a robot as wish the tech existed to make him an immortal post-human god. Uh, attended to by AI <laughs> super intelligence, which massively overestimates IRL tech progression. Yeah, but as Freen said, he probably hoped that um, it would have been done faster by now. Before he, yeah, before he's <laughs> before he fucking basically. killed himself with McDonald's. <laughs> as you said, though, I just like the idea that a finite group can can advance to Mars or get advancements through technology, and he's just like, I would be chosen. He assumes that he would be one of them, <laughs> even though there's no way that he'd be one of them. We're gonna need game critics up there, Bob. Yeah. You're the best. You're the best that there. I I gave that up. You know, as he's cutting wood in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a trope of fucking lumberjack. <laughs> yeah, who gave it up and has a family now? Remember, they did that Expert Origins Wolverine. 
Yeah, but unironically. It's like, I have left it all behind. <laughs> He's just like, the, they fake the death of his girlfriend or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then he, he doesn't leave that And he that can't, movie, he can't beat Sa Sabretooth in a fight, so he gets a fucking adamantium skeleton. Do you remember, um, like, how in that movie, Deadpool, like, he's he's chopping up all the bullets, and he yep. just chops them all perfectly, but then in Deadpool 2, when he tries to do it, yeah. he chops the first one, but then the rest of them just start getting through as they would. <laughs> that is <laughs> such a stupid. fucking awesome meta joke. It's a great like, joke. Oh. Because, the... of course, you would be able to cut them all. <laughs> like... It just... X-Men Origins Wolverine is one of those films where everyone is just agreed. It's like, that was pretty bad. Let's not do that again. Yeah. Like, what? That whole... That movie, man. <laughs> so stupid. What were they thinking? It always bothered me that, even though it was Will I Am, the fucking Black Eyed Peas singer, yeah. was, was playing the teleporty guy. I remember feeling so, like, so lame that he gets beaten because Sabretooth grabs his spine in the middle of him teleporting. Yeah. It's like, what? How, Come on. How did you manage to do that? And I guess he knew that it works, that you you take priority. You know, it doesn't just his hand. Yeah. Fuck that movie, it was really shit. <laughs> do you remember Gambit was in it? And they were, like, looking to, you know, generate a Gambit, sort of, like, maybe do mm -hmm. an X-Men Origins Gambit. I think they wanted to do an X-Men Origins Magneto as well. Yep. Man, it's, it's crazy to know how many times franchises have died in the cradle, you know? Well, I mean, yeah, it seems to happen a decent amount of times. Everyone... Bit, you know. Was the MCU going by then? Uh, MCU was, yeah. Iron Man came out the year before. There you go. It was probably like... Oh man, imagine it worked too. Imagine X-Men Origins Wolverine was like hyper popular and well written and then... Get three yeah. more like... Origins movies and then a team up movie or something, and it's just this. Mm -hmm. The Snyderverse gets fucked straight away, but so all we knew is it was the. Is that. Who owns X Men? Fox, was it? Fox owned them, yeah. yeah. It's the Foxverse right, versus the Marvel Universe. And, right, yeah. And Fox. then Sony end up selling Spider Man to Fox or something like that. Oh, could you imagine? Jeez. Uh, thoughts on a Halo movie that's about a squad of Marines desperately trying to escape Reach, or maybe a squad of Marines trying to survive a flood outbreak? I like the first one as an idea a lot. Yeah, uh, I like them both. Yeah. Um, it's just, they're not going to pour that kind of money into Halo, I guess. Well, to make it, they're making you know. a TV show for Showtime. Steven Spielberg is producing. Is that the one they announced 17 years ago? Yeah, but it is happening now, apparently. <laughs> it's coming out, like, now. next year or the year after. I think it's, it's like, actually heading into production very soon. On Paramount Plus or something. Wii U. So many streaming services. And so little time. Yeah. Rags, what's your opinion on the video, Ducks Annihilate a Bowl of Peas? <coughs> I, I, I'm not familiar with this video. I imagine ducks, ducks would nine. fuck up peas, though. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see this. I'm putting the money on the ducks. I don't know if the peas going to win this one. Yeah, I don't know if the peas are going to be able to get that kill shot, you know? Maybe Choking, if the, maybe? If the, if the peas have knives, we can think about it. Maybe if the peas have knives and there's enough <laughs> of them. I don't know how... They, they have to be tiny knives. And those ducks do annihilate that bowl of peas. Jeez. That's just Nothing nature, left. man. Nature is metal. Um, if you're worried a berry is poisonous, you should crush it up and rub it on your skin and see if it gives you a rash. If it does, then don't eat it. It's true. That that's one of the things you can do. Neat. I didn't you know did, that. You do stages. You you crush it up and you rub it on your skin. Then you wait a little bit, like an hour, or two hours. If there's no irritation, you try it on your lips, and then see if that works as well. If there's no irritation, that's a good sign. And then I think you put it on like your your or what's it? Your tongue. You like rub it on your tongue, and that's one way to see if you can eat something or not. It certainly will re. It, it'll certainly let you know if think I think if something's bad for you. Um, you just sort of test it on more and more sensitive parts of yourself. Mm-hmm. I don't know how ac how accurate it is overall, but it is it is something that I've I've heard and 
been told. Rags, as a gun guy, how do you define assault rifle? Uh, select fire. So it'll, it'll be at least full auto or burst. It will have... Uh, hmm. Stock? Or, well, nah, because you could take, you know, like... Hmm. It will be at least in a intermediate, probably intermediate caliber, automatic um, barrel of at least 16 inches. I think that's really, um, I think that's it. I think, yeah, I think that's what it qualified as. Um, but the first one is the big one. It's the, the automatic... Uh, automatic fire all right i mean if i was gonna have to give classification to the general broad turn up turn of it ragu the assault rifle in halo 5 has a bunch of options for different scopes and attachments as well as a 36 round mag not in halo 1 in halo 1 it's it's magic much <laughs> It's like, here's a 60 round magazine of 308s. Also, it doesn't have any sights on it. And also, it's not really that good. You're like, oh, what are you? <laughs> what are you? The UNSC is relatively smaller than the Republic. Ah, yes, 500 worlds is relatively smaller than millions of star systems. Masters is an underestimation there. And the Republic would absolutely crush. Yeah, I think the Republic is just, in terms of technology, it's just not. It, I mean, if if um, if they had, like, the UNSC has trouble fighting the Covenant, a lot of trouble, especially if you read the books. Like, it is a very dire situation for uh, for humanity. There's yep. no way they could fight against the, the the army of the Republic. There's no way. A lot of it has uh, to a be better ship. matchup. Um, the better matchup would be the Covenant in the uh, Republic. Yeah, because the Covenant have really good ships. That's the main reason why they beat humanity in Halo. Yep. Well, and they outnumber them significantly too, but the ships yeah. are just it's are better not technology a match. in general, yep. but primarily, yep. yeah, interstellar travel and ship combat. Because humanity yeah. has Mac guns, and that's kind of it. Whereas the Covenant have these ones that are guarded with shields and massive, like, cannons and, yeah. I think that was the trade-off yeah. in Halo Wars, was like, the Covenant get shields on almost everything, but that the armor is better for the, the humans. Mm -hmm. Well, you gotta find the balance, yeah. yeah. Like, the, the entirety of naval, I wanna say naval in the future, it refers to ship combat. Um, base, like yes. Base ships. Um, but the, the, the entirety of naval combat, essentially, in Halo, for the UNSC comes down to we have one thing that works everything that we have is devoted to defending these Mac cannons and that's kind of it like everything's about the Mac cannon because it's all we've got that can penetrate like the, the big shields of these cruisers and if we don't have those we're fucked so it's like how in Star Wars if the, the hyperspace kamikaze was like a, a thing you could just do willy-nilly like it's presented in The Last Jedi. It would be the single military strategy around which all of yep. space battles would be revolving around. That's um, the damage they've done to Star Wars. It's, that's, that should be how everything works now. The, everyone's waiting to get that shot off. Yeah, there would be... You'd have no... You'd have no super ships. You'd have no big ships. You'd have no... Uh... Uh... You know, have no big carriers. You would have no cor Corvette class ships. It would be all. It would be like all tiny fighters. Because you can't give up. You know, you can't. It, it, like if one little thing can destroy a bit, if everything dies in one hit, then there's no fucking way you're um, gonna build a ship that's bigger than a fighter. Like it would change everything about. Like space warfare well, in general. Remember the just the obvious conclusions. Like, wait, so what if I just had an asteroid with a hyperdrive on it? That's they what just... they do. That's literally what they do. You don't need explosive payloads. You just need mass. 
yeah. you'd strap hyperspace engines to asteroids, and you'd just chuck them into things, and that would be it. And not only that, you could chuck them into things across the galaxy if you wanted. Oh, it would be so satisfying to watch, like, the people who work their ass off to design, like, the space battles in the old Star Wars movies know about what they did in TLJ, and just be like, um... Don't you think we would have done this? You gotta be careful when you talk, especially about sci-fi stuff. Space battles, man, and the implications of space battles, and how those would play out. It's like, man, it ain't gonna happen like it does in Revenge of the Sith. That's that that ain't how it's gonna be. Or well, everyone's like really close by. Yeah, where everyone's just shooting like flak cannons at each other from ten feet away is like, no, come on, guys. You would be shooting at each other from like different planets. You'd be shooting at each other from hundreds of oh, thousands be... of kilometers yeah. away. It would be an invisible war of two different armies of hackers trying to hack into people's shit. Yeah, you, you're not having these battles where they're right next to each other. You cannot see the ships with your eyes. Oh, no. Um, you, no what way. you could do, though, is it would give you an excuse to make everything hardwired. Like, why would you yeah. have, for instance, why would you have a clone trooper sitting and manually firing some piece of artillery that's poking out of a starship? It's like, well, because if it's all closed and it's all hardwired and you need a physical person to do that shit, it means it can't get hacked. So it was like that's a that that seems like it might be a legit reason to kind of go back to basics in a way. I suppose you could, could try and can that would be the job is contriving reasons to end up in battles like that because you're gonna you're gonna trigger yeah. the prequel fans in, into saying that that fight happened for very specific reasons. Um, my bad, the IR laser thing was in relation to the use of plasma slash laser weapons versus bullets, so I was thinking of useful applications. So, like, hitting pilots with lasers to blind them during fights, or I'm not sure. Huh. Was unique battle rags? No! No. It isn't. It isn't <laughs> a unique battle. Well, I mean, uh, if you only go by the movie, they don't really tell us much of anything, right? It's just like... They tried to... Have they kidnapped... Is that... Did they kidnap the Chancellor, like, pretty much during that war? Is that what they're trying to argue? I think it happened I... at an earlier stage. Yeah. Because right? he's captured when it starts. The whole point of their mission is to yeah. save him. So I thought maybe that that was the point, is they all arrive and then they grab him, and then... Wasn't... An I think the fight. Clone Wars... I think the Clone Wars animated show, the one that the original one tells us what happens. I think so, yeah. Like how we how we ended up there. Yeah, Grievous like bursts open his like uh, office, I think, and jumps in and grabs him. Yeah. Yeah. The the idea that ships would be just like within a stone's throw. Di well, I mean, technically in space, everything's a stone's throw away. But like really, really close to each other, and just like shooting at each other at point blank. Like, the only way that would ever probably happen is if, for one reason, one army just decided to hyperspace right onto another army. Which is dumb, because you could tell if someone's about to exit hyperspace close to you. And if you're just- if your whole point is to space Blitzkrieg, and I don't- I don't care if they know we're coming, we have such incredible firepower on our side that we just- that, that we can just do that. Like, we need to do this quickly and efficiently. So we just hyperspace our fleet right next to their fleet and blow them up and make a quick work of it. Then, I mean, maybe that's the case, but... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, you come up with, uh, Yeah, you have to come up with something. Why are they not shooting missiles at each other from essentially <laughs> just hundreds of thousands of miles away from each other and things like that like oh are we are we um like has anti-missile technology gotten so good that it's pointless to shoot missiles at each other at distances like you have to physically like how do you get around the cat just just make a world where the countermeasures to a lot of this stuff is so damn good that it renders some of these you know tactics just completely ineffective 
So you have to give Space Marines rifles and say, yeah, you got to go do it yourself. Our automated stuff can't do it because their hacker countermeasure firewalls are preventing us from doing it. And the defenses in that aspect are just better than the offenses. So, yeah, we have to do this the old-fashioned way in a sense. Yeah, unless there's, for example, maybe a big station that doesn't typically move and you send a force to attack it and then a force turns up to defend it. Then you can get some space battles going, I guess. Because you've got to get inside it. You're like, why can't we hack the enemy ships? It's like, well, there's there's nothing to hack. Everything's on a closed system. There's no... They're, they're not using wireless. Everything's wired and closed in, in, you know, a physical sense. There are human beings pressing buttons, not electrical signals that are using AI to do anything like it. There's nothing to hack. So that's how you can justify this old-school idea of a big battleship with hundreds of crewmates that are all at gun turrets and at panels and things of that nature. Which is cool. Which is really cool. I like that idea. This, you know, how do we take this naval concept and put it in space? How do we make that work? Um, what if clip in Discord vision feeds people to wander? So... Unless you guys are lying to me, that's just like a full assassination of Vision. In this universe, I guess. What does that mean? Like, because uh, some weird decision about zombies were made, Vision decided he's cool with feeding oh, people to wander. Oh, yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, I don't know. I'm not sure how anything in these what-if shows is meant to make any sense. Nobody acts the same way as they do. Well, it's what we've said before, where one decision is made, but then suddenly a whole bunch of things are different for some reason, and it's, like, yeah. non-connected. It's like, also, this is now the thing. You're like, what? Yeah, you just made the decision to essentially do whatever you want. Yeah. He literally feeds her Black Panther's leg? What the fuck? What? What? Is, that doesn't sound, like, seriously, like, that sounds a bit like much. she's a cannibal? Well, she's a zombie. Um, oh. I guess. And I guess Vision wants to keep her alive, so he's feeding her people. Which, what the fuck? Mad. Doesn't sound very Vision-y. Doesn't sound like something <laughs> Vision would do at all. Yeah. He loves her that much. <laughs> <sighs> they do it in the comic? Okay, I- Why I would you- care. Why did you tell me that? <laughs> Um, I feel like I should qualify that. There are arguments that UNSC ships are more pound-for-pound pound powerful than Disney Republic, but the sheer absurd scale of the Republic's industry literally drown the UNSC in sheer material. Yeah, probably. Sure, um, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's, it really is scale. Like, it, it, I think it would be kind of pointless to get into who has the, the best ship one-to-one. -one when it probably wouldn't be that much of a difference and it's just too different it's like saying oh yeah well would they beat the warhammer like nothing beats warhammer because it's absurd uh, so it's like just comparing two different universes sometimes can be pointless um apparently the zombies are caused by the quantum virus what is the uh, quantum, quantum virus. virus think of virus but quantum oh price if it's bad in the comic it should be bad in the adaptation right <laughs> <laughs> that means it's good. <laughs> oh, I don't pretend to understand that formula. I never will. So I'll be right back and use the new. Another question: Covenant versus Empire minus the Sith slash Force users. Oh, um. I feel like the Covenant are more powerful like... than the Empire. Whoa, they got the Death Stars. They do have the Death Star. Um, Covenant got really good ships, though. Oh, I guess, would they have the Death Stars, or just, how does this work? Uh, I guess we assume that it is the military capabilities of the Empire at peak, uh, against the Covenant at peak. In that case, they do get like the one Empire, Death Star, then. I feel like the Empire would probably just have more people. Uh, yeah, more people, more manpower. I feel like it would probably still be the Empire. I feel like the, the, before I thought about the Death Star, I was like, the, I could see, I could see the Covenant doing some real damage, but then I was like, oof, those Death Stars, if they have multiple, by the time real this war good. continues. Yeah. Or... Uh, 
Um... Fun fact, in the new What If, it's a quantum zombie virus. Wow, what are the odds of that? <laughs> like that's the super chat at the same time as I have read it. Yeah, it sounds great. Ugh. Oh, and UNSC FTL is impassively slower than hyperspace. It takes them literal centuries to get from one end of the Republic to the other. Okay. Um, old X-Men, new X-Men, then Wolverine trilogies when? Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that. Oh, that's a lot of movies. I, I mean, you only yeah. have to do them once, right? True. Uh, letting you know that The Matrix 4 released a teaser. Oh, yep. is, is that the, the newer, newer one? I think the full trailer is actually tomorrow. All right. Early Clone Wars Tomorrow's Republic might lose space battles. I mean, um, hmm. though the CIS and the Republic do tear each other apart in those space battles, but yeah, I'll comment on the competence of how they are run. The government has a, but the Covenant has a similar logistics issue to the UNSC: slower FTL, less so than the UNSC, but it would still take them decades to cross Republic space. Meanwhile, the Republic's a blitzing through their territory. Um, so we're saying that the Star Wars universe hyperdrive like outclasses the FTL. Flip space. Yeah. Which is quite a serious uh, use. That of, is a big one. Like that can obviously with information and uh, logistics and everything. Yep. I don't think we're gonna count TLJ as canon for this. Because <laughs> like, uh, uh, if we did, no, yeah. We can't. TLG changes everything. It just everything fucks everything up, yeah. It changes everything. Don't be proud of that, guys. fuckers. Good job, guys. Fringy Plus should be filled with his goo. Hi, Rex. Hello. <laughs> nah, none of that. That's yeah, my you'd have, you'd have to donate his goo to the factories that make the blushes. Exactly. I'm not doing that. Apparently they tried to get Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg to polish the script dialogue for the Doom movie, but they declined. <laughs> <laughs> but they declined. Dude, I don't know. I don't fucking know what it looks like to polish. I'm assuming they're talking about the 2003 one. I would imagine so. Polishing yeah. that. Ugh. Polish. Can I just? I polish. Can I just rewrite this whole thing? Yeah. Watch the clip off screen. Less than 30 seconds. I'm willing to believe you. You've gotten our reaction in full to to what the information you've provided us. I am disappointed that they would have. Fucking vision feed Wanda people. Are they dead people at least? Well, wait. Let me let me pull up this and see if I can find it. They said it was in the Discord. I don't know if. Uh... Oh, I mean, I can just pull up the episode. Uh... Let me take a look. Continue. I'll, very I'll... well. Very well. <laughs> Damn it! I combined impossibly with massively into a Frankenstein monster word, and Mola just read it completely deadpan. Did I say impossibly or massively? <laughs> I don't remember. I will try and see where is that one. I don't I don't see where you did that. Maybe it was earlier. I don't know. But uh interesting nonetheless. Uh hey Moller, I sent you and Rags a DM on Discord regarding editing for you guys. Would love to prove myself. Please give me a chance. It's, uh, it's not quite how I uh, engage with editors. I figure that if I was to be like, oh, all, all you have to do is send a super chat and a DM, and then I'd start getting lots of things, and I wouldn't know how to be fair about that sort of thing. Um, I have a system. I just don't tell people what it is. For instance, by the way, the reason I um, I gave Meme Repository a, a chance at editing like EFAP movies and stuff is because I just thought that he was... I uh, ticked all the boxes for what an editor would need to edit EFAP movies after seeing his um, his Boba Fett video. Because um, uh, you're gonna need a lot of knowledge and access to clips, you know. That's, that's one of the, the the things. But again, not probably not gonna do it that way. It just probably wouldn't work out. Um, thoughts on both Blade Runner movies? I like the first one. Love, and... love the first one. Yeah, second uh, one, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about the second it. one either. I watched it in the theater and I liked it, but that was a long time ago. Like when I remember I out, really and... liked it at first, but I don't know anymore. Yeah, I don't. 
Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't uh, being super critical. The Duel, yeah. the first one, I think it's quintessential movie of all time sort of thing. Everyone should check it out. Oh, Second yeah. one, I was already annoyed by it, and then Smiler explained to me how bad it is in terms of Blade Runner's universe, and I kind of hate it. Um, but I wouldn't be able to tell you why, because I'm not a hugely passionate Blade Runner person. I just well, remember... I mean, I... The big ones, which I'm sure he mentioned, is replicants live for a certain amount of time, and there is a long time between Blade Runner and 2049, and so it's like, oh, Deckard's a human then. Yeah, you've just confirmed that, which I don't think you should have ever confirmed that. Yeah, that was one of the things that was neat to keep ambiguous. Exactly. Yeah, people argue over that to this day. Or or his wife? Wasn't that one of the things where Rachel. we didn't know if, if Rachel was or not? Um, oh, no, she absolutely was. Okay, that's what I'm... Yeah, that's I, that's oh, probably um, what I'm thinking of in my head. Because I just haven't seen it that in That was so the whole long. idea, right? Is that she was um she was like a more advanced replicant who had been implanted with, uh, with memories. Mm-hmm. Um, from real people, but yeah, she's definitely one. Um, but she, she, she's not in it. Well, yeah. Blade Runner is basically just a vessel for Vangelis' music. It's more <laughs> than that, but goddamn is the music amazing. It is great music. Um, yeah. Also, uh, someone said, what if time code is 20 minutes to 22 minutes, somewhere around there. Okay. Oh, no. And All right. someone's already said that me, T'Challa, is very much alive when this happens, which I'm starting to wonder how they showed this, because I thought that there would be limits to what they can show. Hmm. Um, hello Massives, here's to another week of fapping. Have you heard of the Theorizer? Interesting channel, recommend a look. Also, hi, Ragu. Hey there. Not heard of him, no. No, I don't think so. Perhaps I shall in the future. Remember saying I like stories of street-level characters being thrown against cosmic-level threats, using Spidey and Batman as examples, but upon further thought, Spidey does it far better. Peter feels like he's in over his head. Batman, on the other hand, feels like he goes from... Struggling with Bane to Alfred fetch my god killing bat Gundam. Darkseid teabagged me in Fortnite. I mean, that's just a matter of their characters though, right? Like, Bruce is gonna be like, L you know, let's figure this problem out and solve it, while Peter's gonna be like, holy fuck, I'm in space. I like both characters uh, having to deal with it. What? Oh, dude. So, like, in this, they. Like, they go to, I don't know, Vision's, like, little home, and Bucky finds T'Challa there with one leg missing. And then when he pulls him out, he's like, I, Vision, come pick me up in San Francisco. I thought he was helping me, but he was just picking up takeout. Are you kidding me? They, like, Vision just abducts people and feeds them to water. Are you kidding me? He's been keeping him alive to feed his zombie bride. What? Okay, Man. they really understand the characters, huh? God. Though my actions unsavory were nevertheless born of logic. What? what? Oh, fuck off. So that's not true, and I don't believe you. A power- oh, this is great. So apparently he managed to cure, uh, Ant-Man, but he couldn't cure Wanda because her powers are too strong. They've resisted the treatment. What does that mean? I hate this idea that, like, that there's, like, ro things that run on, like, robotic logic, they can come evil easily. We don't have to explain, he's just, he's evil now, he feeds people to- but That's not- It's fine. That's not what- That's not how Vision works. It's, it's not. Vision's not. way more human than he is, like, a robot. Vision is a person, basically, yeah. You he gets I, emotional and shit. I cannot entirely fathom what I've done. Yes. <laughs> wow. I hate this so much. Lame. Speaking of evil Justice Leagues, Meme, I'm afraid he's not here, what are your thoughts on Owlman and his characterization in the animated film Crisis on Two Earths? Any, any chance you know what that is? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. Sorry, don't know about that one. Rags, when are you going to marry Pillow? When am I going to marry Pillow? 
Yeah, that's, that's what I'm they're not, wondering. Nah, it's a bachelor's life for me, man. Hmm. Not even I a just, pillow I just can don't... tame rags. Yeah, I just... I can't really make a case for marrying a pillow. Have you guys seen the new Wheel of Time teasers? If so, thoughts? If it's bad, I'll be the big sad. Well, I have if not you seen them. go back four hours or so, something like that, you'll hear uh, Shad gave a little bit of a review about it. And he's someone who's read mm -hmm. the book, so... But I have not seen it, no. Oh. Um, Rags, are you a Shiba or a Hiba? A, a Shiba or a Hiba? Oh, like a... Um, I guess I'm a... I mean, I am a Shiba, but I am a He, so... I don't know, whatever portmanteau of those things you want to construct for yourself, I'm... Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> easy going on it. And this has gotten Nort Australia. I don't know what to make of that. Nort Australia or no Australia? No, so K N A G H T. Nort Australia. K N A U G H T. No you. Oh, I I don't know what that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it means either. Indecipherable. Um, boop, boop, boop. believably big can still be hot. Preferable, some might say. That must be about asses. I don't know what else it could be. It's out of context. Super chats, you know? They're the best. Yep. Hashtag restore the Schumacher verse. Warner Brothers and cast Travolta as Lex Luthor, you cowards. I can agree with that, yeah. Let's do it. Um, how did you guys like the Snyder's Watchmen movie? I haven't seen it. I have seen it, and I remember liking it, but now I worry about it. I'm like, if I go back and watch it, is it going to be filled with Snyderisms, and I'll be like, ugh. I'm still kind of well, hoping maybe, it's the best yeah. one he's done. Um, do, 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 do. Mola, go on YouTube and search Charles Dance Reads Fifty Shades of Grey. It's great. Imagine reading anything would be great, but I'm not sure I want to listen to him read Fifty Shades of Grey, if I'm being completely honest with you. Then again, maybe it's like a meme, and he does some other fun stuff. I don't know. Um, it was the chat about the UNSC FTL, the one before I talked about a similar issue with Covenant FTL. You said impassably. Ah. It must have sounded like a word. Um, according to RLM, Marvel films action scenes separate from the other scenes with a different director and crew, meaning why action scenes feel so out of place. Not sure if it's true, though only RLM said it. I don't think that's how they've always done it. I um, know that they do pre-visualization on all of their films before, like, sometimes before they have a script, even. Yeah, like, I can believe the, the portal sequence and the big fight was probably one of the first things they decided on with Endgame. Yeah, they planned it in 2016. They already had that. Does not surprise me. Oh, by the way, you might find this interesting, Mola. Apparently, in this episode of What If, Uncle Ben is just flat out referenced by name, vocally. I mean, that's fine. He does exist in that yeah. world. It's just interesting, isn't it? <laughs> that it's like, that's the... that's. That's the first time, yeah. and, and what if? Um, yeah, I don't know how long they've been doing it for, but I think now they have like settled into a formula where the action scenes are all done separately. Um, it's gonna make the movies way more formulaic. Mm-hmm. Which is a shame because um, that's the thing about. The interesting thing about industry, like, Iron Man was almost cobbled together, and it's still one of the favorite MCU movies of all time. And it's like, all of it was kind of well, new, yeah. and experimental, and lots of things went wrong. And now but you've got now everything locked down, like. secure and understood, and scheduled, and now it's just like soulless. Which yeah, honestly seems like exactly the life cycle like. for a lot of artistic stuff. Yeah. Even YouTube, like, it applies to everything. 
like YouTubers will get better and better and better, and then they'll stop. The, the, they've lost like the whole fucking reason they did anything in the first place, and they don't remember, and then they get really burnt out. Um, I thought 2049 confirmed he was a replicant because they want his DNA to impreg the other replicants. If he was human, they wouldn't need Deckard. I don't know. Oh, well, in that case, that's the other problem, then. You've still confirmed one way or the other. I'm not even sure that that is consistent, because, again, I'm pretty sure replicants don't age. They live for, like, four years, and that's it. Unless he's a new one of the new ones. Yeah. Mm. I don't know, I need to rewatch it. I need to rewatch both of them, really. Um, the prestige inciting incident has a problem. The knot was intact, and Hugh Jackman should at least regret destroying it, as it would answer which knot was <laughs> used. So the thing with that... the thing with that is, um, Cutter leaves pretty quickly, presumably to get like a coroner, doctor, whatever. And Hugh Jackman is just completely focused on the fact that she may or may not be alive. I doubt he's thinking about which knot was tied at that point. And so all it takes is for someone to untie that knot, and then he can't know what the knot was. To say that, like, when, when someone's dying in front of you, that you're beloved sort of thing, and you'd be like, you should be thinking about the knot. It's like, ah, I don't know about that. Um, it's something that could easily have come up once everything had calmed back down, because he can think about why she would have died, and it's because she couldn't undo the knot, and then what knot was it? Um, I think there's a one of three, so I'll wait until the other two come through, and then we can read it all together. Somehow I missed the fact that you guys weren't fans of Endgame. With how much at least Mauler liked Infinity War briefly, what were the big flaws? Oh my god. <laughs> Man, time travel, the time heist. We're going to need all... time travel to explain all the problems. Yeah, there's not enough time well, to explain. So, yeah. so the weird thing is there's a whole EFAB episode on this when they came out, because that's how long we've been going now. We can finally do that. We can just refer back to when we, the film was released. Um, yeah. The thing is, that, I think we concluded it was like a three or four. I think three. And nowadays, Maybe. it is not going to be getting I'm a three. At a two. Yeah. I mean, I, to be honest with you, it could go as far down could as be one. one. Yeah. It does break time and space. And That's the characters true. get kind of annihilated. Yep. Pretty much all of them do, except for Black Widow. And even then. Thanks, <laughs> they, Black they Widow. They save that movie. for later. I was yeah, gonna say, exactly. Doesn't, Black Widow still counts, because uh, oh, she yeah, would have signed off. Along with, yeah, yeah, that's right. Dude, that is such a great example of the plot. Just It just fucks every one of them over. Yep. Um, but yeah, so that stream will answer most of your questions in depth. Um, there's a few bonus ones of they shouldn't be engaging with this plan without coordinating with governments and taking a long time to prepare. Should they even bother? Shouldn't they just be reacting to go back? And if you're like, well, what about all the people that'll die that have arrived? It's like, I mean, we're dealing with crazy magic stones. How about we just have them too? Yeah. Rewind time and bring them back with us. You know what? <laughs> I don't know how far we can go with this, but hey, rewind time, bring them back, also refresh all of... Earth's resources and maybe give us a whole bunch more. I don't know. Yeah. What? Like, why not, right? I don't know. Well, you might as well. You've got him. Um. Do, do the Australian army versus emus. Well, we have one example where the Australian army lost, but, you know, one isn't a trend. True. And we got more better technology now, right? Exactly. Then what have the, the emus got? Gone. Better technology. <laughs> I I'm not sure that we would we can say what they have. Honestly, it's a cause for concern. But mm -hmm. you know, who would win? A crazy dude with a Superman complex dosed up on morphine, or a grizzly bear dressed up as a clown? Both are surrounded by bananas. Huh. <sighs> So a crazy guy on morphine who believes himself to be Superman versus a grizzly bear <laughs> dressed as a clown. I don't know why <laughs> the bear being dressed as a clown changes anything. I guess, it, does it make the guy feel more like in, in control? It's like, look at you stupid clown bear. He's bolder. <laughs> yeah, he's bolder. And both being surrounded by bananas, I'm not sure if that helps either of them. I don't know. Banana? 
I'm guessing you guys have already sailed that the, the bear would win. Go. Uh, probably, yeah. I feel like the bear's hey, won. He'll, he'll put up a valiant fight. Yeah, I'm sure the morphine yeah. guy's gonna go nuts. He's gonna be like, blah, blah, blah. But it's not gonna <laughs> help him. Um... The Rick and Morty is crap now. I mean... Yeah. 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 My issue with Batman vs. Cosmic stories is that they often make him seem retroactively stupid in his normal stories. Like, how is organized crime still a thing in Gotham when he can make stuff like the Hell Bat suit, essentially the Iron Man suit, but made to fight Kryptonians? Meanwhile, Peter always feels like he solves these cosmic issues by the absolute skin of his teeth, so going... So him going back to Kingpin feels like him returning to his element. Hmm. Um, that is, there, so the thing about, the, the way they try and balance this stuff, at least the way I find it in, with Batman or Spider-Man, is when you have the bonus big metal suits, they'll try and argue it's like they're better defenses, but not better for agility. And so, like, there's a reason that they wouldn't want to use them against street-level people. Um, and you don't want to, like, annihilate street-level criminals. Meanwhile, you might need to annihilate, I don't know, an alien ship or something. I, I get what you mean. Like, these bigger events force Bruce to make something that can deal with these bigger events. It's like, fucking hell, mate. What did you have down your sleeve this whole time? Um, so I can kind of understand that. Mm-hmm. Sure, that could have happened, but he should have beat himself up as a minor plot point. Either Danton or Cutter or both, leaving out annoying at best. I can understand why you'd want, like, a throwaway line or whatever. Um, but of course, I think his anger for the potential of not having noticed the, the knot himself is going to be overflown by... He's almost certain that the not wrong knot was tied because he won't tell him what knot it was. That last one was part three, by the way. I got it. I got it. Um... Alright. What a rather really angry cupboard door versus 17 playing cards that have mastered algebra. And they require your opinion, Fringy. Wait, what's that? A really angry cupboard door versus 17 playing cards that have mastered algebra. Uh, the playing, so the playing cards are alive then. I guess so? Um, I mean I feel like it will be tough for the cupboard to destroy the playing cards because they can go flat, whereas all they need to do is get some petrol and throw it on the, uh... and throw it on, you know, the, the cupboard and then set it on fire. If it's an angry cupboard door, that means it's alive too, right? Uh, yeah, no it is, but but I guess I'm saying the means that it has to kill the the playing cards feels lower than those of the cards themselves. And if it's alive, does it- can it grab things? How would it grab things? Whereas I can see the cards kind of like bending to pick things up, you know? Yeah, and, in, in like an, and, and like ants, they can work together to- Exactly, exactly. 17 of them. That ain't a small number. What do you reckon, Rags? Hmm. So here's the thing. Someone sent me this picture of a shirt, and I've kind of been smiling at it, and it stole my attention away. Oh, don't worry. I can repeat it. It's a really, really good go, one. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So I'll do, you know, I'll take it nice and slow. So a really angry cupboard door versus 17 playing cards that have mastered algebra. You know, I think this is a draw, because neither of them have the ability to really do anything to the other. So if you're a playing card and you've mastered algebra, it's not really much, it's not very going to be very applicable here. Especially considering that you're playing cards. You can't really manifest that knowledge into anything, you know, useful against the cupboard. Hmm. Uh, and the cupboard is just a cupboard. It just sits there because it's a fucking cupboard. So I think there's, I think, I think we're at a draw. So Rags is concluding, unlike Fringy, that nothing's going to happen here because they just can't do fuck all anyway. Like, they're just going to be sitting there. Fringy's concluding that the cards would win because if both things were alive, he sees more viability in the cards to be able to move and manipulate the world. Because they can bend. 
What do you think about that, Rex? I mean, uh, could, can these things move? Well, so that's the thing. When I confirmed they were alive because they feel emotions, <laughs> I don't know if that's a stretch. Are we gonna have a? Are we gonna have a horrific "I have no mouth and I must scream" situation I, uh, where they're like sentient but they can't see, like do anything? Fringy opened this door up because by saying like they can go grab petrol and pour it on the cupboard door and light it on fire, it's like I don't know if they're gonna be dealing with that versus like holy fuck, I'm a playing card. Yes, I know algebra, but that's a very specific piece of information that I know. But like, what else do I know? Oh, that reminds me of a joke I used to tell when I was in Boy Scouts. Um, so, um. A baker put a tray of muffins into an oven. Okay. And closed the door. Mm -hmm. One of the muffins says, Oh my god, dude, we're gonna die in here. And then one of the other muffins says, Oh my god, a talking muffin! <laughs> I like it. Thank you, I like it too. You wanna hear another joke? Do it. Okay. Um, Go for it. What are, what's the, what's the only exercise a lazy person can do? Rolling over. <laughs> I don't know what, diddly, what is what is it? Diddly squats. Oh. oh. Ew. Do you know um? It's the diddly squat farm is what um, Jeremy Clarkson's farm is called. And uh, you know, there's the Wolf of Wall Street is obviously the film name, and the, the like. Uh, uh, I think that's what the guy was known as, right, or something like that. Like a moniker. Like the guy who... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was what he was known by. So, um, apparently Jeremy, like, drove his tractor through an area at some point relatively recently, and he destroyed someone's thing by accident, and he said, like, all of it sort of progressed when he wasn't awake, so he couldn't, like, solve it on the spot. And apparently he's gained the reputation of... I don't know what the local area is called, but now he's got, like, the wolf of that area is what they call him now. Ah... Um, <laughs> That's kind of funny. The thing is, I could see a lot of reasons for hating him um, as a result of what he's doing, because like, got like all the Amazon team are there. He's like such a big attraction. It's probably taking business away from other local people, but at the same time, attracting people to the area. I guess maybe definitely disturbing the natural order. Because I don't know if you guys knew, but he did. Um, he put like an announcement on Twitter or something to go and enter his little shop, and like. He didn't really have much to sell because not only for legal reasons but because the farm wasn't like doing amazing at that point and it was just like potatoes just loads of potatoes he was he was not short on potatoes at the point and so <laughs> he announced to come to his like farm and it's like a huge queue that ends up because obviously people will be like fucking jeremy clarkson's farm i'll go there yeah and um i think they were pissed at him for that as well jeremy clarkson's farm the semi-regular must have sponsored efap because i mentioned it a whole bunch <laughs> Um, Joe Rogan versus 30 12 year olds. Volcano? Sorry? Joe Rogan versus the volcano? I feel like Joe Rogan wins that, right? I think so. Yeah, I, I, I think securely he does. Mm hmm. But what about the 30 12 year olds? Oh, he'd fuck up 30 12 year olds. Yeah, so th the thing about that one is like. If they don't have the mind to cooperate, and they definitely don't have weapons, I feel like Joe Rogan is really gonna fuck him up. Even if they did cooperate, he's Joe Rogan. I feel like he'd just fuck up 12-year-olds. And plus, once he rips the spine out of the first two, the rest are like, the holy morale, fuck, yeah. I, ain't do I ain't doing this. Yeah, the morale goes fucking plummets. Yeah, that's the thing. Right, and especially because they're kids, and they're just, uh, they're not ready to... They just, they can't handle that. And once he stomps one of them into dust, like, just with one stomp, just yeah. like, alright, that's enough, we're done. After he scars the first two, the others will be scarred mentally. Man, when you win as the, um, Toadette, she says I'm the best. It's like, the vanity is getting to this little girl a lot faster than, uh... I mean, it's a team! It. It's Exa a team exactly, Toad, Toad did the whip, yeah, too. Yeah, we're the best, come on. Exactly. Kinda of fucked up, Toadette. Guess which breed of dog's DNA are closest to wolves? Ah, oh, it's gonna be- I bet you it's gonna be a surprise. 
Well, the problem is they don't have the answer in the super chat, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I... Corgis. Oh, husky? Yeah, um... I don't know the answer to that one. I want to say as an adult, uh, I would be mentally scarred watching Joe Rogan rip apart 12-year-olds. <laughs> rip apart their spines, specifically. I heard it's Shih Tzu's? Maybe. Huh. Yeah, two people have said Shih Tzu. Hmm. I find the idea of thinking bug to be offensive. Um, oh shit, that's a reference to good old Starship Troopers. My brain may be slowing down, but I still got it. The scope of conversations this podcast has covered is astounding. I agree. Uh, what do you think the odds are of the Batman being better than the Dark Knight? Dark Knight Rises and BVS, respectively. Uh, hi. Pretty hi. High. Yeah. Taking away all elements of risk and danger, would you rather explore the solar system or the deep sea of planet Earth? Probably the solar say system. One more solar system. Say yeah, say that one more time. Taking away all risks and dangers, would you rather explore the solar system or the deep sea of planet Earth? Solar system. I think that would do far more good for mankind if absolutely. We could the uh, solar system what about erasing that element? I was actually going to say that the ore oh, for curiosity? me is probably going to be um, further satisfied by the solar system than the deep sea. I think so. I think so too. Mm. I want to see Saturn. I want to be flying past Saturn and looking at it. Yeah, I, I think wanna, I want to go to Jupiter and look at it. Yeah, orbiting these planets. Yeah, and the moons too. Don't forget, there's a lot to see out there in the solar system alone. Yeah, when you're opening all that. Um, hmm. um. Hey, Mola, any chance of playing the campaign of the Halo games with Rags and Fringy for EFAB Gaming? We do kind of plan to do that at some point. Yeah. It will happen. Also, Rags and Fringy, what are your opinions on the Brutes in Halo 3 in regards to their gameplay and weapons? Not as good as the uh, Elites. But pretty good in Halo 3. The Brutes? Um, yeah. I don't know which I like fighting more. Um... I'm fine fighting either in terms of like the gameplay element. Right. But I, guess I definitely I don't really prefer have the Covenant. A uh, not the Covenant, the Elites. Because you have the. Because the Brutes. So the Brutes have the advantage of being in the later games as enemies where you can. Um, where, where they kind of start to expand on the gameplay elements in terms of the different kinds. Well, that's um, what he's talking about. He's talking about Halo points. 3 Brutes. That's where they had jetpacks and there were different types. Yeah, versus like just fighting elites in general, or...? Well, I would have to assume that we're talking about like the best of the elites, probably. You know, like in Halo Reach, the elites are really cool. Yeah. Lots of variety. I still I still think I'd rather fight brutes. I don't know, there's something about them that I just think, I don't know, just appeals to me more. In terms of I, what they do and how they behave, and yeah, I think I will. Yes, Kyle, I did. I just prefer elites, um, but I'm not sure that I could super qualify it. Fair enough. Um, also, Rags and Fringy, what are you? Oh wait, sorry, I read that. Uh, don't worry, the twelve-year-olds were orphans. They were too weak and unloved to be of value to society, so Joe Rogan's simply doing his civic duty. Oh, okay. Hmm. Do the playing cards know they've mastered algebra? Um, I kind of took that for granted that yes, they, they were aware of... If they're alive and they know algebra, I feel like they'd be aware of that. I like just that qualifier. Hey, look, they're good at algebra, okay? <laughs> it could, it could <laughs> be helpful. <laughs> At some Maybe. point, I yeah. just, yeah, I don't know. Against the cupboard, the guess... angry cupboard door. Which, by the way, the cupboard door, if it can move enough, it might be able to really hurt the cards by slamming and, and trying to dig into them, maybe. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe the cards would bleed out if it can pierce them. 17. Yeah, there's a lot of them, that's true. 
And if, if enough of them get that petrol can, it might be over for that cupboard. Hey gang, thoughts on Night of the Museum films? I love the first one, think the second one's fine, and the third one was a lot down, a let down. I think I've only seen the I, first um, one, and I thought it was fine. Yeah, I like the first one. I think I saw the... I can't I can't really remember the other ones. Bring you've seen Night of the Museum? Um, nightmare. Oh, wait, he's muted, hang on. Night of the Museum? Yeah, he's a nightmare. That sounds like the horror um, version. Um, I... Didn't they have? Didn't that have Robin Williams' last speaking lines in a film? Poss really? Because I think he did like some weird animated film as his last credit. I don't know if timing-wise, it maybe it turned out to be Nightmare. Night fucking hell, Night of the Museum. So, um, let's see, filming. So it was weird. So he was filming Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. Uh, and filming was wrapped up three months before he died. Um, let me see. His last movie was the the, cra the the CBS sitcom The Crazy Ones, and Not at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. So I don't know what his last one was. Mm -hmm. I could probably take a look. But apparently, it, he was really, he really wasn't quite all there when he was filming these and making these. It was, it was forgetting lines and fumbling words and just not quite all there. Yeah. Someone I wish was still around. Yeah, absolutely. What an in insanely talented person. Joe Rogan, after gaining power from devouring those orphan souls versus Shrek the Apex Orphan, who wins, EFAP? Joe Rogan versus Shrek, and they're both powered up. Shrek. I think Shrek. If you power. So Shrek, at his normal power level, already a force to be reckoned with, but a powered up Shrek? Oh, you know what? Man. I think I might have just invented that. I think they specified it. It's just, it's just normal Shrek, but powered up Joe Rogan. Hmm, powered up Joe Rogan, probably. Stands a good chance then. What are we thinking, Ranks? I don't know if I could vote against Shrek. So that you know. So is that a bias um, then? You're not being very scientific. I mean, I'm biased to the truth. <laughs> it's just a universal truth that no one could defeat Shrek in battle. Yeah, Shrek and Shaggy. They're yeah, pretty. top tier. Oh, man. Lucky no one super chatted the fight against them because it's not something we have to answer. But, um, yeah, I guess Shrek wins. Joe puts up a good fight, I will say that. Yeah, he does. I think this happened because Shrek came on the podcast, and I think Joe was saying, like, swamps shouldn't just become something that you can keep people out of. It should be, like, a public fun event and stuff, so Shrek got very upset. Um, would you rather fight 50 ducks or one horse-sized penis? Um, fifty ducks or a horse? Cause, well, penis would just like lay there and flop around, maybe. But <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't I feel guess. guilty killing the penis, I guess. But, but I, I guess that's the question. The how ducks. does one? How does one? Kill you wouldn't the penis, feel guilty no. killing the ducks? No, I would. I would. That's. The I'd thing. feel very guilty about the ducks. Yeah, yeah. that's why yeah, I'm, aim would, yeah. I'm aiming for the penis. Yeah. Yeah, I'm aiming for the my... penis. I think it would. But just, how, yeah. how exactly does one incapacitate? How do, how do you how do you kill one? You know. How do you kill a penis? Yeah. Horrible graphic ways that I want to yeah, describe. Yeah, yeah. I figure there's gonna be ways. Make it. Bleed. I guess my question is like, where is its brain and what? Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's in there. It's in there somewhere. Down. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I assume it's in the head. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I guess. Joe Rogan sized chimp versus ten chimp sized Joe Rogans. <laughs> 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 uh, the ten chimp sized Joe Rogans are probably going to outsmart the one chimp, right? But probably. then again, is the outsmarting going to be enough in an environment where there's just no weaponry? I How feel like the 10 v one thing there, uh, it's just, I don't think, yeah, I, I think that chimps are already, yeah, I think the ten chimp sized Joe Rogans would beat the Joe Rogan sized chimp. 
They just keep punching it until it just succumbs they to just the fuck, damage. There's, yeah, there's ten of them. The tough one, it's, yeah. Just, they got too much strength between them all. I'm not... Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, Who would win in a fight between Shrek and Shaggy? There it is. I think they would do the anime thing where they each punch each other and then an explosion happens. Yeah, it's and it's like this two. bright blue sphere and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And like all devices that are capable of recording or viewing this event are destroyed and thus we don't know the answer. <laughs> Forever a secret. Hmm. Yeah, that's all I can imagine that would happen. I'll have to ask people who are better equipped to answer these sorts of things. This is why if we ever do like a tournament of, you know, different characters fighting, you can't have Shaggy or Shrek, it kind of ruins it. Again, the lore, Shrek equals Rose equals Apex Orphan. I mean, being an Apex anything doesn't make you a good person, you know? Yeah, it just makes you the... You know, like, what do you mean by Apex person? <laughs> now, I would argue that in order to be an Apex person, you need to be a good person. That's the high. I feel like of, excellent you know, at killing other persons. And that's why then, you're an Apex that, person. That just means you're an Apex killer. Oh, I, I meant you were just Apex, and then person relates to just, I don't know, what you are. Like, like, I think a person is is not so much what you are, it's who you are. I don't think you lose personhood by being a bad person, though. Well, no. In, in the sense of what to be an apex, like the height of what a person could be, and I think that is best exemplified by the goodness that people are capable of. So an apex person would be a very good person is one of their traits. But what if you're just referring to an apex of that group and then person is what you are. An apex, in this case, referring to humans. What? It's, it's complicated. It's very scientific. There's algebra involved. I don't know if you've got your playing cards. No, they're working on their algebra. No. Oh. Um, the monkeys the are trying to... Is, what? The only podcast that does callbacks like that. It's brilliant. They yes. were great. We have set up some payoffs. That's yeah, that's why people stick around. The monkeys are trying to steal Joe's brownies. I guess this is the justification for why the fight happens. Like weed brownies? He does he inject uh, drug drugulars into the the brownies, and so he's very upset. Maybe. I I I I think that's the most reasonable thing to infer from that. Yeah. Huh. Have you seen the animated Mortal Kombat movies? They're bad. I, uh, no. No, I have not seen the animated ones. No. Ooh. I can believe they're bad. Because the two live-action ones are bad. Yeah, but they're wonderful yeah, as well. Yeah, that one too. Yeah, they were entertaining to different degrees and in different ways. They definitely sort of fell on both sides of the spectrum. Um, who wins? Rags versus Scooby-Doo. That's Rags. Oh, me. Definitely the fight starts, me. and Scoob goes like, you know, woof or whatever, and then many bullets begin to perforate Scooby-Doo. Now, <laughs> Scooby-Doo, pretty great. I mean, he's he's not an Apex Dane, but he is a great Dane. He's getting there. Yeah. I figure that was worth throwing out there and just seeing where that lies. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Just carry that along. Rag, say Xi Jinping is glorious leader. Hail to the CCP or Taiwan will be invaded tomorrow. Uh, uh Xi Jinping is glorious leader. Um, how hail. They didn't what, ask what you to it? do it in a voice. Yeah, wow, <laughs> Rags, what's I, that everything, about? Everything I do is in a voice. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> On a serious note, I just realized the Becoming Huge meme factories had exact opposite effects on both Shrek and the prequels. Becoming Huge meme factories had the exact opposite effects on them. Do you mean because what? people think the prequels are good as a result of the meme image, while people think Shrek is probably bad because of the results when? of the meme? It should be the opposite way around. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the Shrek movie, as everyone regularly talks about, is like it's actually kind of good. It's great. Um, 
The memes convinced many that the prequels were actually masterpieces, whereas Shrek memes got people thinking that Shrek was actually bad all along. Both untrue statements. Yeah, that's... yeah. Terrible. What a fate. Can you imagine it? No, I can't. Uh, I feel like Hassan could lose a game of Connect 4 even if you let him have the first four moves. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Nuking Kali means losing me. Is it really worth it? Also, I'd like to live, please. Oh, this is when we're talking about which place we're going to nuke. Yeah, I remember that. But that means, by that logic, I lose Fringy if I nuke it. Australia, and I lose... Well, I wouldn't lose Rags if I nuke California, but I mean, the Fallout might fuck him up in some way if he gets over there. I guess I gotta go for China. Uh, they hold him down and yell ding, 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 until he starts talking about BVS again. That's the Jesse... Eisenberg thing we said he'd be in a yeah. convention. Also, hi, Rex. Hello. Mola, be careful not to fall asleep when watching Shang-Chi. I'll do my best. Um, when I think of Australians, I think of internet historians Steve Irwin and Fringy. If you could wipe my memory and replace one of those persons for someone living or dead, who would it be? For, Why? for just a random person? I don't know why. Why would I be invested in doing that? I don't. I'm fine with you remembering yeah. those three. Like that's fine. In fact, they're a good. They're a good three Australians to remember. You know, I. That's fine with me. I wouldn't change it. That's my answer. Sassy Justice is Matt and Trey messing around with deep fakes. I think you guys will get a kick out of it. Have you heard of that, Fringy? The since it's Matt what, and Trey. Sorry? Matt and uh, so Matt Stone and Trey Parker apparently did something called Sassy Justice where they did deep fakes. I, I have not heard of that. No. I, in fact, I. I think I remember you asking this question last time around. Oh yeah, the, this is a follow up to when they asked and they're giving us a bit more context. But I still oh, don't yeah, know okay. what that is. Yeah, no, I, I haven't heard of it. Uh, Legion arc. So Legion's a new newish TV show, right? Or at least it's a TV show with like. A season uh, or two? Yeah. I think it's got a couple of seasons. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't say, uh. I wouldn't say it's an impossibility. Who knows? Bing, ba -ding, bing. Do, do, do. Also, we've, we've caught up with EFAB 151's super chats. Hey! There you go, that's finished off. Mm -hmm. That's progress. Um. A critique of The Force Awakens, Mauler cut 180 hours. It wouldn't be that quick. If it was a true Mauler cut. You know, if um, that's a question, what if you could have access to any cutting room, like the entirety of the shots from any one film, to make your own cut of? What would it be? Hmm. I'm not sure. What about, what about Solo? Maybe? That would be one, yeah. Because they made like two fucking movies, <laughs> so. That's up there. I don't know what other ones though. Um, probably something where there's, I just need a lot of different material. I need options to order up. Um, yeah, um, I'll go with Solo. I feel like Solo is a fun Solo, choice. I'll go Solo, because I can't think of one. Jay's suggesting Rogue One, which, yeah, you could probably make a interesting mm -hmm. movie potentially out of that. Justice League, I think we should just let that die, if I have a choice nah, out of it. that's got enough chances. Um, The Hobbit movies, possibly, yeah. Especially if you have the chance to be able to re-edit the trilogy down to whatever you want. Hmm... And then there's the, the opportunity, of course, to tweak, like, great movies into ones that you think you could just, just nudge them into to perfection land, I don't know. Not so great debate remake. I think that's referring to, uh, old Mr. Colin Sanders who came on. But no, no. But it, it was, wasn't. No, it, it wasn't. wasn't no. at all. Hi, Mullen Rags. Hello. Hello. Happy 150, read Berserk yet? 
With great art and characters, even though you don't cover manga, this series is still worth reading. Um, I've not read it, but I've just only heard great things about it. Um, obviously it sucks that that series won't be finished by the original creator now. But, um, I imagine it's still a pretty good journey as it currently is. Hello, Mola. This is my first Super Chat. I've currently watched all of EFAP three times. Damn. Um, the first two sets of... So, episodes 1 through 100 took me three months at two times speed. 150 took five months at three times speed. Yeah, the episodes have gotten longer. <laughs> and there's been more catch-ups. <laughs> Raise the dawn and get rags and ER to talk Atla. Oh, no. Eeyah's not around. Someone's got to summon him with, like, demon blood or whatever, because I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Everyone wants more videos from him, as do I. Yeah. Um, boo -boo -boo -boo. Rags versus one rag-sized rags, but rags is wearing only rags. I think rags Man. might have it. Yeah, I would put my money on rags. I'm thinking so. I'm thinking so. Gosh, such an easy one. It was kind of an easy one, yeah. Um, rank the Shrek films, EFAP. So, I don't Wait, think you I... said rank? Yeah, I haven't seen Shrek 4, so I can't... That's... I haven't seen that either. Oh, so, 2, 1, 3? Probably. Without rewatching them. Yeah, I'd have to rewatch them, but I think it's... I think I'm gonna go with 2, 1, 3. Casually off the top of my head and based completely from memory, I don't even think I've seen the fourth. I think I, I think I'd go with two and three. Yeah, very close between two and one though. Um. This one just says "Angry Super Chat 4. Very well. Oh boy! Happy 150th! Here's my first ever super chat just for y'all. Also, hi rags. Hello. Thank you very much. Vote Republican. Jim is such an insufferable dumbass. There isn't a Republican in history that's more smooth-brained that doesn't use the Jim Sterling. <laughs> what is... <laughs> it's kind of incomprehensible. <laughs> Very well. Uh, Zuma here. What the fuck is a pog? Also, hi, Rags. Hello. A pog is a state of mind. Yes. That's a fun sort of statement. What is a pog? I'm a Zuma. <laughs> what is a pog? Oh, what happened? I wonder what happens in Google if I type that. What is a pog? Um. What'd you get? The fast. Yeah, because it shows up. A cardboard or plastic disc printed with a design or picture, collected or swapped by children, are used in games. Oh, there you so go. like little discs, I suppose. Um, but I remember some of these, like the Pokemon ones. Well, yeah, I was gonna um, say, pogs haven't been taken over yet by poggers. Yeah, um... Uh, sorry, uh... <laughs> ooh, I'm sorry, I have no idea where this is coming I from. I feel uh, the same way, Rex. Which yeah. is strange, because I'm not, like, actually sleepy. That's It's just bizarre that I did that, you know? Um, but, yeah, of course, pog comes from pog, urban dictionary, play of the game. Uh, someone who does the play of the game is a pogger. Or a pogger. Um... There's an article here on military.com, the fascinating beginning of the term pog. So, who knows? But yeah, I guess you could find out fairly easily if you were a zoomer and you had access to Google what you know what a pog kind of was. But pog is good. You want pog, and you want to be a pogger, I assume. Yeah, or a pog champ. Pogs. Yeah, something like that. If not a pog champ, at least a pog is. An apex pogger. Rags versus six beers. Hi, Rags. Hello. I mean, that's a, that's a close one. I don't know if the six beers would beat you, but if this is something of a... Like, who would last over a week or something, it's like, you win, I guess. Oh, we'd all... We, I think we'd all last a, a, a week. As long as you had water, you, you'd, you'd all last, we'd all last weeks. I mean, I mean, I don't know if water's gonna help the beer last. I don't know the if that'll. Beer? I'm assuming you have no idea what I said. 
I'm, I must have I'm, I must have brain farted there. What was that? It was uh, rags versus six beers. Oh, fuck. That's and I said, uh, you know, so if you can do this fight over a week, I think you beat them. Um, yeah, I don't know where my brain just took off of this. Another Biden moment probably, for rags. I think I could probably, I could drink six beers. I drank a lot of beers one time. And I was pretty, I was pretty happy with myself. I was happy with a lot of things after that, but I think I could probably do it. I think I could drink six beers if I really had to. Someone slammed those things in front of me and said, six, go. I'll give you a hundred dollars or whatever. You can do it. I think I could manage six beers, but man, oh, I would be, what an adventure that would be. be. Yeah, I was about to say, it's adventure. Have you ever been a uh, blackout drunk, Ranks? No. Hmm. Have you, Fringy? No, I've, I've been drunk yeah. twice, and you both witnessed one of those times. Wow. We've lived different lives. I've been blackout drunk like three times. Wow, fuck me. For me, it's only once. It's so I've weird because you just that much. wake up and uh, you have n no memory of like a half the night, and you're just like, I hope I didn't do anything stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. It's not... It's not... not, not fun. Yeah, like, I'd be interested to know how that works. I don't know if it's like part of your brain is shutting down because of whatever reason, or if the alcohol is, like, killing the re newly created memory cells. I have no fucking clue. I'm just speculating. I'm sure that there is an explanation that is known. Uh, oh, Blackout is when cool. you don't remember anything. Yeah. That's the thing. If Rags gets super drunk on five beers, I feel like ten might even do the blackout drunk for him. Probably. Blackout is when you don't remember the shit I, you did. Um, that's how I've always associated it. I thought it was I just dancing. Yeah, that's right. It, well, yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's the actual one or not. That's what I've always known it to pretty be. Pretty sure it is. That's say what does Google say? It depends what kind of like if it's just six beers. Like I've uh, like I know I know when I went to um uh to to Kima actually with Top Hats when on his last meetup here before COVID stuff. I drank a lot. Um. I probably, I must have had, I don't, I, they might have been pint glasses, let me see, uh, how big is it, images, right, image will help me, um, yeah, I probably had at least four pints of just the blue moon, um, I had a bunch, the, that's, it's been the most I've ever drank drunk at one period of time um i didn't drink that much on our stream but it was like whiskey it was liquor uh so that's tough mm, that took me to places so uh and in this one when i drank the beer it was much more of a drawn out sort of thing and i felt a lot more i guess uh present so like i remember buying shish kebabs when I was walking back to the hotel with some of the other guys, and I was, um, and, and we got some, like, tacos from a street vendor, and they were really good, and I brought them back to the hotel room, and, you know, but I, I was definitely, I, I did throw up later, but I was definitely more present than I was on the stream. I was just in a different world. I, like I said, I, I wandered around, I didn't know where I was, I laid down in the bed naked and cried for Boromir. Mm -hmm. Like, I was just... <laughs> it was magical. So, according to the American Addiction Centers, um, basically, it is gaps in a person's memory for events that occurred while they were intoxicated. And apparently the reason why it happens is because when you drink a lot of alcohol it leads to an impairment in the way that your brain transfers memories from short to long-term memory that's the explanation but there are different types apparently there's fragmentary blackouts known as a gray out or a brown out where you have gaps in your memory oh, no. provide combined with some recollection of, of events but uh, a total blackout means no recollection because the memories of what happened never form, and if they do, you can't access them. Um, so a person can progress from blacking out to passing out, losing consciousness. Um, 
Uh, but and apparently over fifty percent of people will experience a blackout due to alcohol in their lifetime. I mean, it's super easy, right? You just you're drinking and then you drink more and then suddenly, uh -oh. yeah, exactly. Oh no, not a brown out. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but well, I it's also called a gray out. Don't worry. Actual rags versus mimetic rags. Mimetic rags? I feel like actual rags, he's gonna have all the guns. Uh, Muller, I discovered this oh, weekend- I, I have- I have a lot of guns. Yes, yes you do. Muller, I discovered this week I am 7% Welsh. Is that enough to get a claim for the perfection that is the Welsh flag? Also high rags. Well, whichever the dominant part of you is, that's probably the flag for you, but, uh, you know, there's a little bit of Welsh flag in everybody, that's what I think. Have you guys ever thought about doing one of those tests to find that out, that information? Well, like, how much of everything I am? Yeah. I don't care that no. much, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, I just don't really, I'm not really concerned at all, I don't really... I guess I'm not all that interested. I, I find the idea interesting, but not so interesting that I've ever actually paid to get it done. So clearly I'm not that invested. But I think it would be interesting. I think it's just the idea of I'm pretty sure I know, like, where it traces yeah. back to, but I'd be curious to see. Our family's kept track of it fairly well, generation mm -hmm. to generation stuff. Like, we got PDFs and things, of names and stuff. And, I mean, it, it's good enough for me, you know, like, I, I'm not like, oh, I, I really need to know if this is sure 100%. It's like, nah, I'm pretty confident it's true, and it all seems to line up, and I just, I don't, I guess I just don't have that much interest in knowing for certain, and like, what would it change? You know, like, what, how much value would I give to, uh, you know, the revelation that all that wasn't really true, in a sense? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. One rag-sized tangerine, or ten tangerine-sized rags? Well, I think, I think ten of us, I mean, because I like tangerines. Yeah, you'll chew we it apart. And, a, yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd fuck up a tangerine. What we, what we didn't consume, we would just, I mean, by then it would be dead. I, it would wish it was dead. The only concern is if it rolls and crushes you guys. I don't think yeah. it's that heavy. It's not heavy enough well. to... True. And plus, it's True. round, so if it hits us, it'll just roll, it'll just go to the side. True, yeah, it wouldn't crush you, it would have to be pushed to do that. Even if you pushed it, at, like, on me, I think it would just sort of, like, go to the side, it wouldn't go over me. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. You'd have Sorry. to really try and, like, really try and balance it to where it would roll over. And then I'd be like, and, and I would have to be shockingly, like, cooperative with that the entire time. <laughs> cooperative with it crushing you. I mean, no, this is fine. Rags versus Mr. Biggles? I mean, Who's Mr. Biggles? It's a is cat, he like, Mr. So Jangles? I think if it's a cat, you win. Oh, I, I think, yeah, if it's all kinds of, like a tangerine. If Mr. Biggles was a tangerine, he'd be hooked up. Um... So appealing as that thought is, um... Nice. Appealing. Mr. Mr. Biggles. Mr. Biggles is a... It's a cat. It's Dr. Evil's hairless pet cat in the Austin Powers franchise. Oh yeah, I fucked I that up. I thought his name was Mr. Bigglesworth, not Mr. Biggles. I don't know, maybe it's Mr. Biggles... Maybe it's Mr. Biggles to his friends. Maybe, maybe. Tell Jay to calm down. Jay! Calm the fuck down. Jesus. Okay, so we talked about regular inventory. Inf infantry, sorry. What about spec ops or elites? Gadgets, powers, etc. This is mostly for rags, but anyone can go. Also high rags. Hello. Um, well, the la well, they're not going to be wearing ridiculous black jumpsuits that have no actual purpose and stand around in the open brandishing large weaponry when they're supposed to be the world's deadliest spies and assassins. We're not going to be doing that. Wow. That's dumb. Anyone who would write that as a thing is an idiot. Wow. Uh, so let me think. I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's and that would be a really big question to get into. What would I arm my special forces soldiers with? Um, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, that's a that's a big long question. I maybe um. Yeah, a little suppressed weaponry if I needed them. I'd try to stay non-lethal. They wouldn't have a uniform because they'd be in plain clothes all the time. They'd be an assortment of genders and races, something that would be most appropriate for the area that they would be in. Um, they would have all kinds of listening devices and little cameras that they could set up for surveillance. Um, you know, stuff like you know, stuff like that. Probably nothing surprising. They would just not be stupid. That's the thing. I, I would stress in the training, don't be an idiot. Because life isn't a movie where you're just allowed to get away with things inexplicably. I'm, I was curious what this is in reference to. Just like you designing your own sort of team, is it? And I guess if I... Because it says what gadgets and powers they have. It's like, I guess at that point, you just want them to have the best. Powers? Stuff. Yeah, that's what it says. Invisibility, shape shifting. Those would be like the. Those seem to be the uh, mind reading. Those would be the the best powers to well, give to a special agent. I mean, if we're doing that, when you just like, you just want to cap them out and be like, give them Superman powers, give them everything. Yeah, I mean, if I could only choose one between like invisibility, shape shifting, and mind reading. Oh man, I'd take shape shifting. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, I think shapeshifting will outclass invisibility, probably. I think it, I think it absolutely does. You've got invisibility with perks. I don't think it absolutely does. Sense. There are gonna be scenarios where invisibility does, will be better. Okay, but, but more, more often than not, I think that that would be the more useful option. I don't agree. I think it would be that in certain circumstances, appearing to be somebody else would be more useful than no one even seeing you at all. That's what I'm. That's what he said. That's what I'm. That's what oh, I said. Okay, I'm I saying oh, that okay. shape shifting is better than invisibility. Yeah. So what I'm bringing up is anomaly, like say a, a place that no one's allowed to go. No one's allowed in. Yeah. Invisibility. But how yeah. often is that a situation I'm going to be in? You know. Well, there's probably other ones we could come up with. Um, maybe like a you need to be a particular person to get to a place. Unfortunately, that person is. Like, there's other elements to them beyond just yeah, looking like them. Yeah, like knowledge and things. And particular maybe like tools elements. and access as well. If you're invisible, you can yeah. sort of, yeah. Well, I, but I if I'm like... invisible, I would still need those tools and stuff, right? Well, like... theoretically, it would be easier to steal them if you were invisible. I guess. Yeah. I'm just thinking about all the other instances where I feel like I would prefer not to... Where I'd prefer to have a different to to be able to shape shift. Just feels like that's that's way more utility. More often, you know. I think that. I think come so. Yeah. And... I just I just I just want to make sure uh... we go to bat for invisibility a little bit. Oh uh, yeah, invisibility is think... pretty cool. But I'm know. sticking with invisibility. I think it will be more generally useful to be unseen entirely than to be seen as somebody else. Because remember, if you are acting, remember it's not just looking like somebody else. You have to act like them and know what to say and often have the right training and things. You'd still have to have the passwords you need and the know-how and the technical knowledge. Appearing Do we have a specific only... task that we're trying to also, accomplish you, here? You need all of that with invisibility too. Yeah, you need that with invisibility. That's true, but but if you need if you need both of those things, I suppose I would, all things being equal, rather be unseen completely. Well, but what does it matter if you've seen if you can change your identity? They'd never be able to track you down ever. Like, well, I think that's why I find it so like useful. You would have to, uh, like, if you could change your shape, you would have to be in a situation like they could never break eye contact with you. Um, you sure. Just but could, wouldn't that be the same with invisibility? Like, if I go invisible, invisible, you never have eye contact with them. No, but if I need to switch from visible to invisible. Well, if if you were to break it for just a moment, then you're now invisible. However, even if someone like rounds a corner, like they could still see, and even if you shape shit into something else, they they would still see somebody running. What is the from extent? It. What is the extent of this? Is it just into other people, or can I physically change my shape? Because if I can physically change my shape, as far as I'm concerned, this is no contest. Oh, like inanimate objects. Well, like, if chair. I can if I can do the full-on, I can turn, yeah, I can turn into, like, chairs and stuff like that, then, uh, and go really thin to get underneath cracks and stuff, then I think it's no contest. And even if it was, like, 
mystique just people i still think that's incredibly useful i still think more that so out, than being yeah invisible. i think that outclasses invisibility still i just wanted to make yeah. sure we made clear invisibility still has its benefits i would uh, go with uh, and here's I, another I, question I, I invisibility. does invisibility apply to the objects that you hold and the clothing that you wear or is it just your skin Hmm. because if it's just your skin i think that's fairly worthless if it's, if um, it's only your skin yeah then that's a big limitation um but if that I can touch an yeah. object and turn it invisible, like Wonder Woman, then that's more useful, but still, shapeshift is Because if you oh can boy. shapeshift, and you, I assume that when you shapeshift, you shapeshift into a person's clothing as well. I Yeah, I think I think it's fair to assume that that's an element. Um, right, so if we do the clothing thing, like, like if when you shapeshift, the stuff that you have on you that is of a reasonable size, I think that's like the D&D &D rules or something, is yeah. as long as it's of a fairly small size on your person, it turns invisible with you, but if it's a large object, it like you wouldn't, yeah, walking in a room doesn't then make the room invisible. Um, um but that's true. I like how that we've all written off mine because dogs don't wear clothes. I do like how we've all kind of written off. I didn't, I didn't write off for mind control. I didn't, I was just thinking about those two. Wait, was it mind control or was it mind, mind reading? reading? Oh, reading. I think, I think mind reading is appreciably less valuable to I me. I think it's going to be um, tougher for that to be used as useful as the other two, as reliably yeah. useful. And what in does it mean to read people's thoughts, you know? Are they full sentences or are they a weird Or yeah, or, or is it like, like you're accessing a computer, like you have access to all of their thoughts and stuff? Or wow, it, I imagine it would be like your sift, like how you, you stop and think for yourself and you sift through your memories and your knowledge. It would be yeah. that, just with another person. Um... I, I only- f I feel like mind control, if it was mind control, it's like, ooh, that's actually- ooh, that, that can I, be something. I don't Wait. think I could take that on principle in a weird oh, way. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm inclined to agree on the principle thing, but if we're talking pure pragmatic achieving goals, pure mind pragmatic. control is... Yeah, if it was pure pragmatic, then you could just mind control people and just... I, I mean, I would also say it's unethical anything. to take somebody's identity, right, by turning into them. I think that that's sure. unethical well, too, yeah, but, to, you know. Yeah, I'll, yeah in, in the to a lesser extent. One is most, yeah, to a lesser extent, absolutely. But I'd sure. say in terms of ethics being invisible is the most moral because it probably it's just no one can see you if you're if you're reading someone's mind that's still an invasion of privacy absolutely i agree obviously but this would be a bit uh, i never knew that like in the context of i don't even know what we're doing in here but if we're stopping a world domination plot or something true yeah yeah um, like, i i still think shape-shifting is peak of these i think i think I, it's, I think it is a downright underrated ability uh, all things considered. Oh, we talked about this I... with, um, Doppelganger, remember? Yeah. Doppelganger, dude, the amount of things, he should be, like, pretending the, the to be the person tier. next to the president. He the should most be... valuable soup they have. Yeah. Yeah, he is extremely underutilized for how insanely powerful he was. Yeah. And then he just gets killed in some kind of weird sex project. Fuck the boys, it's shit. <laughs> Um, but when it comes to, yeah, mind reading would be, in terms of which is most useful, like, in average day-to-day, -day, normal, like, just, you live your normal life just with one of these powers? I mean, mind reading is out, because that's not something I'd even want, necessarily, in a, the day-to-day. -day. Invisibility's probably the one I'd end up using the most, but I'm still trying to think of, like, where, where would I be using that, and for what reason? I'm, yeah, I'm wondering if I would just fuck with people. Like, not even in, like, So we're talking mode. about morality and ethics, but that's No, 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 like, not, like, I'm not, not gonna, like, like hurt harmless them. Isn't that, what, like isn't that, that yeah. what the Stasi did to, to the people that they were spying on? They'd go into their house and move their furniture around to make them think they were insane? I mean... Well, I'm assuming Rags isn't planning on making anyone go insane. Not planning on making anybody think they're insane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that that would it'd be a little thing like if you if you did go into someone's house just for the sake of I'm gonna like mm. rearrange just a couple things and then leave, like that's, that's the level exactly of, what they did. But yeah, that, that's, <laughs> you know, that's there's a there's a I, I think that is funny to me. I mean, um, okay, yeah, I mean it it could be if you had comedic music playing, but if you had ominous music playing. Oh yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Is there blood on your shield, Rex? That's Marvel secret, all right. Is there blood on your shield? <laughs> Basically, that would determine whether it's evil or not. Dude, that needs to be yeah. a TV trope, it's like blood on the shield, and it's just a, it relates to like how things are framed. There's probably stuff for that already, but still. I'm I'm fine with calling it blood on the shield. I think that's an excellent. Yeah, blood on the shield is. A... 
<clears throat> is a cummerbund a clothing accessory or a piece of clothing? What is a cummerbund? Let me. Is look that it up. the thing you put around your neck? The little. It um it hides the seal between the trousers and the shirt, and it also keeps your belly in better in like weddings and stuff. Oh, is that that thing you um, wear underneath? Like, yeah. Um, I would classify clothing. that as an. You wear it. Well, here's the thing. So, hats and glasses are accessories. Yes. Um, I would call a cummerbund. In its in its normal usage, an accessory. Do you think that socks are an accessory? I think socks are clothes. Well, you don't need to wear socks, right? You don't need to wear shirts. That's true. So I would I would say that in terms of their function, right? It's designed to, like it, it like was it? It's just like it's more decorative than functional. Is that the is Wait. that would, would you say that suits are an accessory? You said glasses. The, glasses yeah, are peak this. functional, not yeah, decorative, I'm, I'm, typically. I think well, this I'm, is where I we start think. to realize the line is very blurry between what yeah, makes I, something. Maybe it's that it's not a it's not like a like a primary piece of you know wear. You have your you have your big ones, right? Your your shirt and your pants those are the big two um Except and then you have the undergarments context. the socks and the undies and the undershirts um but so i feel like a we... cummerbund is an accessory i just it it does well, it seems like with its with its application and it's supposed to be used i guess in tandem with clothes so is a jacket though that's meant to be used in tandem with like shirts and stuff like that but i feel but I you don't could think... You could just wear. I think a jacket's large enough and covers enough of your person and body parts that that yeah, would kind I'm, of. Yeah, but I could also say that about. I could say that about underwear. Well, I'm. Well, the cummerbund. You could say that. It up. I and think. I, well, yeah, that's why. That that's why I'm saying well. you could you could use a cummerbund probably in a function that it could be a clothing item. Like you could fashion it into an awkward undergarment. But I think in its in its normal usage. A shoes I would call it an accessory. accessory. Well, hmm. See, that's the I thing. Would, I, don't think I would probably would say, say yes. I would say shoes are clothes. They, right. They they are like they cover the entirety of the feet, and they are, I guess, they're 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 both in terms of their design and practicality and the importance that they are in terms of the outfit. Like, I could, for instance, if you had, like, I would say that if you, like, you know how dogs have those little dog uh, shoes that you put on them sometimes if they're going to be mm -hmm. outdoors or, you know, in hot places? I would say those are accessories for a dog, but for a person, they would be clothes. So, what would we, you, you, you said, talking about you said covering the whole of the foot. Do flip-flops not count as clothes then? Uh, I would I say that in what? the sense that they... Hmm. What is the distinction between and and what about like because you talked about practical you t like what about if you're wearing shoes that are high heel that is less practical than being barefoot um, in terms of just being able to move around and stuff like in that. A so sense, I don't know yeah. that, Sometimes, I don't know that yeah. I want utility to be something that because there are a lot of clothes that have, that have really poor utility that Fashion, I would yeah. consider not I be clothes. I think an aspect of their coverage. Like in terms of like, even though for instance, uh, if you have a sandal, right? So a sandal doesn't cover as much as a shoe, mm -hmm, but sure. the important part is that it covers the bottom and it secures it to the foot. So what if I like have a shirt and I cut a bunch of holes in the middle that expose like pretty much the entirety of my torso, but it's still connected and covers my neck and the, right at the bottom. Does that still count as clothing? I don't know. That might be its own category of like damaged clothes. Like if clothes. Well, are what if what damaged? if that was on purpose? What if I did that on purpose? That's the design of, of the clothing. Yeah, I think of jeans where they destroy all of the jeans yeah. on purpose. Hmm. I don't know what they're called, but I hate them. Ripped jeans. Yeah, when you buy them, and they're super expensive a lot of the time. Yeah, they're, they're more yeah, they're expensive than the broken. fucking normal jeans. <laughs> Hey, look, I like wearing broken clothes, okay? 
It makes me have a personality because oh, I, I can't but... forge one myself. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Tear it into him. Man. What happened? Did did jeans that were torn hurt you? Yes, I was, I just, I, I was attacked I just, by jeans. I just don't, like, I, I understand the, and I can appreciate the want to buy jeans that already look like they are worn. But to the point where they're just ratty and torn up, like... I want to, I want jeans that look like they're worn, not like I need to replace them. You know, I'm starting to worry about hats now because you know, like a beanie, you'd call that an accessory, right? I don't know. Yeah, probably. Um, because I, I, probably I feel like it's gonna. Call it an accessory. I feel like it would fulfill a lot of the clothing requirements that have kind of been alluded to. Like it covers the whole of that portion of the head, like like it, and it's designed to keep it warm and. And I. I think part of this has to do with the, the socially accepted standards for wearing clothes in public. Like, you could go out without a hat and nobody would mind, but if you go out without a shirt, people obviously would, would look at you. So that's just like you know, I think social <laughs> preferences that's social, over time. Though, cause yeah, you could, like, well, the, we're, yeah, well, that we're discussing the words, so... Sure, I but I like guess... It's, um, I think it's sort of fair that, to be like, you know... Do the definitions of clothing change over time? Is that what we want to? A lot of yeah. I, I mean, I would say that's that's not unrealistic. A lot of definitions change over time. Um, I guess it's just a category because we're talking categories, really. True. And categories but, um, are very loose. It's like talking about film genres in a way. Ew. But then I guess almost what are we doing here? You know, like if if we're if we're saying that it is well, so yeah, because malleable. we all we got here because you you often feel the need to cur to correct people if they ever refer to hats as clothing. Right. Well, and, that, and now it seems so as though it's care. it's based on rocky <laughs> ground. I care a little bit. I wow. think you care a lot more than you a little bit. You care enough to correct people. That's a lot. Well, that's not that much effort to correct someone. Well, I don't, I don't one, think how much you kid is determined by how much effort it takes to do a thing. I don't know, I think it can be indicative if you really, really work well, okay, hard so to, and you I care a, on a heckin' lot about, uh, I don't know, Star Wars. It doesn't take much effort for me to counter an argument that's bad in relation to it. It's the, the correlation there isn't... But, there well, isn't is that, the, I mean, is that, your, is well, that your concern for the argument and not the Star Wars uh, thing? Here, here's a thing to think about, though. I'm not particularly invested in defending the notion that the Earth is round. But, like, if somebody says it's flat, I'll say, no, it's not. So it's like, how much do I care? It's like, well, you are wrong, and I care that you're wrong, but... I'm not that invested in, in like, defending the order of the Earth being round. I don't know that correcting something proves anything about how much you care, actually, the more that I think about it. I mean, I, it's not just the, the desire to correct it. I think it's the, the links that you might go to. Sure. And yeah. Help, that's, like, the, that's the thing. Like, like to say, like, if someone, they like, go with flat Earth thing, right? I, I, if someone said the earth is flat, I'd be like, no, it isn't. And if they wanted to have like a big discussion about it, I'd be like, no, I just don't, I don't care what you think. No. It's not yeah. that I don't care about the shape of the earth. I don't care about that they think it's flat. I don't care enough to convince you out of the position that you hold. Yeah, that's the distinction is. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's right a good, here, yeah. I think that's a good way to draw the line. Yeah. How much do you care to convince other people uh, to your point of view? So how much do you rags care to convince anybody to the point of view that a hat is not a piece of clothing yeah like if someone was really gonna go big on the like it's clothing thing i don't i don't like that's fine i don't really care to convince you that much I how, just don't how really... would time zones work if the earth is uh on a flat hey, earth yeah that's an hey interesting guys, question well, to ask them. hey guys what <laughs> hey guys what time is it on the flat earth six o'clock <laughs> daytime I think my favorite flat earth, because uh, I know that there's the theory that it's basically just a disc. Um, well, yeah, don't, um, you know, well, like one I, of, I thought one they have their the own recurring... systems for why we would have day and night as well still. Like, they have well, they, it they've put it all thought out. Yeah, it depends on who you ask. So the, the issue about flat earth is that, one, it's it's horseshit, and so you don't actually what? have... Yeah, oh, really? Sorry. Spoilers. So one of the issues, because I, uh, I watched flat earth debates, and by the way, MC Toon is among my favorite. I would highly recommend y'all check him out. M-C-T-O-O-N. And he does a lot of debates with all kinds of people. One of the recurring issues that come up with the Flat Earth community, demographic, whatever you want to call them, is a lack of a model and that they can't produce one. 
they, or they very rarely even attempt to produce a model um, of how it works that has any explanatory or predictive power. Some people say that that's what that's the joke. What time is it on flat Earth? It's daytime because it's always daytime on a flat Earth because the sun would never set, right? Yeah. So, um, well, unless the sun some, revolves around Earth, according to them. I was going to say I don't think any, does any flat Earther believe that? I don't think they do, right? Because how can they? Well, that's the meme, right? Yeah, but they can't believe they do. It. That that the well, Earth. How can circles, they believe it's all day? It is. Well, no, they, it, they, sometimes it's night. Was it like a conspiracy they, thing, like Mr. Burns' giant solar shield? <laughs> I really believe that the sun is either obscured by something or some atmospheric effect um, is preventing <laughs> the sunlight from reaching the ground, okay. or that the sun acts as a lampshade and it only highlights a segment. Like it's not a it's not a sphere that shines in all directions. It's it's like it's it's in a lamp and it only illuminates a certain area underneath it as it moves around. Right. It depends okay. on who you. It depends on who you ask. But they all agree with the different... Antarctic thing, right? They all agree no. that Antarctica is a wall of ice. But no, no, okay. No, um, uh, there's there's many who will say that we don't know what's out there. We haven't gone. It's too dangerous. It's I unable. Mean, we can, it's unexplored, and we're we're not sure what's out there. But there are how some do they explain? Who... How do they explain uh, just fucking objects that we send into space? Like, okay, so, <laughs> to, to answer that. And to answer, J Jay just said, they have systems, but to call them thought out is going far, Wombo. No, seriously, if you debate these people, you better be prepared. They will have, Yeah, because like... they, yeah. So, you have the two categories of the Flat Earthers, which is generally going to be religious zealotry or conspiracy theories. Or like is there anything particularly theories. important about Earth being flat in the Bible, though? Or is that, like, does that yes. really matter? So, does so it? here's the thing. Okay. Here's here's the line of reasoning. This is the whole Ken Ham AIG sort of line of reasoning, which is that if the Bible is shown to be um, wrong about something, then it pulls into question the entirety of it. Oh, right. Well, and I mean, makes, understandably. It, yeah, and it makes you wonder if this is divinely inspired word of God, then why the fuck would he say that bats are birds? That's retarded. That's obviously <laughs> why, why would he say that? You know? it's, it's, th it's things like that, you know, which in isolation don't seem like a big deal, but they think that it undermines the credibility of the entire thing. Well, so I mean, if, of course it does believe, undermine the credibility. Why would he say that they're bad? <laughs> the bats are birds. They're not. Yeah, so, if, so if you read the Bible and your interpretation of it is that the earth is flat, something that, like, a god shouldn't get that wrong, the shape of the well, earth. When he made thing. it, he knows what yeah. it looks like, right? Maybe when he made it, it was flat. It just got fat. And then he just changed his mind. So, <laughs> like, fucking this most ain't working people, out. Most, uh, obviously most Christians don't take the, don't, they don't get the shape of the earth from the Bible. You know, they think the earth is an oblique spheroid in space and all that good stuff. But there are some fundamentalist types. And that's why, I, that's why I said the flat earth categories are generally Religious zealots and conspiracy theorists, those are the big right. two that pop up. Um, like the whole space thing, space isn't real, space isn't, um, space isn't, it doesn't exist, we haven't sent anything there, we certainly haven't gone to the moon, we don't have the ability to go to the moon, it's all made up, it's all a Cold War thing we did to fool the Russians, there's many different variations of Stanley the Stanley Kubrick directed stuff. moon landing. Yeah. And there's plenty who, who who do the religious thing in terms of there's a firmament, like a big dome above us, and that this dome is the air that we live in, and past that there is water in the shimmering of stars. The, 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 the ocular phenomenon that is the shimmer of stars is because the stars are in water, and that light is going through water to get to the air where we are underneath the firmament. So you get, mean, all kinds, you get all kinds. You get all it kinds. It does seem like there are all kinds of theories and that nobody yes. can really agree on which one is right. It, it's I very see. telling, yeah. So m normal people are who have any degree of knowledge about this, most people probably don't just because it doesn't really impact their daily lives. They have better things to do. But generally the scientific community and most people are in a consensus that the Earth is here and the sun is there and we orbit around it and the moon orbit around us. Like there's a general kind of agreed upon model that we can produce and things, but with flat earthers, because it's not real, they don't have anything they can't unite. To draw on. <laughs> they can't yeah, well, they, they can't actually, yeah, I they can't the big unite. Issue, 
I guess the big issue that they run into as well is that they're very invested in the conclusion that they're trying to prove, whereas, like, the scientific process is more just about gradually adding what you learn to the models that you have, and then it just steadily builds towards your, uh, you know, whatever. It just steadily builds towards something. What end? Not sure, but I mean, as opposed to the process that you'd be using where... And there's a lot more confirmation bias, obviously, too. Um, you know. Hi, Shad. I, I, hey, look. Hey, hey Shad. Guys, yeah. Hey, oh, we can hear you now. How was your, uh, how we was can your... hear you how now. Was the, how was the place? Yeah. How was your yeah. dragon fire place? Where'd you go? The red dragon? Yeah, it was like the, the red dragon. Uh, they put the dragon's it taste. It was pretty good. So they had like, you know, duck and pork and pork uh, cheek, which was really, really nice. And, uh, and, uh. Uh, like a like an old medieval type of um, pie thing, which was a duck, which was actually a pork and duck pie, something like that. Um, and yeah, all, all the other things they had like a minstrel playing, like and singing constantly and stuff, and uh, it, it was thematic. wasn't wasn't completely accurate. There's a you know, there's a lot of inaccuracies, <laughs> wow. but it was a very Im immersive kind of experience. That sounds cool. Critique it, Rex. Duck right. is great. I, you like duck? Yeah, the duck was really good. Really good. I, I mean, do like duck. Had ducks smaller. How I like duck. duck. I have not had duck. I like duck. My my mother does not like duck. I love duck. I've never yeah, had an animal I haven't liked, honestly. Um, but duck is great. It's time duck to try great. human ranks. Hey, oh, but kangaroo. I, I came in during a flat Earth discussion. That was a fun one. I thought they yeah, did have is. a um, a, a more agreed-upon model. Like, there's this guy... That Maybe is, certain groups, some do. but... Yeah, well, there's a guy that actually makes there's flat Earth spheres that agree. models. Like, oh, my God. Flat Earth models, all right. Yeah, and actually, he sells them online and stuff. Um, <laughs> oh it's a more agreed-upon kind of, um, uh, you know, structure of... And, and, and there's a sun that kind of rotates in a circle above the flat Earth. There's so yeah. So to... depending on who. So generally, um, there is a the 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 sun is generally going to be an object that is a few thousand miles, generally three to five thousand miles above I... the Earth. Man, the sun. <laughs> the sun is the sun is they call it small and local. No. It, is a, it is a small object that is fairly close. Like I said, three to five thousand miles up in the air. It is of an unknown material. We don't know what it is. We can't go to it. Um, you know, we're, we're prevented from going up there for whatever reason. And it makes a circle around the Earth. And its, it's, it's effect is such that the side that it's on is the day and the side that it's not on is night. Obvious question being, you know, what time is it on the flat Earth? It's always day. However, everything from the misuse of the word um, uh, perspective or it, 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 it acts as a lampshade or it is obscured by the horizon or the atmosphere. How can anything be obscured by the horizon though? Like how that's do they a, account for the curvature good, of the earth? That, they come up with all kinds of different things to try and justify how it works. A lot of them that I've seen have flat out said we just don't know. <laughs> flat out. I've just said that. Man, that's interesting. They just that's say so it, they just say they don't know how it works. They they say they legitimately don't know. Oh. They just have a problem with people who assert to know what the case is, and they don't I, accept the presumption. But evidence. yet they're part of something called the Flat Earth Society, probably. Well, which is I, just an organization not necessarily. That, this well, is yeah, why sure. I, I didn't know whether to call them a community or a demographic. I'm leaning towards like the flat Earth there's... community. What a weird well, little thing. There are communities. I was gonna say there's gonna like be groups. one out there probably. Yeah. They're, they're yeah, I'm sure. Well, I mean, there's the flat Earth society. What is that if not a community of sorts? I guess well, I just the... find the concept amusing. That's all. Yeah, it depends on how official you are. I suppose I'm sure there's memberships and legitimate well, societies. I mean, it, yeah, the flat the Earth society. It stuff. was founded in 1956. Um, is rank but, one like plate, and then rank two is disc, and then rank three is coin? I don't know. What? 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 what they gotta have different ranks. It'd be fun. What so they're, rank they're, they're generally agreed upon things like how gravity doesn't exist. Oh yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> that's yeah, that's so, that's one that's one version of it. My understanding was that um they believe the sun can only 
uh, shed light at a certain distance before it gets diluted and fades out and stuff. Yeah, that's um, that's what they think uh, the reality is. Um, also, <laughs> a lot of them think that the moon creates light. Um, the, the, the moon, moon reflects light. Uh, yeah, that's what it does in the real world where we live. In reality, oh, okay. yes. I just want to point out how minds. funny that was. Rag said, yes, that's what they think reality that's, is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's um, y the moon produces not only its own lesser light, but the light that it produces is a cold light. The light that the moon puts out cools things down. How do doesn't... they? How do they account for other planets? What what are they? What's what's their other planets? The other... So generally, it will be that they are one fake, that they okay. don't actually exist. They're not real things. Of that but nature. what are they then instead? Well, because I can see them. Like if I get a telescope and I line yeah. it up on Saturn, I can see it and I can see the rings. Some of them believe that, like I said about the firmament thing, uh, how the firmament is a dome of an unknown yet glass-like structure that goes over the okay. flat Earth and it holds back water. And in that okay. water, those are the planets and the stars. They are lights. They're not so physical things, depending on who, which flat earth you ask, but they are so them lights that shimmer. Okay, so what makes Earth special? Why is Earth this special place because, that is like because this? Because we're God's creation, we're God's special creation. Okay, um, well, I guess, but, but now one of the things I'm thinking about is like, gravity tends to work in a certain way. Like, there's a reason why pretty much everything in space is a ball. But then how do we, how are we stuck to the floor? Like, well, <laughs> generally... Dinosaur so blood. Their, their explanation <laughs> for gravity is density. Okay, but that's as if they, wait, but what? Density. Yeah, yeah things that, that are more dense fall down. Density is a property that will make you sink downwards. They think that, that that's a now. Obviously, this is there. There are different <laughs> interpretations. Oh my of this, God. But Generally, okay. density is a property that will cause things to go down the more dense an object is which is why heavier things will you know go down below and solutions and whatnot and lighter things will well be sure but that has and... to do with because i mean it doesn't like if i have a, a very dense like speck of dust that's not gonna fall down faster than a heavier but less dense human being so they're the idea here is well they it's often asked why why downwards how come everything goes down yeah why why how come dense things go down and not in a different direction how come it's always, always being pulled to the ground essentially um for which i've heard simple I, i've heard things such as well down is down and up is up just asserting that well it just goes down because that's what down is which is tautological that, sort of stuff well that is very tautological right that, um but also, it, how do they? Because I can watch live feeds of like launches of things that go into space, and and they can be like, well, that's fake. And it's like, well, I could go to that location and get a telescope and watch the thing go up with my own eyes. So, is it all fake, or which which aspect of it is fake? Well, yeah, they would just keep whittling it down. They'd be like, that part's real. Yeah, but the so part the, where they yeah, look the, at the it rocket, is fake. Yeah, the rocket and everything that you see, like they they believe in rockets, but. They don't sure. believe in general that some now some do believe in space. They just think it's super high up, you know. Well, I mean, it um, is kind of high up, but I mean, yeah, but I is. guess my, my but it question doesn't, is like, around a sphere. But they'll but they'll say they... that okay. They'll say that the rockets because generally when a rocket takes off, it it'll arch and you know, appear yeah, arc away as it you know tries to break out of the atmosphere. They'll say that it just stops eventually and it exits eyesight and that the atmosphere you know blocks our vision of it. And once it's gone far enough, it just goes somewhere else or it has a landing zone that it goes but to how do, how do they account for like satellites and just the technology that is reliant on satellites they generally don't a lot of them will not believe in satellites they'll but either the, go we the have the technology that can but how, how can there be a conspiracy for that satellite technology works a certain way and if there's no well to them it's been told to them and us that it works because of satellites well, but it actually I guess... works through some different methodology that we're not aware of or but that I don't... They don't want to give to us. Okay, but I mean, how? <laughs> it's funny, right? Because I'm saying like how. It's like, well, they'll figure out a way to well, justify. Well, there's a lot of not hows. <laughs> a lot of them yeah. work just based off of uh, basic observation and what they call intuition. 
And while intuition yeah, but intuition's is great, bullshit. Yeah, intuition's great for certain things, but in a lot of things like the like your place in the cosmos, intuition's really shit. Your well, ape I mean, brain is not not prepared to use intuition um, to find out the cosmological wrong. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson approved a movie where you could travel through the space with love alone. So imagine what you yeah. can do with oh, intuition. Right. I forgot. Of course, well, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. I always find that interesting. Just it, it, that feels like arrogant to me almost. It's like, man, we are like human beings that grew up on this little planet here, and that was all we understood. It feels very weird to that intuit things that we never had any means of understanding. For, well, that's uh, how special love is. Do you not think love is special? Well, oh yeah, I mean, you, you got you got a good point there. Um, I I guess I just <laughs> I don't know why anybody would be particularly invested in flat Earth as a, a notion. Like, what what is it? That's been the wonder really? for me. I don't understand the motivation of people to hide the fact that the Earth is not a flat, or to hide that it is well, flat. The the general um, there, there are multiple explanations for it. There is the more religious focus, like I said, are, are two primary categories. Is that um, an, an atheistic worldview that says that we're a tiny speck in the universe, devalues the concept of who we are, and devalues the idea that. that there's a creator who finds us special, and they will use I don't even a, know that it would devalue that if you wanted to believe that. Like, I don't, well, if, I don't if know. you believe that you are the a unique... A, a unique plane, should we say, trapped under a firmament, firmament, and there was nothing in the universe like you. It would make you special, which um, is the it would make that a lot you of special. It would make like you we, special by our logic of special, right? Yeah, like we're the only one that exists. We're we're God's special creation. We're well, I guess I guess that's the uh, the interesting thing, right? Is is there any reason to necessarily assume that there is no? It, it, like if you wanted to take a religious worldview, that there that you would necessarily there is no intrinsic value in your existence because there are other things that are like you. Wouldn't it just be that you're all valuable? Is that so bad? Like <laughs> you know, yeah, there's well, but, specialness uh, comes in degrees, I guess. And yeah, yeah, people, I guess. Yeah, especially because some people... someone could be like everything outside of Earth is dead in space or something like that. They're like, so we're still like, special. Yeah. There isn't a space, there aren't other planets, there aren't other stars, we're the only thing in existence, we are all of God's Man, creation. Not, that's lame. I don't like that. I like the idea that there's tons of stuff out there that's really cool that we've never seen before. Yeah, so I, uh, there's, there's that aspect, the, the idea of... They're, they're trying to hide the truth from us to keep us... From, well... It, it, it's like, it's, it's either a, it's, it's like an actual plot by the devil, or it's a society of satanic... Peoples. Well... According to well, I think there's there's religion. more to it than that on the uh, religious side because I know for my own religion we actually have the view that Fringy was just expressing. We believe that there's heaps of life in the whole entire universe and yeah, they're all special. I guess well, I guess that, that would always be, true. but that but that's that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? Is like I don't I don't necessarily see how. Unless, like, unless the religion that you were following was very hyper specific on it, that it would well, necessarily be an a, a, like a contradictory to, to have a galaxy one thing and I've a universe full of stuff. A lot of these people seem to be a religion of one. They don't seem, they're non-denominational. They have right. their own particular okay, interpretation sure, yeah. of whatever scripture they're using. They're not generally going to be a part of a larger mainstream. Like, they're not going to be Catholics or Protestants or Mormons or anything like that, so right? More They're like the be... amorphous religion, like amorphous sort of Christian identity that is not kind of particularly clear Gener on the thing, generally like pretty it's... fundamentalist. Um, they're gonna, or they're gonna go. It, it's it's weird. You get them in all flavors. You have the ones that are super fundamentalist, who have an I interpretation of the Bible that lends itself to flat Earth. They believe, or you have the religious ones who are more spiritual. That kind right. of. Ooh, you know, sort of thing, well, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I suppose that would. I, I guess I'm because I'm I'm reading here on Wikipedia again. I lot I love this website that uh that there the claim is that NASA and government agencies conspire to hide the truth. And I'm trying to and and the, the most widely accepted version is the Antarctic ice wall. Um, the argument is 
that NASA photoshops its satellite images based on observations that the color of the oceans change from image to image, um, as if color grading is a thing, and that the continent seems to be different places, as if perspective isn't a thing. The publicly yeah. perpetuated image is kept up through a large-scale practice of compartmentalization, according to which only a select number of individuals have knowledge about the truth. But why? I'm still looking for the reason. But why? I want to know why. Now, <laughs> the, so what you get is you get little, you get nuggets of the truth that get blown off into religious proportions. So not religious proportions. Um, uh, ridiculous. Uh, proportions. I don't need to look up the great filter. I know, I know what that is. That's a different conversation, though. Um, it's like, it's like almost all the pictures we have of our planet are composite images that are altered in some way to either make it easier to see or to highlight certain characteristics in particular. Well, I mean, a um, lot of the plus, old we satellites don't have many, were black and white. You know, they, well, they took images in black and white. We don't have really any reason to send a lot of stuff out so far away that it can take a single picture of the entire Earth. You have well, to get really I, far away from the Earth to take a singular image of it, and there's not and really a reason to go out that far. Also, you don't have many opportunities once you do that. Like, your your window is limited. That thing is going. You you are, you're not going to be able to swing that one around to get another shot. And yeah, most of the stuff that we launch into space is low Earth orbit. You know, it's ast um like uh, satellites. Yeah, it'll that be have a low geosynchronous orbit. Yes. Yeah, um, it's not often. I'm pretty sure like 90% of uh, stuff that we send up is in there and, and a ver might even be more than that. And a very, very small Probably. amount of stuff gets sent out. Um, yeah, there's just no reason to send something out that Well, far except away, for scientific, you know? scientific Yeah, scientific stuff. and observation and stuff. But that, uh, generally, NASA and scientists aren't too concerned about proving to flat earthers what the shape of the Earth well, is. I mean, so they have more important worth. things they're trying to do. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's quite expensive to launch stuff into space. You got, you want to be using that, like sending, you know, little miners over to Mars. Not miners, like little little robots little over to Mars to take pictures. And Pluto to get that really that picture of Pluto was kind of mind blowing. You guys, you guys remember that one? The the one that was super recent, only in the last couple of years. Yeah. That was uh, that was incredible. That was um, that was one of those. Oh boy space ain't it ain't it a beautiful thing i think it's pretty neat here are, um, flat earthers are quite the, i like to watch the the debates um the, it's interesting the kind of the different kinds of characters you get um as they bring their own bizarre um observations of reality and how they format that into some strange weird conception of how the universe and the world is um and the reasons they have behind all of it i think it's i think it's very interesting it's so, it's interesting for sure yeah. yeah do you want to hear a cool interesting factoid about flat earth stuff do it um, sure yeah so i've actually recently made a video not too long ago on the fact that uh, it was common knowledge in the medieval period that the earth was actually round uh, very few people actually flat earthers in the medieval period and there's a lot of resources and quotes and everything of people actually reasoning out they didn't go to space they couldn't you know actually for themselves but there's a lot of people who were just looking at the horizon seeing how it curves away and that um, there are different times when you go to a different part of the world and stuff that they figured out oh it's round um, and I mean, there's also actually quotes in the Bible that refer to the earth being round as well. And so a lot of like there's quotes from religious leaders and everything like that, that uh, all believe the earth was round. And it was common knowledge amongst in the Roman Empire, amongst the Greeks and Egyptians and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, that the earth was round it's interesting how it's actually a more of a modern kind of a weird belief that's actually evolved widespread in the flat earth specifically it's, it's just really interesting well they they are they figured it out with just observations of um of like the stars and things like that and then they just kind of worked backwards which is super cool to think about uh in terms of being able to figure that out i had a thought that I knew was interesting and on topic, and it is gone, and I am struggling desperately oh. to Aris try and work back. Aristosthenes, um, he used shadows and wells in order to oh my uh, hypothesize that the earth was uh, round. Oh, Dude, talking about shadows and wells, you pissed off Fringy now, Rags. Nice. Jeremy. Oh, damn it. Oh, does, does he not like It'll shadows and wells? No. It'll come oh, back man. to me eventually. I, when it was a young plague doctor who was thrown inside a shadowy well. Right? 
So what's interesting gone. about Flat Earth, right, is that, so the ancient Egyptians, they had a different North Star than we do. Ours is Polaris, currently, and I think it's slowly getting more accurate, and then after that it will get less and less accurate until we get a new North Star. However, for them, the North Star was Thuban, and that's the one that they used to align a lot of their structures and navigate and things of that nature. That damn. sounds like the name Reuben. Yeah. Damn, damn, damn. I'm sorry, Fringy. It was something to do with Greeks and something like that. Oh, oh, yes, yes, it's come back to me. So, it, it, uh, I'm sure Shad knows about this, but are you guys familiar with Terra, uh, with uh, Terra Astralis as a concept? Um, I've definitely heard that before. So, Terra Astralis, that's uh, Land of the South? In Latin, yeah. So, um, the story goes that before Australia was discovered, there was just a prevailing consensus that, oh, there probably is a land in the south to balance out the land in the north. My favorite part about it is that it was entirely, un from what I understand, entirely unscientific. It was just, it feels like there should be more land in the south than there is. That was the logic behind it. And, um, and then, yeah, then they eventually found Australia. And then they also found Antarctica, which they had no idea about. Um, and that, that was just that was just an entirely hypothetical based on nothing really at all. But I just find it interesting that a lot of people just agreed, oh, yeah, it feels like there should be more land down there. Yeah, there's, there's this big space of just ocean. There's like, there has to be a land exactly. somewhere. Yeah. And not only one piece of land, but two. Um... I mean, I, I, it's pretty crazy to think that, like, no human being had ever seen Antarctica in all of the time that humans have been around until, what, like 200 years ago? Less than that? Let me look it up. When was I mean, it's pretty old, old for you. It, I mean, it is. It is twenty. Yeah, so, so... Oh, wow! 200 and, so, 201 years ago, yeah. Wow, the yeah, so 200th anniversary of the You were off by an entire year, idiot. Yeah, hey. that's 365 days. That is 365. I don't even want to tell you what it is in minutes. Oh. Tell yeah, me. Don't make me, do don't make me bust no, out my calculator. Dude, you'll never stream again. You'll be so embarrassed. Well, let's see. <laughs> 365 days times hours, so that's 24 times 60. It's a lot of minutes. Yeah. Don't tell him. It'll upset him. It's a, it's a yeah. lot of minutes. It's a lot of minutes. Man. And half of them are spent here on EFAP. Where we I was going to say, do you guys want to do the next rarely. Super Chat? <laughs> yeah, we can do the next Super Chat. Who is Mr. Jangles? Is Rags the only one who knows? Uh, no, I'm not the only one who knows about Mr. Jangles. Uh, Mr. Jangles is one of uh, Sean Locke's uh, characters that he plays. He's quite, quite frightening. But I'll leave you to Google that and YouTube it at your leisure. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, rip Sean Locke. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Biggles was referring to the Snyder cultist. I know, but when you said Rags versus Mr. Biggles, the way that I was kind of constructing the fight was by figuring out what Mr. Biggles is, and I believe, judging from the name, he's probably a cat. And Rags yeah, I, being a I dog, to... he's going to tear the cat apart with his guns. Yeah, uh, there, there is an aspect of I need to know what Mr. Biggles is before I know if I can defeat him or not. Because if Mr. Biggles is your name for, like, a mountain, then I just I don't know what I'm going to really do. Yeah, and, you know, will you beat the mountain? It's like, I guess you theoretically could. You could turn it into, like, dust with the right weaponry, but... Would you want to at that point, you know? Okay, if you had a five-man spec ops squad, each had an ability slash power, but for only one person in the group... Only one for each person in the group. Also, hi, Fringy and Longman. Hello. So, if we had to have one power for the, the each group of, of the us? So you have five people in a spec ops squad, but they all get one power and uh, one power each, I guess. But they're different. Um, well, you could go to the... Um, I'm going to want one of them see. to have super strength, right? That's going to come in handy. Yeah, super strength is very useful in general. Um, super strength... Is immortality up for grabs? I don't know if you... Do you want immortality in the spec ops? I'll... Like, indestructibility? I'd say that'd be pretty useful. Oh, I was... I think in a more traditional, the way I understand what immortality most of the time is different from like indestructibility. Like immortality to me often means you don't age, but you do, you can be killed. 
Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of a different um, one. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I, I don't know if I'd give them indestructibility. I think the idea would be that they wouldn't get into yeah, like the, uh, yeah, like we're trying. That's like that's like in Hearthstone when you have a win more card. It's like we shouldn't get to the point where that is something that's making us powerful. We should probably plan ahead. Like in a way, invisibility would be more valuable in that it's going to put us in positions all the time where we're dominating. Indestructibility would be useful if we get found out and shot at. You know, we're hoping yeah, to avoid that. I assume. Yeah, if I had a if I had a commando squad of people, then making them indestructible would be super high tier on the list of powers I'd give them. But for a spec ops group that's supposed to be like slinky, like spy sleuth, secret agent kind of stuff, do you reckon it would be useful? But I wonder. I it, it certainly goes down in the list. Do you reckon we should have a Magneto on the team who can control metal? Because that's going to be pretty useful if things get hairy as well. Should we just go telekinesis or? Good point. If it's as good as Magneto's with metal, but for everything, fuck it, yeah. Yeah, like a, a telekinesis mage hand would be, yeah, that would be super useful. Uh, so, invisibility, shape shifting, telekinesis, mind reading. I would go there to, to, especially if you're about acquiring information, that would be super useful. Um, yeah, cause, cause that's like a stepping stone, like, oh, where, where's the general? He has the key. It's like, okay, this guard, does he know where the general is? Okay, so he know he thinks that the general's up here. Okay, so now I could go up there. All right, does the general know the information? Oh, he doesn't actually, but he knows where the files are for the What about, okay. um, Nicholas Cage's power in next, where you can rewind time by about two minutes at a time? That would be amazing. Maintain the knowledge. Insane. That would be super OP. I think there's so many fun aspects to that power, especially restricting it down to just two minutes or whatever. Yeah, like a blink reload time, like a quick like a quick reset where it's just, even if it was like 10 seconds, that's an insane amount of power that you have. Yeah. Also, Jay, I said, I said win more because it's the same principle. It's like you have a card that you've already achieved its purpose, or rather it the purpose it's achieving shouldn't be something we're actually after, so that's kind of what I don't. Uh, I was, um, I had, I had a stage for a number of months where I would, um, it was earlier this year, where I would just randomly watch videos on Yu-Gi-Oh! A card game I hadn't played or had any real thoughts about in any way for many, many, many years. But for whatever reason, I got into watching modern Yu-Gi-Oh! videos where people talk about cards and combos and top tens and packs and things like that mm -hmm. and i'm 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 from like old school metal raiders kind of Yu-Gi-Oh, like when it first started out so the i think the i think legend of darkness was the last one the last set that i'd used um and uh just the game looks totally different than it does now like the, the power creep in Yu-Gi-Oh is insane because I, I remember a lot of the old cards. I still have them. And I remember a lot of the old cards and a lot of the powerful ones are what was considered powerful. And now, holy fuck, it's like a new game with all these people. Cards have walls of text and they're, you could win in your first turn and it's all about making these insane fucking combos. And I'm like, fuck, this isn't the game I remember. I hate this new game. This sucks. Sounds like Magic the Gathering when you're playing Classic or Legacy. Uh, that's another. I, I played Sounds Magic like... the longest out of all the card games that I did play. Um, I played Magic the longest, but I did get out of it because it just frustrated me. But I, I kept all my cards, though, so... Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? I like Hearthstone Duel Masters. was the same. I like just, the rules yeah. of Duel Masters. Um, let me see. Um, da, da, da. What was other ones? Um... I never played Pokemon, but I collected the cards, but that was like all of the friends that I had. We didn't actually play the game, we just collected them. The I played it every stuff. once in a while, but yeah, the collecting of them seemed to be more what everyone was invested in. Gotta catch a man. Hey, Rags. Hey! What about the LAZ or LAS gun from 40k? Can be suppressed, has optics, laser, can be invisible, no recoil, and the ammo can be recharged by placing next to a fire. Next to a fire? Apparently. How can you suppress a, a... 
I wonder if- Cause my- That kind of spoils it, if you get to the point where your gun is magic, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I understand magic's real in Warhammer 40k, but I- I don't know, I- I didn't know that it was a, um, I didn't know that you could suppress it, um, maybe you can because it's Warhammer and it's all fucking nonsense, but, I don't know, um, I just think, I think, I just don't know, because I guess if we're just accepting things, that sounds great, but there's a, there's a, like, a barrier of practical things that I'll accept, I guess, yeah, like, in fiction. If I said to you, like, Rags, why aren't you choosing the, the Gloom rifle that has infinite ammo, it has the best recoil, it has the best this, best that, and you're just like, yeah, I guess so, I, I guess I would pick that then. Rags quit MTG because Eldrazi and Slivers. No, I remember Slivers. Uh, Eldrazi, I don't, re I don't recall. Um, I think the last set of Magic the Gathering I played was... The one after Innistrad? I really like the Innistrad sets. I love that classic vampire werewolf zombie vibe that the Innistrad sets had. I love that sort of stuff. It's one of the reasons why Resident Evil Village fucking pissed me off, because they totally squandered that shit, but they wanted to steal the aesthetics of it. Um, but, yeah, yeah that, that sums the up the game. I yeah. Um, so, I hate so Slippers so damn much. Every time someone played a Sliver deck, I'd just get blood in my eyes. I can't... That was so uncreative! Oh, yeah. dude. Slivers didn't have shit on infection decks. Were the tokens? <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I had fun with magic, but then I stopped having fun with magic. It's essentially what happened. I was just like, oh, look, another game where I just didn't pull what I need to play the game. I'm just gonna go play video games. <laughs> Um, my favorite theory is Atlas Earth. That being, Earth is actually a planet-sized Atlas mech, and the stars are all just enemy mechs that Atlas Earth is fighting in a cosmic void. The sun is just the uh, Gauss rifle discharging at regular intervals. The pilots are the world leaders who have a vested interest in making sure we never learn of the eternal battle. Okay. You know, that's a theory. Sounds, sounds cool. <laughs> it's about Earth being a giant mech. A giant mech. Ah. It's, a, it's an option. I'll take that over Flat Is Earth. That, that's way cooler. That's, uh, I mean, well, I mean, isn't that the premise of Xenoblade? The idea is that they're basically living on, like, the skull of a dead god or something, or the body of a dead Aren't god. Aren't we just brains in a mech suit that's flesh? Mate, I mean, you could say that. Biological robots, in a certain sense. Cool. If you could live in a world where we got a sequel trilogy as good as or better than the OT, but it means the Lord of the Rings trilogy never existed, would you take the trade? No. No. Wait, what's no. that, sorry? The trade is Lord of the Rings... You lose Lord of the Rings, you gain a sequel trilogy as good as or better than the OT. No. No. We're no. not getting rid of Lord of the it's Rings. Not, no. I'm, I'm not, not getting no. rid of Lord of the Rings. That is like, we locked I mean, out. I, I, we live in the universe where we locked out. I don't know if we've told people this before, but I'm pretty sure you guys are on the same team. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is kind of way better than the OT. It's, yeah. It's, it's way better. I, I love Star Wars, but it's Lord of the Rings is better. Yeah, the OT is great. Don't get me wrong. Well, the o OT is mostly great. It's two mostly thirds great. great. Yeah. But, oh man, like, here's the thing all three of the Lord of the Rings movies are fucking bangers. Yep. All three mm -hmm. of them. They're all good. They're all damn well, good. Well, good. Good is putting it lightly. We're talking yeah, about some all... of the best films ever made. I think Rags is in like a binary, looking. right? Like, they are, yeah, on the, yeah. they are on the positive side. <laughs> Meanwhile, Return of the Jedi, it's, it's hard to call that good. It's like, eh. Oh, really? Because for me, Return of the Jedi has the best emotional payoff. It does. Well, I, I agree. I agree, right. but... And, and, yeah, that's like and, the good part of that movie. <laughs> There are well, some other it, things I, I like. I remember in it. just there are some other there are some other things that are are, are good, but the Re Return of the Jedi is it's flimpy. It's very flimpy. Yes. Oh yeah, it is, uh, it, don't give it. There's, there is some silly stuff in it, but still that that payoff and final confrontation with Vader at the end is such a high for me, especially when I was a kid and stuff. I agree. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it would be I hard for me to movie. weigh that against Lord of the Rings. Like I love Lord of the Rings. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think I reached as Greater high in Lord of the Rings as I did with that final payoff in Star Wars. Lord of the Rings. I, I think I can appreciate. I think I can appreciate that. Um, and I'm not sure what I would say gave me 
I guess the thing is, it's like, man, when I think about Boromir, it's like, dude, I, I love everything to do with that character. It's all fantastic. And I, and I guess as a matter of, man, I respect the hell out of the Lord of the Rings for, uh, for what it accomplished as a, as a set of films. It's super impressive. And Star Wars is super impressive too in its own way. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would like, say Star Wars was more groundbreaking for its time than Lord of the Rings. Pro um, in terms of probably. You, you, you're probably not wrong about that. Um, yeah, probably. I, I guess um, I just think about how impressive it was that they achieved everything they did in Lord of the Rings, not just technically, but also in terms of storytelling. It's, oh, yeah, um, super yeah. impressive. Quite, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I, think that, I think if Return of the Jedi was more consistently good... If Return of the Jedi throughout was on the same level of quality as the third act, then that would make for a really great overall trilogy. But um, well, I recently rewatched Return of the act. Jedi. Well, Endor, yeah, that's true because all the stuff with um, Endor, man, that, that like when you rewatch that movie, it's like, dude, the first act is just nonsense, <laughs> and then second act we're spending all this time with these Ewoks who eventually beat the Empire. It's like the really good stuff is the battle above Endor and the battle, you know, in the throne room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I do love all the space battle stuff as well. From what I remember, oh, it mostly follows. Battle. Like, it's and, and awesome. it's, it's it's really invigorating in terms of watching. Like, they're all in a, you know, kill box, basically, just trying to stay alive yeah. for as long as possible. As soon as the space is open, they all just rush in to destroy it. It's like, man, it's hype as fuck. Yeah, it's not only <laughs> that. There, there are three battles going on simultaneously that are all directly intertwined with each other. Um, and related to, and like, you know, the space battle is reliant on what's happening on Endor, and they can't do anything in Endor's well, sure. and then... But Lord like, of the Rings has that me, going, that, too. That... Remember, the, the end of Lord of the Rings what, what, being what? the Frodo with the ring while everybody's fighting oh, yeah, yeah. to give him time, you know? And even Pelennor, there's, like, it's so vast that you have, like, different aspects to it. You have Good the enough. Aragorn stuff that they're yeah. doing over there. You have the Rahiram charge. You have inside of the keep. You have uh, Faramir on the funeral pyre. Like oh, Lord of the Rings just, just juggles. Uh, Lord of the Rings juggles so much so well. Oh, and just the peaks and the dips as well. Like the triumph of the charge, and then as soon as the elephants come in, it just completely undercut. That, I wouldn't want to undermine Theoden as well. Oh. Fantastic arc for him too. Oh yeah, he's awesome, I, dude. I fucking. That might be one of the best undercuts in, like, any movie. Just them riding triumphantly towards the elephants, and then as soon as it, the battle starts, the music well, dude, just cuts um, out. Well, dude, even, um, like, celebratory face sort of dropping yeah. as he hears the horns. Amazing. God, I need to watch Lord of the Rings and again. immediately, <laughs> immediately, immediately, you know, reform the line. It's like, yep, this badass is immediately reforming the line. Don't let people panic. Let's just go head on. We have dude, to. If we did, like, a favorite leaders in anything, it's like, Theoden's up there, he's a fucking legend. He absolutely is up there. I, I whenever, when we, when people talk about Theoden, um, generally the scene that comes to mind first is him, uh, mourning at the grave of his son, where he talks about, like, man, like, isn't it shit that I'm the king, and these are just shit times to be in, and, like, we, it shouldn't be like this. It really shouldn't be like this. And this is just a dark time, and I've got, oh, my like, son's dead. Like, we got all this shit going on. Like, man, that sucks. And the acting is insanely good, just kind of across the board. Yeah. And just there's so much to appreciate about really kind of every character. I know when we were re-watching him with Wolf, there was just the things we were picking out. Like how Merry and Pippin got more training than Ray, <laughs> and all kinds of this stuff. Like, <laughs> Merry, Merry and Pippin are awesome they're great they but just yeah. lord, of, lord of the rings is really fucking good just saying <laughs> it's well, really I mean, good i mean you can i mean you, you think about like those two you see it consistently throughout the thing that, that throughout the films they are they are incredibly brave and it's and then it you know i feel like it sort of climaxes when uh Aragorn just like charges at the Black Gate and they're the first two. Oh, I love the imagery of these two little hobbits are like the first two to immediately charge into battle. Yeah. I love it. It's wonderful in terms of theme. Um, God, that in final charge, it's like, you think about Endgame, it's like, dude, how, how the hell are we get here? Why are we here? None of this makes sense why we're here. <laughs> these tactics are really stupid considering the context of this battle. Whereas this battle, it's all making sense. This is the last stand. This is it. They need to buy as much time as they can for Frodo to destroy the ring. And it's it's all, ah, oh, 
And then when he's up there and he's going to put the ring in Mount Doom, but he can't. He just can't do it. It's too... He resisted for so long, but... Yeah. And by the way, we, and, we are uh, absolutely gushing all over Lord of the Rings. Jay's in chat, just like... <laughs> I'll watch it eventually, guys. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we uh, we should probably get back to Super Chats, the reason yeah. we're here. Because we're just going to keep gushing about Lord of the Rings for ages. Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> We'll probably end up doing EFAP movies Lord of the Rings again. <laughs> like, again. I would like to do it, yeah, because I'd like to be there <laughs> to do it again. Watch yeah, we could invite we could invite a whole bunch of people this time. Why not? Just have a whole set of Lord of the Rings fans. Um, do do do. Um, the the bonus question to that was: Would you trade Lord of the Rings for nine amazing Star Wars films? So like all nope. nine get bumped up. No. Uh, well, I, 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 I yeah, understand your exactly. automatic reaction, Rags, but can you picture yourself having seen these nine amazing Star Wars films and how much you'd be attached to them? I could. That's trading one attachment for another, uh, in a sense, and hypothetically. But it is a higher it... quantity of, uh, yeah. of great content. I think that's why, for me, it's like, well, if we've got nine films that are on par with Lord of the Rings quality, hell yeah, I'll take those nine. I was about to say, I might just have. take that also... deal. Because I've also got the books too, and right. I, I'm st I'm still gonna go ahead and hold on to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I might be with Rags on this one. I think I'd stay with Lord of the Rings because even in the current timeline, we do have a pretty good trilogy of Star Wars already, and I would want both. You know, experiences of awesomeness: the Star Wars and the Lord of the Rings. Um, I see. And. Mm -hmm. I think it's too much of a loss to lose Lord of the Rings just to get more good Star Wars. Like, oh. you know, I love Star Wars, but okay. I wouldn't want to lose Lord of the Rings. I, I get you. If, if the choice is that we lose Star like, Wars, two different we properties. lose Lord of Oh, well, shit. Yeah, I don't think I want that, actually. I think I'd rather keep Star I'd rather just keep it as it is if I get Lord of the Rings and Star Wars as opposed to just one really good Star Wars. Well, I don't think I'd want to lose that. But if. If we had nine Star Wars movies that are all on par with the greatest Star Wars film, like that is a lot of great. I'm just content. so the, the reason I hesitate sure, yeah. is that if that world existed and I was in it, and then they were like, "You want to sacrifice six of these, or seven of these, let's say, to get a trilogy that's an adaptation of these series of books by J.R.R. Tolkien that are fucking amazing," I'd probably be like, "I mean, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> like." The, uh, mm. Yeah, someone said, like, 9 is more than 3. Yeah, sure, but I think there's an aspect of the fact that it's two different properties to draw from. It's not I, just I think that's that's colors. literally the main thing that's going to be in contention. Uh, quantity versus the difference in, like, a different quality. But the thing is, if all three prequel films were incredible, like, top tier, I feel like that is a very different kind of content to the OT. Um, I know it's not yeah. as different as Lord of the Rings is, like but... Could, could, yeah, could we live without those memes? Like, truly? <laughs> we don't want to sacrifice the shitty prequels because we'd lose all the memes. There's something special like, about them, you know? Like, if we had, like, if, if there was, if there was 100 excellent Star Wars movies, or would I have, like, like, 80 individual different properties that had amazing stuff? I'd want to spread it out. Um, I can agree with that. I, I just don't know about also, this one. This, this particular uh, just, one. Just because it's on a line and I just saw it fl uh, pop up. Uh, Deathloop comes out in five days. What? Is it that soon? Wait, help me out. What is that? It's the uh, Art Arcane. Studios game. I want that game. Yeah, I just so, put on my wish list. It, it apparently, yeah, out? it, it just popped shit. out on, on Steam for me. You're it's, right. It's in five days. I feel like wow, I'm that, out of the uh, loop on this. Should I know about this? It is a game... The, the gist of the game is that you are a guy on an island that is in a loop and every 24 hours it resets. You need to kill eight people to break the loop and the only way to do that is to die and get knowledge on their movements and make changes in the next cycle to try and line it up in a way that you can do it. Okay. That's basically the idea. To me, that is very cool. I like that idea a lot. Um, the game has a really cool 60s inspired style yeah. as well. Um, it, it looks really great. Um, in fact, it's probably one of like the few games this year that I'm quite excited for. I didn't, I didn't realize it was coming out that soon. Well, you're at, you're going on the wish list for sure. Yeah, it's uh, 
Oh, fingers crossed. I hope it does well. I don't want Arcane to go away. Well, They've made so many bangers. That's... I don't want him to leave. Well, I, 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 don't would, betray I would hasten to guess that if Deathloop doesn't do well, that may be the end for them because oh. they, like, well, Dishonored 2 didn't do very well and Prey didn't do very well. That's two, that's two games that didn't do as well as they needed to. It's such um, a shame. But... They're both great. But Microsoft ownership, so, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll want to keep them around just for the sake of having uh, Game Pass be... Yeah, more deal. variety. As Jay said, Pass. what if it's garbage? I mean, it well, might be garbage. I would be, yeah, it, it might be. be. I'd be, be surprised. Surprising. Yeah, because yeah, Arcane is... They're, they're good. Arcane is definitely one of those really good ones um i mean so. the game the game looks really cool in terms of and and in terms of design that just feels like an, an incredibly interesting rich idea that there isn't much of yeah. um that is worth exploring i i will play prey eventually i do have it um i need to finish dishonored 2 as well i really like the first one but um i don't know i, I played the first one a bit and i liked it i never i never finished it though i think i was on the xbox at the time and i did pick up dishonored 2 on pc and i played through it twice uh, as each character and i had a, i really enjoyed prey or i really enjoyed dishonored 2. you know something i've noticed is a lot of the trailers on the playstation page just because uh death loop is ps5 and pc they're getting dislikes it's like are you guys disliking the trailer because bethesda is now owned by Microsoft, like, please don't tell me that you're doing Wait, that. Wait, you mean Xbox and PC? No, it it was originally. So this was before the acquisition. Oh, this is before. Deal. Okay, this yeah. Is oh, yeah. Okay, all right. so it's so this PS5 is... and it'll come out on Xbox, I think, next year. But yeah, um, it the trailers keep getting dislikes, and it's like, man, if you guys are disliking it just because it's like it, this, you know, because the people who are making it are now going to be making games for Xbox, like that's bad console war so lame <laughs> um <clears throat> which do you believe more flat earth or hollow earth what it is hollow earth i i, I would go I for guess I would if believe... i had to pick hollow earth i guess hollow earth has to be the one right because it, yeah there's just no yeah, fucking way been... it's flat but hollow i guess there is a yeah there's a chance and how hollow yeah you yeah know? like degrees like, of it... hollow exactly how many miles of crust pocket? between us and the hollowness? Yes. Or yeah, but because the flat Earth just can't—it can't, can't be true. It cannot be true. Mm -hmm. But I guess I can, in my mind, imagine a hollow Earth could be true in a weird kind of way. Probably not, but more so. My brain can accept a hollow Earth far easier than a flat Earth. Yeah. I just find I'm the so, concept drink also really back. cool. It sounds so mysterious, an entire world on oh, the imagine, inside. Yeah. Imagine that. There's a secret society of like weird hobgoblins living on the inside <laughs> of Earth. You go. Wow, mind free. They could just deep. be normal hobgoblins. <laughs> they don't have to be weird. <laughs> hey, look, all right. They, they don't have to be weird. I'm just saying in this scenario, they're weird hobgoblins. <laughs> they're not typical hobgoblins, all right? They're kind of different. Uh, a guy I work with thinks the weight of New York City is throwing off the gravitational torque of the Earth, causing global warming. <laughs> Hang on, the weight? The, the weight, weight of New, New, York, New York, York City is pushing the gravitational New torque York of the Earth. It okay. doesn't weigh more than a mountain or something. Like, like I have a few yeah, you know, I the Himalayas feels, would weigh a little bit more. I agree with that, man. That He's feels right. like some... I feel like that's one of those instances of, man, you are overestimating humans' capacity to influence the Earth here. <laughs> like, we are, we we do not have, we are not going to be able to do that. That guy's right, and you guys are laughing, laughing at him. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing at him <laughs> for his observation. Just the think, New about, York <laughs> think about a mountain which is vastly bigger than many, many skyscrapers. There's just solid granite. I'd imagine how much that weighs. It's just... Yeah. Well, imagine, you know, imagine if Olymp if like, Mars was empty, Olympus Mons, it's like, oh, that's pretty heavy. If that was flat, God, that's just going to be throwing the whole planet off whack. Well, the whole disk, I guess. <laughs> the flat... Flat disk uh, theory for... Flat Mars theory, if that would be the case. Oh, someone come at me with a zinger. I don't know, she had lots of fat people in New York City. I, I didn't consider that. I, <laughs> I, hmm. They all jump at the same time. People, you know what? I would, 
hmm, I would guess that there are actually less fat people in New York than there would be in the average American city because of just a need to walk. Fat people in New York. Let's go. Let's, Let's get some statistics. People. Are there many overweight? No, that's a forum. That's not. Uh, oh, okay. So, and it's oh, okay. In New York. Okay. <laughs> so I was totally wrong. I was completely wrong. Apparently in New York, obesity is an epidemic. More than half of new adult New Yorkers have overweight or obesity. Overweight, 34%. Oh. Obesity, 20 Well, no, I need the I need the uh, the American statistics. Well, I was, was going to say, we need some kind of uh, control, right? Or what's Obe normal? Obesity in America. So apparently... Oh, God, no. I just need... C okay, CDC, give, give it to me. Um... Obesity, adult obesity facts, U.S. statistics on adult obesity. So, um, U.S. obesity prevalence was 42.4% in, uh, in 2017 through 2018. Wait, but I, I need the breakdown because if that includes overweight, I don't want that. Um, yeah, you need like um, amount of overweight per 100 people or something I, like yeah. that in general statistics. And then what it's like in New York specifically. Yeah, Fringy, what do I fucking hire you for if not getting statistics in immediate... Do you want time? I All can right. give you time. Someone in chat asking obesity in Australia, don't worry, we're right up there with you guys. Like, yeah, you know, we're, we're, yeah, we are punching well above our weight. We are punching well above our... Well, well, well equal well to our weight, weight, really. No, we're not over our weight because we are overweight, so it's well above... It's well to the right. We're, we're, well to we're the weight. To <laughs> well, to, we're, of... we're punching. We're punching accurately to our waistline. That's oh, okay. Yeah. So, so like for reference, in what? Australia in 2017 to 2018. Oh, you're not having it. It, oh, kill, that it is... shouldn't kill me. It should let me fall onto the ramp. <laughs> let's fall. Um. So in Australia, 67 percent of adults are overweight or obese. Damn. Yay, bro. So we did 36 percent. Are uh, overweight, uh, but not obese, and 31% are obese. That's 12.5 million. Man, okay. <laughs> That's uh. Oh boy. Well, well, uh, I'm happy to contribute to the statistics of the overweight part. Uh, I don't think I'm obese, but I'm definitely in the overweight category. How I'm, about uh, you, I'm Fringy? The... Honest, honest, uh, Fringy. No, no, I, I, I am. Uh, I'm in the overweight. Ca See, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big boy. I'm, a, I'm a tall one. So uh, fortunately, that helps me out in terms of um the statistics because obviously the taller you are, the more you need to weigh. Uh, well, not the more you need to weigh, but the more you will. So I am, yeah. but I am now nudging myself back down into normal, uh, hopefully wow. permanently. That's fat phobic. That's quiet, anyway. fat phobic. What normal? Yeah, describing <laughs> anybody in relation to well, a fat person as normal I mean, is fucked up. I guess that's the interesting part, right? Overweight is probably normal um, in terms of just like the, the number of people who fit into that. Um, fat friggy fan art. I I implore you, please. <laughs> I would love to see some fat friggy fan art. So Friggy's goo is not gluten free. I have not made any comments on or off the record pertaining to the nature of the edibility of my goo. That's true. I can confirm that. Uh, and as for buying clothes in bigger tall section, confirmed. I I mean, yeah, I'm tall. I've, I've mentioned a lot of times, but I'm uh, I'm a I'm a tall one. You're six five, right? Yes. So I am Shit. I am longer than the longman. I am six four, you got me beat. Yeah, exactly. Which means I feel like if you and I met with rags in real life, it would <laughs> you'd be a little guy who's just chilling in the middle of us. Tower well, my, over. my my owner's five ten, but I'm I'm of course I'm I'm shorter. I'm I'm good size for a sheep. <laughs> but um, I'm well, I'm shorter. Five ten is slightly above average height, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty yeah, it's basically average. I think, uh, I think I, I'm like only an inch or two under six foot, um, but yeah, so, because so I'm not I'm one of these weird like me. Is that because I don't know how many inches are in feet? Because I'm an inch or two under six feet. feet. I believe that there are there is uh, twelve inches, which is about thirty centimeters, is equivalent to a foot. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm five. I'm five ten or five eleven. Five toes in a foot yeah. too. I think one of the things that surprised me was um, realizing that the average height of men in the world is like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, that blew me away. That's yeah. just, I can't believe that. I, I guess I can, but I I don't know. This it just feels I'm I'm used to seeing the world from from uh, uh from high above. High. 
Yeah. Well, you know, I, I got always... I got to experience that thingy when I went to Japan. It's like, oh, oh, this is, this is what tall people <laughs> tall people feel like. This is what it feels to be tall, and I can see everybody's yeah. head. <laughs> For me, the weird one is if if ever I meet somebody who is roughly my height or taller, that's weird to me. I'm not used to having to like look up to meet somebody in the eyes. That's um. That's really weird as a as an experience of like, wait, I have to like tilt my neck up here to look at you. Um, so yeah, that that's that that can be weird on occasion, but that's that's not common. Um, whenever you see a really tall woman, though, that's like one of those man, you are like like if I meet a woman who is about as tall as me, that's that's like meeting a unicorn. It's just like there's not not a lot of women who are that tall. That's short phobic. Well, you sick I mean, yeah. That's I mean, if if that's what you think, then, you know, that's what we all think. Yeah, of you. Stop it. <laughs> me. Almost every seafaring culture knew the Earth was round because you always see the highest point first, like there's a curve or something. Yeah, how come I mean, things disappear it. bottom up? That's something flat earthers love to try and explain. I can explain that. <laughs> By my book. That's perspective! Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know what that word means. I feel like the uh, the one that should be, that I, I would be interested in how they account for is, if you go to the Burj Khalifa, like if you go to Dubai and you go up the Burj Khalifa, oh damn, am I mixing up for up or down? Either way, if you start on I one level, you, you, can wa you can watch the oh. sun set, and then you take the elevator and you can watch the sun set again. Should that not yeah. be possible if the Earth... It's you know what? It sun. shouldn't be. You know, it, it shouldn't be, Fringy. Uh, yeah, it really shouldn't. Man has be. gone too far. Yeah, but you see, guys, the 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 gravity just kind of warps the perspective, and then so ha, you, gravity you know, warps uh, perspective. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so the horizon true, line but... is warped uh, unnaturally, and so that's that's kind of how I've heard yeah. some people I... try and explain it. I like the idea that they would have unwittingly admitted that the gravity on Earth is so strong that it affects light in a direct, well, obvious way, akin to a black hole. Fringy, yeah, have you ever climbed really the, the Mir Khalifa? The, the Mir Khalifa? Is that like a... is that a tower that's shaped like a meerkat? It's, it's the biggest yes. tower on Earth. Yeah, yeah the Meerkat Khalifa. It's a pretty the cool Mir place, Khalifa. yeah. And, and it's it's so much like a meerkat that it occasionally just bobs up and down, you know, sometimes it kneels back down. That's how you can see the sunrise twice. Not sunset, Because though. it's moving. Oh, oh, the, NASA. NASA with its its crazy, the lengths that NASA goes to. More like Liza. More like, li yeah, Liza. Fibza. Not the truth, sir. Not the truth, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Most creative you know, like, What? I was, I was just gonna say that, um, you, you guys are aware, like, the Burj Khalifa, the top 250, like, meters, is just, it's not, it's not, a, it's like, not a building, it's just stuff that's been added on top. There's no rooms. Is it just to break it records? All... Yes, it, it is, it exists only to break records, it is not usable space, even though it looks like usable space. Most creative fantasy weapon you can make up. Go. Uh, giraffe head with unicorn spikes coming out of it that uh, you whack on the end of a chain. Is that creative or is it just random? A, I don't know. It's pretty, I, makes... I feel it was creative. I want a gun that when I shoot people with it, it makes them see everything from my perspective. <laughs> Not just physically, but mentally. <laughs> Now, um, you might hate this one, Shad. A, a, a sword, a sword, a physical sword that, like, detracts. So it, like, shoots down and then it shoots up with, like, little components. Kind of like a lightsaber, but a physical sword. I was about sword. to say, what are you... That's not new. Loads of things do that. Not creative I, there for you. Yeah, Why would I right. hate that? Like, a sword Ooh. that I, is, detracts? Is, is that not... Is that not just like incredibly bad for just making the thing strong to have? Not if it's sci-fi and it like hardens or whatever. So, yeah, like pretty weak. Oh, okay. Okay. Can can do something. I'm We're all very disappointed in you, Fringy. I'll do better. I, I, all right, just give me. Give You're me gonna a do better. <laughs> I will do better, Captain Falcon. Um, 
Okay, it is a weapon. It is a little ball, and you throw it on the ground, and it and it turns into Captain Falcon, and he punches people for you. Ooh, the roach push. What do you think, Chad? Review it. Okay, I like mine. I like mine. I was actually thinking of my own weapon, and I didn't even hear what thing you said. That's no, okay. It's a little ball he throws, and it spawns Captain Falcon, and he punches people. Like a mm -hmm. Pokemon, but with Captain Falcon. <laughs> No, he's made so, out- the ball is made out of the material that he's made out of. It's a big flesh ball and it turns into him. Uh. <laughs> and he beats people up. I have like a couple of pre-made, you know, creative weapons that I have for characters that I'd like to use for maybe comic books down the track or something like that. For sure. like one of my characters, he has a sword, right? That weighs a ton yeah, for everyone except him. When he holds it, it weighs like super light. Mjolnir. But in, with its interaction, well, you kind of, right? But with its interaction with everything outside of himself, it weighs super amounts, and so he, you know... What if someone shapeshifted to crazy. be like him? Would the sword know the difference? Or does the sword decide? Is it semi-sentient? The sword like decides. Mjolnir? Yeah, Mjolnir. it's magic. Yeah, it's semi-sentient. But the sword blade can extend to, like, you know, 100 meters length, and same with the uh, sword handle, and so it could Is actually warp into OC? a whole arm. Oh, well, well, actually, I've, I've even drawn him. Let me get, get let me get a picture up of this guy. <laughs> no. I do want to see this picture, actually. The best counter to somebody saying that you have an anime OC. Oh, I haven't even drawn him. <laughs> no, the true chat says they have drawn him. They're like here, you fucking go. Check him out. No shame, Chad. Full power of full I'm throttle. Not, I'm not. I got. I got I'm not ashamed of these characters. These characters are, you know, I potentially want to create my own kind of superhero universe. And so, Neat. You know, Is that, uh, these are, these are when some, are you planning on doing that? The like, shadow you, you want to finish with, uh, with the projects you're working well, on now, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So after the graphic novel launches of um, Shadow of the Conqueror, I'm interested in actually producing um, more graphic novels that are original works, not based off of novels and stuff. Sure. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and so uh, there's a comic book universe that uh, I'm wanting to make. And so that's the guy that uses the sword. His name is Tristan. Um, uh, oh, I could just post. That's the link. I can just um, copy the image. That is a Chungus sword. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, like, if you actually... I've got a more detailed uh, image of the Very sword as well. Sword. Um, wow, look, he's got guns and a big old sword. He's got a cape. He's got yeah, Dragon Ball he's a, he's there. A, that's right. He's a modern paladin, this guy. His name is Tristan. Um, oh, so set in the modern day, but with fantasy, kind of like... like yeah, as yeah, if you, yeah. As if so you tracked right yeah. into the oh. modern day, I see. I'm sorry, Man, I can't show it. My, my, I haven't set my mini thing properly. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, dear. It's all it's fucked. It shows OBS. It's like, I think I've set up the wrong screen. And so, this one shows some of the swords uh, where it can morph into different swords and stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's just, uh, uh, if people are interested, they're more than free to look at the stuff. It's on my uh, DeviantArt page. Uh, I can post it in the chat if people are interested. Do I it. see. So, it's, so it's, uh, is it at first I thought it was the hilt, but, was, but it's also the sword itself, it looks like, so... Yeah, a blade and hilt can um, uh, alter its sizes, and so... Is that altered yeah, by, like, fun. the... Is it, like, almost tele telepathically, or uh, is it triggered Yes, exactly. By... He is okay. triggered by his thoughts. Yeah, and so... Right. Um, it, the, uh, he stores it in its smallest thoughts. form. <laughs> yeah, so he can keep it small, and then whenever he wants it to be big. Yeah, I mean, I figured, exactly. I figured that there'd be, like, a lot of practical utility if you eventually reach the point where you could, with your mind, determine how long or short your sword would be. Like, if you Oh, wanted... absolutely. Like, in combat, it would actually be crazy, because I get so annoyed with Star Wars that people don't actually use the fact that they could turn off their lightsaber mid-combat and turn it on really quickly. Um, right. Because they, they lock their swords all the time, and if someone just turned it off and on, and just... Uh, you had to kill him so easily. And my headcanon explanation was that you couldn't do it because there was a cooldown on the lightsabers. And that worked fine, of course. Until, until um, yeah, friggin', you know, R Last Jedi. Um, uh, they show the lightsaber go flash on and off really quickly when 
uh, Kylo throws it to Ray. He's like, "Ah, oh, great! It's ruined my head cannon, you piece of crap." Well, um, I guess uh, the interesting thing that I'm sure people talked about this with Star Wars is that it kind of becomes you can't really use any known sort of sword techniques with a lightsaber because they were developed for a physical object that um that you need to like slash and need force to slash and stab. Whereas a lightsaber can basically just go through anything and it's, you know, like, you can turn it on and off and so a lot like of the... the speed in which you swing the lightsaber isn't necessarily is relevant. A... Exactly, so why oh. would any... It, interestingly sport... enough, fellas, I've done a, a whole video on, this, on yeah. I'm pretty sure you yeah, have. have, that's why I thought about <laughs> it. I'm pretty sure that's why I've thought about this idea, yeah. <laughs> but there is actually a style you would um, have much greater advantages employing with a lightsaber than other styles. Um, using the fact that you don't have to strike hard, uh, you just need to really tap someone and essentially uh, you can cut through anything without any power behind it. And so that uh, would emphasize certain movesets that you would more naturally adopt. And yeah, so it's, it's on my video. Alright, I guess I'm lost. Uh... A grenade that you throw and it scans the area and releases everyone's nightmares as like, fucking <laughs> as creatures of some kind. Oh boy! I would just be interested to throw it and see what comes out. You know, <laughs> there's like all these horrible creatures that are screaming and there's blood everywhere. But there's just this like cuddly bear that's going. I, I was about to say down. teddy bear. <laughs> Yeah, like I was no. molested by a man in an animal suit when I was young, and so now my greatest fear is, uh, yeah, bears. So, you see the dude with the tiny bear right, right, immediately right, right. ripping so, the gun. What, what about this one? What about this one? So this was based off of the kind of concept that there is a spirit world or astral world kind of drawing off of the Asian, you know, um, uh, religious and mythology and stuff. And that you had a sword that has a spirit version of itself in the spirit world. And the, what happened is that the physical form and the spirit form of the sword switches places. And so now the physical form of the sword exists in the spirit world and you are holding the spirit form of the sword. But everywhere you move the spirit form, the physical form moves with it because they're linked because they're the same thing. And what that means is when you cut someone the physical form of the sword is cutting the person's spirit or soul uh and so what that means it creates cuts that will never heal as a result and uh and so i guess you would like, need to like build mental a, uh, cuts. a mythology yeah i guess you would need to make sure that whatever world this like if this was in a story that there's a very clearly defined uh rule set for i guess I, I, that kind of reminds me of uh, someone mentioned Legacy of Cain. Isn't one of the gameplay elements of one of those games that there's basically um, there's two worlds that you're in. There's like the ghost world or the sort of dark world, and then you switch into the like living world, and so your interactions in one area affect the other. I mean, it's a pretty common gameplay hook. It's super interesting. Like the Titanfall jump back and forth between time to uh make changes in the play, um, past that affect the future. Singularity did that to a degree. Do you ever play that? Right. I haven't played Singularity. It's like you you can um you can age everything in a room or like an object. And so if you uh, you can de-age things that are broken to bring them back and then you can fuck with the thing and then age it up to get what you know, there's plenty of mechanics they try to use for it. Um Moving on from Flat Earth? Cool. Don't those people understand we are merely constructs in Azaz Azazoth's dream? God damn. Oh boy, that's scary. Oh my god. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Oh my god. The Patriot being good is not a hot take, Morley. You keep using that word. Yes, I don't think is. you know what it means. Dude, you don't know what it means if you think the Patriot being thing. good isn't a hot take. All I've ever heard is it shit. <laughs> like, it's Roland Emmerich. Roland Emmerich. Yeah. Like, when I Dude, when I went in to watch the film, I'm like, dude, this is Roland Emmerich. You, you're pretty sure like, it won't it. be good. Like, it can't be. Yeah. And then I was surprised uh, by that one being good. That well, really like I said, was a surprise. Plenty of people hate it because the historical inaccuracies. And by the way, that's fine to hate it for that reason. Totally fine. Yeah. Um, but I think internally, the story is working pretty well in terms of the characters and the journey they're going on. I think so too. I it's funny, this sounds very much like Braveheart, right, too, because I actually think Braveheart is an uh, awesome film with really dramatic, huge spectacle and stuff like that. It's uh, the historical inaccuracies almost give me an aneurysm. Um, yeah. And so I'm, I can be like hypercritical on it for that side. But then I really like a lot of the other elements into it. Like, I, I love the cinematography in the film as well. Um, and so it's just this interesting kind of contrast I get when I think of Braveheart. 
Yeah. Braveheart is a good one to default to, just because, yeah, historically inaccurate, absolutely yeah, great movie. a really fun conversation with Theo about it for a while, because he was very frustrated by the inaccuracies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Missed the super chat for 150. Loving the quality content. Uh, the critical lens helps me temper my logic for my own pursuits. Keep up the good stuff. Thank you very much. And uh, don't worry, not yeah, all of the 150 ones have been read yet. We'll get there eventually. Um, is the Super Star Destroyer destruction sound Molly? I don't know what that Molly? means. Molly. Don't know. Molly. Yeah, I don't. I I don't know what that means. It's a shame that all movies and TV shows seem to suck right now. At least video games are still good. Molly, you should make more game critiques. There are still, you know, good things here and there. Bly Bly Matter is not even a year old yet. Right? Or am I fucking that up? Uh, I think it might be over a year old. Just over a year old. Didn't it come out in October? What did it not? Did it? Uh, let me see. The Haunting of Blind Manor. Uh, it might have come out in October. I think, because I remember having to schedule everything, and I even had to schedule us being able to see the show, because we yes, had so much stuff to October do. Yes, October 9th. October 9th. So it's about 11 months. 11 months exactly. That's still relatively new. Dude, two days from now. That's the 20th anniversary of September 11th. 20, 20 years. Damn. Dude, 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. Crap. Man. Letting you massives know, you never convinced me the Snyder Cut is worse than the Weeder Cut, but you caused me to realize they were both worse than I thought. Uh, Snyder Cut is a guilty pleasure, though. Uh, I, I just, honestly, I just don't see what the Whedon Cut did worse. Um, yeah, you'd have to. Ex yeah, Molly's video stuck. was very thorough. Yeah. I don't even know that you can make a strong argument for that because it's so vibrant. The Whedon cut, right? You could say that. Yeah, I mean, I I'm sick of the. I just want color. I want some joy in my life. It's a fun comparison though, because you could call one either vibrant or sickly, and you can call the other one, you know, very methodical, deliberate, and grounded, or you could call it miserable. It's up to you. Play the game. How about this? If you could choose to fix the Hobbit trilogy but lose the sequel trilogy and vice versa, which would you choose? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I'd probably fix the sequels? I think we'd fix Yeah, because that undoes all the damage the and yeah. gives us three good movies. Meanwhile, the Hobbits, I'm like, it's fine if we don't get a Hobbit movie. Fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, it's like, it's fine. <laughs> we don't need a Hobbit movie. It's chill. It's, it, it's interesting. I I don't necessarily find the Hobbit movies offensively bad. They're bad. Yeah, I don't but... mind them. I think I agree. Yeah. Kill, killing the Hobbit movies is like oh, okay, off they go. It doesn't yeah, it doesn't bring me any joy or anything. But killing the sequel trilogy, we'd all have a big party. We'd have drinks and, and yeah, we'd dance. <laughs> it'd be amazing. I feel like yeah, we've, just, we've saved lives. You know. <laughs> Did you guys know? Arcane almost finished a Half-Life game before Valve canned it without telling them why. There are some stories. Wow. That they I even. I did not know that. They even show the build to new hires. Oh. Wow. Damn. If that's true, that's crazy. I had no clue. They're like the perfect you... studio to make that. You hear these stories about games that were getting close to done that just get canned, like Star Wars thirteen thirteen. From what I understand, that game was pretty close to done when they cancelled it. And the only um, reason it got cancelled was, oh, w yeah, we want to reset LucasArts and stuff. There's Battlefront 3. I don't think that was close yes. to done, but there was lots of footage of it. It was it was being worked on, yeah. 1313 yeah. is the one that really upsets me. It's like, dude, another bounty hunter game that was robbed from us. Again. Well, at least you got your bounty we hunter just... show, Mandalorian. Oh yeah, Mandalorian. Awesome bounty <laughs> Just so show. much bounty hunting. Yeah, like those three episodes where he does bounty hunting and then the rest hey, he doesn't. Chad, you looking forward to Book of Boba Fett? <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I've put that out of my memory at the moment. It's like, oh, there's Star Wars shows being made. Oh, oh okay, I forgot about them. Um, but yeah, when they, uh, when they, you know, when they actually go live, I'll be watching them to review. Uh, it's weird, because game nights we're wanting to keep track of pop culture and stuff, it's forcing me to watch so much more crap that I never yep. bothered in the first place. Oh, it's painful at times. That's why I watch Shang-Chi, because, like, people are going to want to read it. 
you weren't really yeah. I had no interest in it. Uh, who would you give Catwoman more pleasure? Sorry, who would give Catwoman more pleasure in the sack? Bruce Wayne or Tony Stark? Probably Bruce Wayne. Or uh, Tony Stark. Yeah. I thought Tony Stark. Tony would, Stark's the the I, ladies' man. He's he, all over the place with women. Yeah, he, so he's more of a player. And he's gonna he, have more experience. He, obviously, I think you underestimate. Yeah, Bruce. he enjoys I mean, it. No, but Bruce is always faking it. He doesn't like pretending <laughs> to be a playboy. It's so contrary to him. Yeah, I'd go with Tony. I had a really tall English teacher in year five, and he kept po he kept getting poked in the eye by an umbrella when he went on holiday to China a lot. What the f- What? He kept Very getting odd. poked in the eye with an umbrella. Like, are they- That's Oh, are they saying, like- Chinese people, when they put up their so... umbrellas, would be t hitting him in the oh! eye. Oh! <laughs> because he's tall. Like, he's... Oh, damn, that's unfortunate. Yeah. They have poop trucks in Dubai. It's a stupid city. Oh. Yeah, du uh, there's a video from, uh, I think, some channel called, like, Adam Something that um, was talking about Dubai, that it's just a city that is, like, on its face, it seems awesome. Well, I mean, I don't... Like, I'm not particularly interested in what Dubai presents anyway, but, like, on its surface it looks awesome, but it's completely propped up by a lot of issues. Um, like, yeah. slavery. Uh, like, literal actual well, I slavery. I watched a documentary, and there is a pretty strong poor class that are living in yep. really bad of, circumstances. A uh, lot of in Indian Dubai. and Sri Lankan workers who went over there to get work, and then when they get there, they get their passports taken away from them. So they're, like, stuck there and then they have to keep working and they work at very low cost and don't have union support or anything like that um yeah really bad i i don't even i like personally i don't really get the appeal of dubai as a city i, I don't know i don't i don't see much appeal in in basically just kind of reminds me of the gold coast like i don't, I don't really like the gold coast that much um it feels like a very touristy we'll see. yeah yeah for me, Dubai, uh, like, it feels so artificial because everything around yeah. it is just wasteland. Like, I had a stopover in Qatar uh, on my way here to Canada, right? And the, flying over towards the airport, it's just desert everywhere. And I'm thinking, yeah. how do these people survive? What are they living off of? It's wasteland for as long as you can see. It's I mean, just, it's, just it's, um, really I guess it's crazy. interesting to think that they managed to build all this in the middle of the desert, but, um... Yeah, I, yeah, that is impressive. I, when I went to but the... It's propped up on toothpicks almost. As soon as the like the oil money goes away, uh, what are they going to be? Well, I think that's the idea, themselves? right? That's that's the strategy of uh, a lot of the Gulf states. Is they know that time is running up, uh, running out in terms of oil. So it's like we got to transition out of oil into tourism. And I mean, it's been successful to a certain extent because those those places have a lot of tourism. Um, it's just not a place that I'm particularly interested in. The, the only reason I ever yeah. went there was because I had to, I had to get a plane that went there to then go to the UK. Um, it is just in the perfect place for a lot of flights to have to stop and connect. Um, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I'm personally more interested in going to places that have a lot of history. Um, or alternatively have, um... A sort of seeping with um, culture, like a culture that's different from the one that I'm that I'm familiar with. Um, you should go to Vietnam. Kind of... I've heard they're like aliens. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was oh oh you Sorry. you you are uh, you don't know <laughs> about that one. I don't. Have... We're covering a video essay as to wanted to compare the Vietnam War and the Tomorrow War and said in many ways the Vietnamese would have. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I saw that, yeah. actually. I remember you reacting to it. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Vietnam probably would be an interesting place to visit. I mean, a lot of, lot of, lot of countries are interesting places to visit, really. Yeah. I feel like there's something you can pull from a lot of them. Um, there's an anime called Hunter x Hunter where a character has the ability to shoot others and make them see her memories rags. Her name is... Uh, Pakunoda? Pakunoda? There you go. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I don't know anything about XCOM. Your criticisms may be correct and fair, but 
Far too many times in Fire Emblem I have seen people blame the game for dying to a 1% chance. The game told them they had 1% chance of dying. Like I said, it, it's, it's uh, that plus the, the complete like dissonance of your numbers versus what you're having your characters do on screen. Um, which I've been told is not as much of a problem in other XCOMs. Uh, they accepted the risk instead of choosing a safer strategy, and that's another problem. I would, like, prep for the safest strategy possible, and I'm still getting, like, 99% hit rates on things that miss, and shock and shots to the face that can go as low as, like, 40%. Um... When safer options did exist, their death was completely on them, not the game. Don't get me wrong, Effie isn't perfect, sometimes it is unfair. But don't blame the game when it's being fair, all I'm saying is not to be the boy that cries wolf on bad game design. Um... Go. Oh boy! Well, I mean, that doesn't apply to me, so I'm alright. What's scarier, having Pennywise be real or Slenderman? Um... So Pennywise's hmm. thing is, he'll make your worst nightmares come true to the point where you get terrified and then he eats you. Um, Slenderman's thing... Oh, what does Slenderman do? Does he like teleport he you to a different dimension or does he eat you? you and, I don't know, he gets close to you and makes your screen flash. That's yeah, a fear flash. I can't remember if... Someone in chat, <laughs> what is, what is, does Slendy Boy eat you? Or does he send you somewhere? I can't remember. Slenderman's powers are way more terrifying and far-reaching. Alright, I'm willing to trust chat. I, I don't 100% remember. Um, do, 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 do. Worst pizza, pineapple or structure gel stuffed crust? <laughs> don't know what that one is. You would, but uh, I, 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 I will go with pineapple in terms of eating it rather than the second one. I think everyone here would agree. It's, don't worry about it. Um, Probably, yeah. Homosexuals and unbridled rage when? Homosexuals and unbridled <laughs> rage. The, the, I mean, you know, it's on the list. It's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> so someone has to say something. I'm tired of keeping <laughs> silent. It ain't right. Lightsabers need to press on whole time to work. Oh, is that going to be like a workaround for the whole? Wait. Uh, I don't think that's a good idea. Is that even- Making I was about sure to say, that that's not true, right? All the time. Or is that something that we can't necessarily confirm from the OT alone? No, 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 because Vader throws his at Luke in Return of the Jedi. So... Maybe he presses the button with the Force? At that point, I guess we'll never know. Because the only people who use oh. lightsabers are people who are Force users outside of, like, Finn and Han, but neither of them throw it. I don't think. Um, hello from Ketchika, Alaska. I recall you gentlemen mentioning that y'all did an EFAP movies for 300. When's that happening? They are locked away oh, in the. I have no idea. They will the eventually. EFAP vault. We're gonna have. We're gonna have a completed. Was chat. that the first one? That is, yeah. yeah is that the first one in the historical arc? We need to get going on that again. I got busy from a bunch of other things, but I will. I will get us going again, because well, the next one is in oh, Heart of totally. Darkness. No, fuck. Uh, Army of Darkness. That's what we're doing next. Was it? Oh, so it wasn't one of the Robin Hoods? No, that'll happen, though. Don't worry. Yeah, we, we'll have the Robin Hood arc in it as well. <laughs> Man, I can't wait until you release those, because they were so much fun watching it with everyone. They were fun to I've, watch. I have yeah. seen the completed Troy one. It is fabulous. It's going to be fun Ooh. when that comes out. <laughs> I can't wait to see I that. Can't wait. Three hours condensed into probably two, I can't remember, <laughs> but yeah, there's lots of EFAP movies that are being created at all times by many people at this point, so you never know what's going to happen, everybody. Um... Wonderful, but I'm actually going to have to head off, guys, it's been a lot of fun, uh, but now it's actually it's starting to get late here in Canada, and I'm going to have to sign off and, uh, and uh, start Always to nice to chat, it. Shad. Absolutely. We'll probably it's have you on pleasure, guys. for a viewing of one or two uh, Boba Fett episodes if you want to. Oh, hey, I'll need to get a refresher. I'll have to tell me which. Oh, is this the new show? Uh, when is that coming out? I've heard December, November, right? December? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow, oh, wow. I imagine they wouldn't so want to release you're it. Not gonna... <laughs> Go ahead, what? Oh, you're not going to bother with Shang-Chi? That's a lost cause already for you. <sighs> 
I just don't care. I, said... I might. No, what's to say? I might. Like, get... so many people are saying it's great, and no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I know it's not. It's not good. It's awful, actually. Why do you but, hate um, Asian people? <laughs> Oh man, there's so many issues. I think my review goes for nearly an hour on game nights. On oh, boy. Just, uh... Nitpicking, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and the thing is, this is one that people are also getting butt hurt over it already. Uh, there's a much higher dislike ratio on this video than. I saw. <laughs> um, I saw the Gary and Drinkers videos both have an unusual amount of dislikes. I think people like this one. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I think a lot of people will enjoy Shang-Chi in the same way people enjoy Transformers. There's a lot of <laughs> flashy action that, um, you know, people will just be able to turn their brains off and have fun with it. But it's such a dumb movie and there are real big problems with Shang-Chi and especially for me, the, the main villain, which is the dad, uh, who, who's, who's supposed to be the Mandarin but not Mandarin, is the weakest link of the whole film. He just falls so flat. It's, uh, and then there's a lot of narrative problems as well. Yeah, um, I might in some way get information on it so that I can, I can talk with Fringy about it next week and have Rags ask clarifying questions. That can be the dynamic because we're not doing a full breakdown for this one. I love to ask, ask clarifying questions. It's fun. It is I, fun. Uh, I, yeah. Because we'll, we'll, we'll probably say mean, something, sorry. and you'll be like, what do you mean, repeats thing we said, and we'll be like, Rags, I don't know what else to tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all man. we got. Is, it, is this going to be the same treatment of the Eternals as well? Just Probably. I might... I, I just Depends don't... Depends on how important that one is. It might be more important, so... Mustering care for these things is hard, Shad. <laughs> I know, I... <laughs> so it was hard for me like, as well, but I, can still, I guess I had the opportunity. I can still muster the basic care for storytelling in general, right? But I was invested in those other properties. I liked Loki before they did that. I liked <laughs> Falcon and Bucky. I liked Wanda and Vision. I liked Black fucking Widow. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. funny. I, I, you know didn't read any Shang-Chi anything wasn't invested the only investment I had was the Mandarin because uh, he was the villain in a couple of Iron Man arcs and stuff and and uh, yeah the Mandarin sucks in Shang-Chi they really do the character poorly in terms of what they could have done um, and the other thing that uh, actually offended me because this movie wouldn't be offensively bad there's, there's a lot of bad in it but very little is offensively bad but there was one thing that I did find offensively bad, and it's that Shang-Chi's, you know, girlfriend, yet not girlfriend, a friend that is a girl, she, uh, you know, picks up a bow, and after a day's training is like a master archer, and yeah. I'm like, turn me off that! Oh, yeah. friggin' annoys me! I'm, yeah. like, as an archer, that friggin' annoys me, because I know how much damn work it takes to be well, able to even be mildly I mean, competent. But how happy were you that she saved the day by taking the shot with her last arrow that hits the giant? <laughs> it was so annoying, man. Yeah. I hated really it. Good. Really good. Really good. I was like, come on, like the the the. Not only is the shot insanely difficult, the range of it is just astronomical. The bow has to be magic. The only way it could have reached that range, um, and the fact What's that if it wasn't, it would have to be. Uh, crazy poundage. She would barely be able to pull back a 30 pound bow. Uh, and after a day's training, she would be able to have, she would have more trouble pulling that bow back after a full day training than being able to pull back a heavy one. You are off. correct. Um, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so. Alrighty. Sleep well, Shad. We'll catch you in future. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll see you later. Well, done, yeah, see you, boy, boy. Bye bye. Um. Is the destruction of the Superstar Destroyer logically sound, is what I meant. I said Morley, Wally, as your possible Halloween persona. Long live Chris Ween, my Ewok. Um, so as I understand it, it's not fantastic, right? But Superstar Destroyers, the implication from what we see, I think, in the fights is that, you know those two little protruding blobs on the, the bridge, I think it is? It's like you have to, those generate the shields. And this is something I guess I got from the games as well. You destroy them two first, shields go down, destroy the bridge, and it's left without a controller, essentially. And that defeats yeah. the Star Destroyer. The obvious question but is, 
why aren't the shield generators covered by the shield? Yeah. Also, why would they be on the outside of your ship? This is the thing. I don't. I don't know. I, I'd have to check around. It's gonna be people in chat who are like, no, 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 and I'm gonna be like, okay. Video I, games. I don't know the specifics, but going from Return of the Jedi, I'm pretty sure we see that. Like, um, we see the the two blobby parts are blown up, and then um, an A wing like crash lands into the bridge, and it fucks up the Star Destroyer. I think that's what happens. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they blow up the little bolly thingies. So I have to check, and yeah, that's probably where the games got it from. It was like you got to destroy those first, and then you can bring it down, which which feels better than you know just attack it and it'll die. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd have to check. Uh, not not the greatest design, no. And and th by the way, this applies. We've said this on EFA before. The AT eighties, not great design. Um, not awesome. You know. Yeah, I'm. St I Would still stand by the bombers choice. in TLJ are the most embarrassingly designed like thing in Star Wars ever. Um, specifically, the part where a uh, half a Tie Fighter destroys three of them. That's pretty hilarious. It's uh, quite an accident. <laughs> but yeah. Um, doo -doo. Shield generators are always placed kind of strangely. Plus, this EFAP mini is shaping up to be a regular size. It's, yeah, we're at eight hours. I think we're going to stop now. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh. Uh, um, How many super chests we get done? Eight? We completed 151s. All right. That's, oh. they, that's, yes. Take pride. Um, all Star Wars movies are as good as Lord of the Rings, but Mola turns into a shortman. Rags has no libido. Aus Australian is proven fake, and Movie Bob and Chris Chan have a talk show. I have the mega libido. I want to fuck all the things. So, we can crank all Star Wars movies up to top tier, but I make short videos. Rags doesn't care to have sex, and mm. Australia is Australia proven to be see. fake. The talk show part, I don't care about. I can ignore it. I mean, Australia proven to be fake. I don't know. Like, <laughs> what does that, that mean for you? Have you? To re yeah. you have to reevaluate your life. <laughs> I would I, I mean. Possibly. Maybe. If you believe oh, it, everywhere Adrian. that I've been is, is um, a lie. I didn't. I don't even know. You know I feel like Rags is the one that would, would be the one to decide if this happens. Because for me, if I'm making short videos, I could still be making long series, you know? Mm hmm. And what a short, from, that's just from a point of view, you know? Rags, are you willing to give up your sex drive to make all Star Wars movies good, if not great? No? no? Alright, I'm sorry guys. No, they made their bed, now they have to fucking lay in it. Now they have to fuck at it. Thanks for introducing me to RE4 as part of EFAP 138. One of my favorite EFAPs oh, and Rags' yeah, praise for it made me interested. Replayed it four times already. Hey! Oh my goodness gracious, that's a lot of times. I'm glad you're liking Also, it. Yeah, that's a really... Well. We always we were getting the fucking uh, rags bringing up Resident Evil Four all the time, but now we've got. Thanks for bringing it up. I played it and loved it. That's a great result. Resident Evil Four is really cool. I give it seven thumbs up out of seven. That's really high praise. If you guys didn't know. Sounds like it. <laughs> if XCOM gives you a random chance of dying with the safety safest strategies, then yeah, that's pretty dumb. And the surprise ambushes sound even worse. Those are what basically killed it for me. I couldn't stand planning things and then just having the game go lol. And I was like, eh, I'll go play something else. And you know what? We've caught up with today's Super Chats. We are still whittling away at our overall backlog. But I think that's probably a good place to, uh, to well, wind down. we've been going for nine hours, right? Eight hours and 14 minutes, according to me. Wow, all right. <laughs> Still a big chonkler. Um, what an adventure. Yeah, uh, you can expect these pretty much weekly, because it's going to be a while before we crack the, the backlog. Um, but we will see you on Saturday, where we will probably spend the opening you know, hour talking about Shang-Chi. By hour, we mean three hours. Oh, you never know. Yeah, no, will happen. Know. We're going to cover it pretty quickly, I'd imagine, by comparison to other things we've got, like the Black Widow stream, which was like 10 hours. It'll be a lot shorter, because do a quick summary and just talk about the biggest dumbers, and then it'll it'll basically be like an update to the EFAB fans of the MCU, because nobody's... Okay, plenty of people are watching it, but a lot of people aren't, so they just need to know what the fuck's happening, you know? 
Uh, yeah. And then we've got, is Hawkeye the next thing? Uh, I think Eternals comes out before Hawkeye. Right. Well, that'll and be the then, next thing. And then that, and then Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Like, and then I think next year we got five shows, I think, and four movies. Well, we shall yeah. be covering some of those things. Yeah, not all. God. We'll cover Sp oh, Spider-Man. Oof. Yeah. Still not looking forward to covering it. No, I'm not. I'm not looking forward to it at all. <laughs> People have been dropping some dumbass takes on MCU Spider-Man stuff from all never, never vectors ends. of the internet. Yep, from all vectors of the internet or across all the films, and it's pain. Alrighty then. Uh, anything you guys want to say before we before we end the end? No, I um, I guess not. I think we've said what, um, I think we've said more than enough, as usual. We've just kept going and going and going. Yeah, well, you know what? Yeah, th thanks for hanging out with us, guys. That was a short eight hours, as is a lot of the minis. <laughs> um, and thank you all for donating and, and, and interacting. And, um, I, I guess we'll see you on Saturday. Toodle pip. Bye bye. Cheerio. Yeah, toodaloo, everybody.